Boom. How's everyone doing? I hope everyone's having a good uh, good day today. It's um, it's certainly been an interesting one. So, um, yeah, I thought this was going to be a record speed recap today. I thought we're going to get this done in record time um, because... Nothing was going on. Nothing. I mean, everything is super easy to. Su oh wait, and then, um, and then it was just. Um, then it got a little. Um, what's the word? Dumb. <laughs> um, now I knew that there was gonna be something. Um, I knew this was coming. Because I'd already seen these interviews, and it wasn't until I saw the witness that I was like, oh, today's when we're dropping that bomb. So, yeah, I guess let's get started. Um, we're going to start with some witnesses who are boring. <laughs> and we're going to do them pretty, pretty quickly. So, um, all right, let us roll to our first witness who, again, is really not going to be super, you know, super exciting, super interesting, but we got to, we got to do Over a recap, 30 right? We got to do the full details as to what's going on here. So, um, here is our first witness. She is, um, she was doing the autopsies. That's what she's there for. She's the pathologist. 500 or 3,500 examinations plus about 500 neuropathology consultations. And have you had any training uh, specific to injury analysis? Can you be more specific? Um, just training in terms of determining how, uh, how an injury may have affected uh, an individual's body and how that may have contributed to the person's death? Uh, yes, that would be included in my forensic pathology fellowship. Great. And so she did, she's done 3,500 autopsies. That's a lot of autopsies, right? That's a lot of autopsies. All right. So um, she did the autopsy on, you know, on Helena Hutchins. So that's why she's here. Um, but really, she's here for one specific reason. But um, we're going to get if her great line. If there's any tattoos, line. I'll document where those are. Um, and then if there's any injuries, I'll document on a body diagram what type of injuries they are. And do you take photographs as part of this? Yes. Thank you. Um, and let's talk now a little bit in a little bit more detail about the, uh, the internal examination. Um, how do you proceed about conducting an internal examination? Do you, how much detail do you want? Um, just give me an idea in terms of... <laughs> how much detail do you want? Um, I got the sense that she could have gone into all the detail. All of the detail, right? Um, now, there's a reason why they call this witness. Um, I mean, nobody disputes that Helena Hutchins is dead. Nobody disputes that. Oh, and I'm being asked if I can just boost the video let's boost the video boost uh, let's go with 300 percent we're gonna triple our video video audio or video sound is boosted um so why would they bring her on well um like everyone knows helena hutchins is dead defense would agree like, defense would stipulate, I am sure, that Helena Hutchins is dead and that she was dead from a gunshot wound. And, you know, the same thing is that dead from a gunshot wound. And, oh, God, now I've got the hiccups. Um, and that they agree that this was fired from a gun held by Alec Baldwin, right? Um I see Ashton Francis saying, I'm disputing she's dead. Okay. Um, the reason why they have her testifying is so they can show the photos, the ugly, horrible photos, the ones that 
that the court is not letting us see because these photos are awful, right? That's why she's here for. That's why she's, um, that's what she's being uh, called for. Um, so, yeah. Um, there w let's, um, there were some other moments here that I think are worth mentioning. Um, cause we get the, uh, you know, the handoff here. Record there was over one liter of blood present in the right chest cavity when Ms. Hutchins arrived to UNMH or the University of New Mexico hospital. That's not where your blood is supposed to be. Um, you know, if you've seen the old Archer thing about it's okay, all of my bleeding is internal, that that's not good. And so that indicates significant blood loss within the chest cavity, and the injury to the right lung was also lethal. Thank you. And uh, I know you mentioned uh, earlier so that she you was... took sam tissue samples for toxicology testing. Is that correct? Yes. And what were the results of those toxicology tests? Not on this trial. The toxicology um, was negative for alcohol and common drugs of abuse. Okay. So Helena, Helena Hutchins was cold sober. Um, that's the only person we know was cold sober on this set because um, I don't know if we can feel the same way about Hannah. Nothing further. All right, so now she gets handed over for the cross. We're going to see a couple of uh, couple of things on the cross. Thank you. Good morning, Doctor. Good morning. Doctor, I first want to ask you about your classification. Now, you've been doing autopsies, you said, I think, 33,000 or 3,500? Yes, 3,500. 3,500. How long, how many years have you done autopsies? I came to the OMI straight out of fellowship in August of 2014. Okay, so 10 years. Yes. And you are very familiar with the classification system, whether it be a homicide or accident, correct? Yes. And in this case, you ruled the cause and manner of death to be accident. Yes. And in a homicide, your definition you gave was a, to rule it a homicide, it has to be a volitional act caused by another to cause death, correct? Yes. And volitional means purposeful? No. What does volitional mean? Volitional just mean well, volitional means a voluntary act. It doesn't mean that there is in it it doesn't always mean there is intent. You don't need intent. So something as simple as pulling a trigger could be the volitional act. Okay, but in this case you reviewed reports and you got information and based on that your determination was that this was an accident. Yes. And when you uh, said accident, I think you described that as what must not be present is intent to cause death. There should no be. There should not be intent to cause fear, or harm, or death. Okay. That's correct. So, in in the materials you read and the information you reviewed, you did not find an intent to cause death by by anybody. That's correct. Okay. And with regard to that classification, that is an official. Um, state of New Mexico ruling, correct? Yes. Okay. And so you, you see where he's going here, right? You see what he's doing. He's saying, okay, this is an accident, so, you know, it's not a homicide. We already knew that, right? Nobody is saying Alec Baldwin intended to shoot her. And similarly, they're saying it doesn't have to be that you intended to kill somebody. But if you intended to harm them, if you intended to scare them, then it can be, you know, if you fire a gun at somebody to scare them, but you accidentally hit them, homicide, right? This is an accident because, you know, he probably didn't mean to pull the trigger. Um, or at least he didn't mean to pull the trigger on a loaded gun. But, um, yeah. Now, somebody, this is a good question here. Did I miss something? There's no one in the gallery. After she testifies, you can actually see a whole bunch of people come back into the gallery. I think that the court chased a bunch of people out because um, because the photos were being shown. That's, that's the thing. Um, no Timu Rob today. He's in the courtroom, but he's not actually... He he was bounced from 
um, from active participation. He's not allowed to even talk to Hannah anymore, but he's also not allowed to stop being, um, to stop attending. He wanted to be free of this trial, but he's still on the record. So he's still required to attend. He's still required to potentially do work if Mr. Bowles tells him to. So let's keep going here. There's, um, so yeah, wish.com tried to accident. quit. That is an uh, yes. Okay. Wish Rob tried I to quit. I know in your notes that you documented the approximate time of the incident was about 1348. Is that correct? Yes. And that is 148? Yes. Okay. And then you documented that Miss Hutchins arrived at the hospital approximately 1520. Is that right? Yes. And that is 320. Yes. Now, that is approximately an hour and a half delay. Is that right? Yes. And you knew that she was being attended to by EMT personnel and there was a helicopter waiting to take her to the hospital, is that right? Yes. And do you have any idea why there was a delay in the hospital taking her? No. Okay. Now, during your findings, you did a CT scan before your external examination, correct? Yes. Did you find evidence of prior medical intervention from Ms. Hutchins? Yes. And what was that now, this evidence is gonna of medical be, intervention? This is going to be messy. Uh, she um, had been intubated. Uh, the intubation was actually in the wrong place. It was in the esophagus. It was removed when she arrived at the hospital, but she was also re-intubated into her esophagus and not into the airway. Um, she had also had surgical intervention. So they had opened up the chest cavities on both sides due to the presence of a gunshot wound. They had also opened up the protective covering surrounding the heart to try to do what they call um, manual cardiac massage to restart the heart. Um, it's my understanding that she was pulseless upon arrival and non-responsive and not breathing. So did you catch this? Um, they intubated her, not into her lungs where air goes, but into her stomach so they were trying to breathe into her stomach for her um and then that they discovered that was wrong they unintubated her and then they re-intubated her back into her stomach so if you're wondering why she didn't make it um this is part of it. Uh, now, why did this happen? I don't know. Maybe it was something about the gunshot. Maybe it was just stupid, stupid crap luck. Um, shit happens. Um, but the question people have been asking is, what does this mean for Hannah and Baldwin? Because isn't it possible she might have lived if they'd intubated her in the right place. And the thing is, is this is completely legally irrelevant. This doesn't matter a bit. So let's give an example here. Um, you know, let's give an example. Um, you know, I stab Bob. Bob goes to the hospital, and while he's at the hospital, they give him an anesthetic that he is allergic to. Um, it's already in his chart that he's allergic to this anesthetic, but for some reason, they don't check. Bob dies because they've pumped him full of an anesthetic that he should never have been given. That's still on me for stabbing him and putting him in the hospital to die in that process. So... Um, the EMTs, like, getting it wrong here, doing, you know, the wrong intubation, doesn't mean shit for Hannah or Baldwin. Um, that is because but for Baldwin and Hannah, Helena doesn't need any of this, right? So, um... Defenses bring this up because the jury might be like, oh, well, it's not such a big deal. Uh, you know, like Han uh, or um, Hannah's issue isn't that, um, you know, that big of a thing. Um, it's just, it is what it is. 
Now, the really sad thing is that nothing was going right for Helena Hutchins at all here. Um, every single safety protocol was bypassed, and she's just so unlucky about the the tube placement. Um, accidents happen, right? It it's a thing. If you are in a you know if you're getting emergency care, so this is just tragic. It's it makes you know it's really frustrating and it's tragic. Um, but I don't think she was, I, you know, she was unlikely to survive in any event. Uh, she'd sustained seriously lethal injuries, but it is just tragic. So, all right, that's, that's her, right? That's her testimony. Uh, next dude is here to testify about what he did with a gun. So that is this guy. And I'm just going to say this guy is also, we're going to make fun of him slightly because we have to. Um, we're going to make fun of this guy a little bit. Just just a wee bit. Like, not all the way, but like 10%. Congratulations on the weight loss, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Whatever your name was. Um, mm, that That's a suit choice. That's a suit choice. Um... Like, I'm just going to say, when you go suit shopping, you should not do it at the tent store. Um, this guy is wearing a suit jacket that, I mean, he's not a, a small guy. Where did he find this suit jacket that fits him like a circus tent? So. Do you swear? Do you swear or affirm under penalty of law that the testimony you'll give in this case will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, ma'am. All right. Thank you. Have a seat. Talk into the microphone. And I see people saying he lost weight. I mean, it's possible he lost weight, and if so, this guy used to be huge. And congratulations to this guy if that if that's weight loss. But oh my God, the suit. Um, oh my God, the suit. The suit is. Yeah. And if it is weight loss, holy crap, dude, that is impressive as F. Seriously impressive. Um, so what does this guy do? Well, um, he's going to go through his qualifications and I don't care because really he's here to tell us about one thing. He's here to tell us about this thing, this gun. Zook, who was the, at the time the sergeant of the criminal investigation division, asked me to take a look at this rifle. Apparently, it, uh, there, was, there were some cartridges that were stuck in the gun, and uh, he didn't know how to clear it, so he asked me to clear it for him. So what I, to, to answer your question, what I'm looking at here is a Henry Patton Allen Arms uh, 4440 lever action rifle. Okay. We heard before about this gun, and we had a previous guy testify about how he screwed up the gun. So... Um, this guy is, um, this guy's kind of, um, sort of insignificant here in the larger scheme of things, but what he's going to tell us is he's the guy who unloaded this gun successfully. Uh, this is a lever action rifle. And so some people, I saw some people in other chats, not here, um, here, you know, whatever, um, this isn't the gun that was used to shoot Helena Hutchins. This is a different gun entirely. The whole point of this is to A, show that there was a an improper cartridge loaded into this gun, and B, uh, to explain how this gun comes to be unloaded. And this is because otherwise, defense could argue, listen, the prosecution's screwing up all these guns. So this is this guy's here basically to prevent this situation or prevent this story. But ultimately, whoever loaded this gun, which is probably Hannah, um, is, you know, messed up. This one was pointed at Travis uh, Fimmel's head in a different scene. Oof. 
Um, I would feel really bad if I had a gun pointed at my head in this uh, movie. Now, one thing people have wondered in different chats is they said, is this a double-barreled rifle? It is not a double-barreled rifle. Um, the top bit here, like the top tube, is the barrel, right? That's That's the barrel. The bottom tube is the magazine. That is where spare rounds go. And when you work the lever, it will pull around from the magazine, that tube, and feed it into uh, the chamber to be fired. So this is a single-barreled rifle. Um, so get that out of the way. Basically, how does he unload it? He opens up the end of it to open up the magazine, and then you just pour out the ammo, right? Uh, why can you put a 45 caliber round in a 44, yeah, um, in the 4440 lever action? Well, because it's just slightly bigger, like slightly larger diameter, and so the tube magazine doesn't fit it super, super tight. Um, I'm being asked about how many rounds does that tube uh, fed rifle hold? I'm not sure. Um, so, yeah. Uh, catching up, paramedic, esophageal intubation is an oh no. It could have been bloody AF and they couldn't see. Still, uh, ETCO2 should have shown. Yeah. Um, it's a tragic thing there. Um, side note, Ian, is the standard manufacturer DP12 or the IWI Tavor 12 gauge legal in Canada? I'd have to look it up. Um, I didn't know Tavor made a 12 gauge. Um, I've got, I've got their, uh, the Tavor 223, so, yeah. Um, double barrels in that time frame are two barrels side by side with two triggers. Yep. Um, do they make lever action rifles anymore? They do. Um, I want to buy one. I want to buy one in 357. Um, so, but I don't... Um, right now, those are super expensive. So, um, all right. Now, on cross-examination, he's asked, could it have been a dummy round? And he says, I don't know. Um, and he's also asked to speculate as to what Zook did to the gun. And he says, I don't know. So, um, and uh, Manders, your super chat did not disappear. Um, we'll get to super chats pretty quickly here. I'll review some super chats. Um, I'm just going to note here. If you were watching this on Crime TV or on Court TV or wherever else, uh, you will have seen a whole bunch of ads during the thing. I don't turn on ads until after the live is done. So if you're here joining me live, you will not be seeing ads, I don't think. It shouldn't have ad breaks. Um, now, that is... Um, that's just, you know, because I want you guys to be able to see it. But it also means that this is sort of entirely super chat slash membership slash etc supported so just let you know i don't really believe in you know i i hate watching ads myself so i i try to give you guys that uh that break all right so let's uh move on to our next witness and you might notice we are racing through witnesses here we're racing through witnesses why um, oh, yes, I do need Zora's. Well, I don't need Zora's help, but there we go. Um, you might be wondering, why are we racing through witnesses? Most of these morning witnesses are uninteresting. Also, I'm told I need to remind you guys, hit the like button, hit the subscribe, hit the share, all of those things, because it's YouTube and we got to do those things. It's just the way YouTube works. All right, so next guy up after this dude, because... This dude really is just here to teach us two things. One, um, he unloaded the gun. Two, a lesson in fashion. Okay, so this guy next. He arose to become a digital forensic examiner at the New Mexico Regional Computer Forensics Laboratory. Uh, I, I got assigned that position. So what is this guy? This guy is Byron French. Uh, Byron French. And he does computer forensics. Uh, computer forensics does, you know, means that Basically, this is the dude who looked at, at uh, Hannah's cell phone, right? 
So why is he here? Well, he is here to testify about some stuff they found on her phone that's really important and that they don't actually tie anything together right yet. Um, they're not going to tie it together right yet. They're going to read all of these texts out. And then later, when they have another witness, they're going to tie them together. But this is the guy who gets things together um, in that sense. Now, um, he has a fun moment. Do you see that photograph on your screen? I do, ma'am. Um, is this a photograph that was on Ms. Gutierrez's cell phone? Yes, it was. And can you uh, tell the jurors the day and time that this was taken? Uh, without looking exactly at the EXIF data, um, do we have we'll get a picture that. of that by chance or? I probably do. That would help. I wouldn't want to put it up on that screen. Uh, do, let, let me ask you this. Do you remember the date? That so she says, do you remember the date and time that this was taken? He's like, can I see the EXIF data? Now the EXIF data is the like is the metadata, right? It's all of the stuff about when the picture was taken. And she's like, um, I, I probably have that. I, I probably have that. But she's nervous. She doesn't want to put it up on the screen. Why? Because the EXIF data might contain things like Hannah's cell number again. And Hannah is not happy about her cell number again. There's... I'm just going to mention there's an interesting allegation floating around. Um, somebody it was saying that um, somebody claims that Hannah reached her, reached out and sent them a message on Instagram. And the message was basically, stop making videos with my cell number in it. Now, I don't know if it was actually Hannah, because why the heck would Hannah reach out to this one guy? Um, I mean, why? Uh, it, it doesn't make a whole lot of, whole lot of sense there. Um, maybe she did, uh, or maybe somebody else was messing with, with the guy. But um, God, I hope she's not messaging random people on Instagram to send them messages in the middle of a trial. But I can't put a whole lot of certainty on it because I don't know if it was Hannah or not. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Um, all right. So let's have, um, let's have a further look here. Um, all right. So what else does, what else does this guy have to say? So they take a break. Um, they take a little lunch, lunchity break here. Send you some text messages. You did. Uh, are those text messages from the extraction that you performed? Yes, ma'am. On Ms. Gutierrez's phone? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. All right, so some text messages. I'm going to show you what's marked as States Exhibit 19. Let's see if... Let's see the text messages. If you can just give us uh, the date and time uh, and whether or not those messages are incoming or outgoing, who they're going from and who they're going to. Uh, sure. So both of these messages appear to be outgoing from... Ha! Huh, these look a lot more redacted. Um, these look a lot more redacted than uh, we saw before, right? Um, fantastic. So, um, yeah. Now, you might be saying, why, what are these texts about? We're so bored. Why? Well, these texts are about cocaine. That's what these are. The, these are the cocaine texts. These are the cocaine texts. So, um, Hannah is asking for cocaine back. That's what she wants. She has given somebody some cocaine, at least these are the allegations, and she wants to get it back. But the texts, devoid of context, are uninteresting, right? Uninteresting. And 
So she's saying, hey, I might be coming to Albuquerque tonight and was wondering if I can get that stuff. That stuff, the prosecution is going to allege, is cocaine. And so they're bringing this guy up here to testify about these text messages so that now these text messages are in evidence. They're they're properly exhibits. And later, when they bring the person that she was talking to, Becca, Becca's going to be, I'm sure they're calling Becca to the stand. Once they bring Becca in, Becca is going to say, oh yeah, this is the text message and it was about cocaine. So that's where they're going with all of this, right? Um, the uh, What's identified as the owner of the device, Hannah Reed, to a contact named Becca Santa Fe. The first message has the timestamp at the bottom right of October 23rd. 2021 12:28 p.m. and it says hey comma i might be coming to albuquerque tonight and was wondering if i can get that stuff uh, the next message has a timestamp of october 23rd 2021 at 509 p.m. and it says becca call me when you get a chance and states exhibit 120 it's more like you can't put that shit back in the horse. Cat in a bag sounds doable, but, um, yeah. Can you see that or is it too small? I believe I can see it. Can you guys see it? Can, I, can the jurors see it? Yes. You bet. We'll zoom in and we'll just move it around a little bit. Oh, I am sure she's not. Um, so I think the first message is an outgoing is uh, from the same contact, Hannah Reed owner, to... Courtney Santa Fe. They're going to be tied together uh, the when, they get the other, when they get other He gets witnesses. in in 30 mins or so. Becca hasn't texted me back at all, and I'm trying to get my things from her tomorrow. This message was sent at uh, on October 23rd, 2021 at 6.20 p.m. The next message is from Courtney Santa Fe to Hannah Reed, the owner of the device. And it just says OK, uh, with the timestamp of October 23rd, 2021 at 624 p.m. The next one is from Hannah Reed to Courtney Santa Fe. It says, OK, know if, excuse me, let me start over. OK, let me know if you hear from her at all. Thanks for checking on me again. Miss you already. And that is timestamped October 23rd, 2021 at 625 p.m. So council has asked me to um, let you know that uh, some of this uh, would ordinarily be hearsay, but they've agreed to let the um, let the entire um, portion in, and it's for context effect on listener. Okay, thank you. So this is the judge basically saying, here's why you're not hearing a hearsay exception because the sides have agreed that otherwise this will not make a whole lot of sense if you only hear a little bit, right? And defense, there's not a whole lot here. Like, yeah, this nobody cares about this other than the drug connection, which is where that gets, you know, relevant. States Exhibit 121. Uh, another message from Hannah Reed to Courtney Santa Fe. Oh, and I'm we're sorry. just going to pick just up the speed that a little it bit. Part of the, it was part of the previous group. We'll, we'll uh, take 121 out. Um, accelerating to 25% more than usual. This one, the uh, top message, is from oh, Hannah Megan Reed Fox to Courtney Santa Fe. And the message says, could Becca maybe drop off my things to y'all since I haven't been able to catch her? That is uh, November 13th, 2021 at 7.02 p.m. The next message shown there is from Courtney Santa Fe to Hannah Reed owner. I asked her to, hopefully she will. And that is uh, the same time, or I hope I won't disappoint. November 13, 2021 at 7.06 p.m. States Exhibit 123. So guys, the whole point of this is that the prosecution wants to show that this this baggie that, uh, that Hannah was trying to get back is drugs. That's why they're trying to make this, um, that's why they're getting all these texts in. And the point of how is this drugs is because Hannah wants it back so bad. Um, 
you know, d their defense team has said like, oh, well, maybe it's just like some other white powder. And is there really a white powder that you would want back as bad as you'd want back whatever this is that isn't cocaine, right? Um, yeah. The top message is from Hannah Reed, owner, to Becca Santa Fe. Hey, coming to Albuquerque tomorrow. That is time stamped November, it looks like 7th, 2021 at 2.52 p.m. And the next message is from Hannah Reed, owner, to Becca Santa Fe. Gonna be there for a week or so, November 7th, 2021 at 2.52 p.m. Hint, 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 I want my Coke back. The top one is from Becca Santa Fe, uh, from Becca Santa Fe to Hannah Reed owner. I'm in Roswell working on Barron and Toluca, and that is time stamped November 8th, 2021 at 9.20 a.m. The next message is from Hannah Reed owner to Becca Santa Fe. Aw, oh, is that far? Bummer, I wanted to see you. And that is November 10th, 2021 at 2.39 p.m. She's getting blown off here. States Exhibit 125. This one is from Hannah Reed owner to Becca Santa Fe. And it says, hey Becca, mind if my brother-in-law picks up my things from you after Thanksgiving. He lives in Albuquerque. That is timestamp November 22nd, 2021 at 5.53 really p.m. She really wants this baggie back. <coughs> States Exhibit 120. Now, here's the thing. I genuinely think she's trying to get some personal items back in these texts. Unless she's got a brick of Coke, she ain't gonna pester like this for months. Not saying she didn't have Coke though. I think they've got Becca who's going to testify to say the only thing she had, like I had of hers was a little baggie of, of Coke. And that's, you know, that's what we're going to hear is that's the only thing. Now, Hannah could get up on the stand and testify to say, no, no, this isn't about the little baggie. This is about like, she borrowed my, I don't know. She borrowed my snowblower. They have a lot of snowblowers in New Mexico, right? Um, so it could be that. Like, she borrowed my snowblower. I really need my snowblower back because it's New Mexico winter and we might get a snowflake. You know, not the kind of snowflake she likes. So the thing is that if Hannah wants to do that, then Hannah has to get up on the stand. And the thing is, is defense may have to call Hannah just to because defense's theory right now defense's sort of line about all of this is like look Hannah is like so young she's so inexperienced she's so like everybody's bullying her they're pushing her around they're you know all of these things right and the person they really need to testify to that is right there hannah they need her to testify to say i like i was you know i was being manipulated i was being pushed out of the loop i was being um you know forced out um this quote of the day that i was able to hear the full cock was beaten off yes so um that's now, the prosecution also kind of wants to, um, prosecution also kind of wants Hannah to testify because the prosecution has a ton of shit that they can throw at Hannah and a ton of the shit that they can throw at Hannah is from Hannah's own interview, but they also have, and remember, this is from the motions in limine. We saw this, um, Hannah had a moment where she apparently she's said to have let her boyfriend used a motorcycle while he was drunk and he died. Now, they don't care about this for the purpose of saying, hey, she, you know, she shouldn't have done that. That's, you know, that she's a careless person. That would be propensity evidence. But apparently, apparently, she also told the police something incorrect. And so if she gets up on the stand and is like, oh, you know, blah, blah, blah. They can just hit her with, and you'd never lie to the police, right? And she'd say, of course, no, because if she says, yes, I would lie to the police, then that looks terrible in front of a jury. 
And then you bring that in and you say, well, you lied about this, didn't you? That's where that comes in. That's where that comes in. And yeah. Okay. Um, Six. I know these are um, a little out of order. We'll, we'll pull them together with another witness in terms of their chronology. Go ahead, sir. Uh, this one is from Hannah Reed owner to Courtney Santa Fe. Hey, do you have Becca's number? And that is October 23rd, 2021 at 517. Oh, you guys think you get snow. You guys think you get snow. Let me send myself a video so I can A uh, message from Hannah Reed owner to Becca Santa Fe. Becca with the question mark on October 24th, 2021 at 1131 a.m. And for context, 129. Um, this one, the first one is from Becca Santa Fe to Hannah Reed owner. And it says, hey, dot, dot, dot. I am in Hamas working on big sky splinter unit. That is October 24th, 2021 at 1133 a.m. The next message is from Becca Santa Fe to Hannah Reed owner. How are you doing, lady? And that is How October are you 24th, doing, lady? 2021 at 1134 a.m. Thank you, sir. I'll pass the witness. Cross exam. Good morning, Mr. French. Good morning, ma'am. Um, so you looked at phones, and I'm going to focus on uh, Sarah Zachary and Dave Halls. You looked at those two phones, didn't you? I did. Um, and for Sarah Zachary and Dave Halls, you bookmarked a uh, very limited data that you extracted, right? Yes, ma'am. So you, so you didn't extract all the data on Sarah Zachary's phone, right? I did full extractions on all phones that were given to me, ma'am. And then you bookmarked the limited data and passed that on to Detective Hancock, right? Yes, ma'am. That is correct. And the same for Dave Halls. You, you bookmarked limited data and passed that on to Detective. So you know what they're going to be doing here? They're going to be saying, but you didn't look at Alec Baldwin's phone. Okay. So that's where they're going with this is you didn't look at Baldwin's phone. That's basically all we're going to get out of this guy. Um, that's all we're going to get out of this guy. And yeah. So let's, let's move on to our next guy. And our next guy is pretty awesome. I like this next guy a lot. If it loads. Hmm. I just sent myself an email that's supposed to have an attachment, but it has no attachment. Where's my attachment? Yeah. That's why. It exceeds the size limit. Why are you not running? There we go. Do you swear firm under penalty of law that the testimony you'll give in this case will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. All right, thank you. Have a seat talking to the microphone. Uh, Your Honor, pursuant to our uh, agreement with security in terms of firearm safety, uh, uh, Mr. Rice is going to provide Mr. Haig with a box that has a firearm in it. It has a so if you've been sitting in this trial, how excited are you to hear that they are bringing in a witness and they're handing him a gun? Everybody here is a little bit nervous at this point, right? Hey, we got this guy and we're giving him a gun. Yay! Maybe not. Okay, so um, that his sort of our starting point uh, but they're going to give this guy a gun and this guy I actually think deserves to have a gun here clear yes now note they say okay we're handing this guy a, a cleared gun they have just called out cold gun they've just called cold gun right that's what's happened I suspect Mr. Haig will clear it again <laughs> That's a cue, folks. It is clear. Okay, that's number one. We just got to see this guy clear a gun. How long did that take? How long did it take him to check the gun again? 
Well, let's go back and time him. One. It is clear. Five seconds. That's Sir, my can count. You go Five, ahead and six your seconds. Full name for the record. Lucian C. Haig, spelled H A A G. That's demonstration number one how to clear a gun. Now, Bob says he didn't check for dummies versus live rounds. Okay, but you know, you see anything else in there, you, you gotta check it. So, all right. Spell your first name. L-U-C-I-E-N. How are you currently employed? I have my own consulting firm in Carefree, Arizona, Forensic Science Services. What does Forensic Science Services do? I'm involved in I'm not firearms normal... evidence examination. This is a fair question. I'm not at normal playback speed, but I was counting by looking at the timer as opposed to measuring seconds myself. So, yeah. Primarily the reconstructive aspects of shootings, distance determinations, uh, long range shootings. This is it a ricocheted bullet? Uh, how close was the gun when it was discharged? Those are all reconstructive issues beyond the usual identifying a bullet or cartridge as having been fired from a gun. That's something I also do, but my main focus is the reconstructive aspects of shootings. What were you asked to do in this case? Well, a number of things to determine. Uh, and, and let me let, let me stop you real quick. Were you asked to do reconstruction or were you asked to do more examination and identification? Identification was a small part of what I did. I did do that with the evidence cartridge case, but primarily reconstruction. On this in this case, that's correct. Okay. Um, and can you uh, give the jurors an idea of your background and experience, please? Yes, most uh, criminalists, which is my uh, professional title, have a degree in one of the physical sciences. Mine is in chemistry with some minor in physics. Uh, that was obtained in 1963 from the University of California at Berkeley. I then went to California State College at Long Beach, taking two more years of study, which included two semesters of criminalistics. That course was taught by the primary firearms examiner for the city of Los Angeles. Other courses were mathematics, clinical chemistry, documents examination. That takes me to 1965, when I gained employment with the city of Phoenix Police Crime Laboratory as an entry-level criminalist. Um, I was sent on to Arizona State University, a local university, for additional coursework. I started attending meetings of professional organizations that deal with firearms evidence quick. because that became my main focus in the crime lab. Although I worked in all sections, I later supervised them. My real interest and passion was the ballistics or firearms unit of the laboratory. I left there, there being the city of Phoenix crime lab in uh, 1982. So I was there about 18 years. I've been doing some private consulting, 83 some years teaching old. at that time. I was an instructor in criminalistics, which included firearms evidence. Um, I started my own company when I left the city of Phoenix. My company became my full-time employer and I've been working there ever since. Okay, so this guy is um, whoop, this guy is impressive, right? This guy knows his stuff, and he's going to tell us all about the guns. Now, I'm going to skip over some of that um, because I'm going to get us to... Uh, just going to jump over here. What was your opinion with regard to the working condition of this firearm when it was initially received by the FBI? By various means, I could see that it was in proper working order as designed by the original inventor. And tell us what you took into consideration in coming to that opinion. Well, there are several ways. One of them is on my screen. I don't know if it's on your screen or not, but it's from the FBI examiner's report, a man named Bruce Ziegler, I believe. Who Bryce, I Bryce, yeah. But I looked at all of his photographs and notes. And on the left side are the four positions that the hammer can have with this gun when it's working properly and undamaged. The top one shows the hammer. Guys, you're going to hear a lot about cock. Um, again, this is not, um, this is, you know, we're not talking about the world's most boring orgy. This is the guy trying to explain the different positions and he is good. Rob, we, we're going to get to the interviews. We haven't got there yet. We're getting through the morning right now. We're getting through it real fast. Um, yeah, this is a man who loves his job so much that he stared retirement in the eye and said, F you, I will never enjoy retirement as much as I enjoy my work. Yep. Would you have a beer with this man, Ruckel? Um, Yes. Yeah. I'd go to the range with this guy. 
I, I feel like that'd be a lot of fun, and I feel like he would outshoot the hell out of me. Fully forward and down. That's the way it would appear if you had just fired it or even dry fired it. The next picture down looks pretty much the same, but it's not. The hammer is about an eighth of an inch rearward, uh, and now it has engaged an internal mechanism, a safety notch. So now the hammer and firing pin cannot reach a fired, a live cartridge, I'm sorry, a live cartridge. So why do they have this safety notch? Well, because if you don't put it into this safety notch, then it's resting directly onto the cartridge and messing with that hammer can make it go bang. So, yeah. Um, so. The third picture down is the loading position, also known as half cock. The previous position could be called, and it's often called, quarter cock. At that half cock position, the third picture down, the cylinder, which holds six, capable of holding six cartridges, is now free to rotate. Prior to this, in the upper two pictures, it was locked and secured by a small latch that we can't see in these pictures. The final picture, and it's the most important one, the hammer is at the full cock, ready to fire position. You can now see the firing pin in the hammer, that it's fully rearward, and it's staying there. Nothing's that going off until it's at full cock. Uh, later. And if you would, um, because it, describe for us what the firearm is that you have in front of you. Is that this exact gun? It's the brother to the evidence gun. Same make, model, caliber. Uh, it's just not the evidence gun. And um, would you demonstrate I've for got these the ladies well. and gentlemen of the jury uh, the the different positions and also uh, specifically the half cock position and the rotation of the cylinder? Sure. Well, I checked it, but again, just so everyone feels as comfortable as they're going to be around a firearm. Hang on just a second. <laughs> you see what he's doing? I checked it, but I'm checking it again, and I'm going to show you all, members of the jury, that it's clear. This is the step that... This is the step that Hannah was supposed to take with Baldwin. And he's clearing it again before he picks it up. You know why he's clearing it again before he picks it up? And this is, you can hear him clearing it right here. And then he's going to get up and show the jury that it's cleared. Because this is a guy who is absolutely finicky about safety. I do this all the time where I, um, you know, where if you've left a gun alone for a minute, you check it again. Right, you check it again and again and again. Uh, Brooklyn of the Bailey, how much do you want this expert's job because he's awesome? I don't think that I will be as awesome as he is when I hit to 83. I think this guy is fantastic. So, what was the worst part of today for Gutierrez? Gutierrez, and we're gonna get to Gutierrez blowing up her own freaking life. So, yeah, um, let's see what happens next. You should probably stand in the middle. Yeah, do you want to stand? And uh, sure. That would be great. So he just checked it, and now he's going to check. We're just going to put this to one time speed for this part. I'm left-hand dominant, so I have to explain that. Yes, I ate dinner tonight. The hammer is fully down. If there were a live cartridge in this gun, the firing pin would be resting right against it. So this is an unsafe carry position if it were a loaded gun. It would also be the position if I had just fired it. There would be a spent cartridge. The firing pin would be deep into the primer of that cartridge. You can also see if the trigger is back. Now when I pull it... Now, I just want to say, let's stop and... Instead of looking at this guy, this guy is, like, this guy's interesting, but I also want you to look at the prosecutor's table because the prosecutor's table the prosecutor are like so you know they they know this right I, at least i hope and yet the prosecutors their attention is a hundred percent on this guy they are wrapped with attention and that's because this guy's got some charisma as well as he's got the knowledge the it guy's looking at him the prosecutor's looking at him the uh, the deputy is sitting here. He's he's studying it. Everybody is focused. Like the deputy's leaning over for a better view. He's like, I gotta see this. There. That's the safety position. Very little movement. 
but the hammer is now about an eighth of an inch rearward. The trigger has just popped forward, so it's got an internal spring that is resetting. Cylinder is still locked up, cannot rotate. Now when I pull it to the load position, you may have seen the cylinder rotate already. It's free to rotate now. The little latch that I mentioned, which we can't see, has been pulled down by that motion. There's a loading gate here on the side that's opened. And this is where I would either remove fired cartridges or place live cartridges up to a total of six. After loading it, fully loading it, I close that gate. I have two choices. If I'm ready to shoot, I'm going to cock it. Finger off the trigger there, man. I decided man. what I'm going to shoot at is to be shot at, pull the trigger. Hammer falls off of a ledge, a little notch. Actually, it's more of a step on the hammer. So now we're back to where we were a moment ago. If I'm going to fire it again, pull it all the way back. Hammer stays in position, which we saw in the photographs. Which again is important because yep. when we get to the damage that occurred with the gun, the hammer won't stay there. If I'm going to let it down, if I'm going to render this gun safe, I just... Now you see how he's got this pointed in a safe direction, which is towards the ceiling? Like nobody here is on the ceiling. So he's got this pointed towards the ceiling because even though he's just checked it three times that it's unloaded. Yeah. Um... Except that Brandon Herrera proved this wrong in a video. Um, I'm not sure Brandon Herrera's video agrees with this. So I'm not sure how he proved it wrong. At least that's what I remember from that video. So I did the same checking. I mean, yeah. I'm not going to shoot. I do have to pull the trigger, but I get my thumb firmly on this spur. Pull the trigger, let it down. Once I get past the halfway point, I can let go of the trigger and it engages a safety notch again. So there's all the steps. It's, it's called a single action. You've probably heard that term a couple of times because pulling the trigger accomplishes one single thing. It fires the gun. Um, in, in terms of... That's a great explanation for single action. Single action does one single thing. It shoots. That's, that's it. It fires the gun. Um, double action, the trigger will do two things. It'll pull the hammer back and then it'll fire the gun. So, um, I really like this guy. He is a great witness. Um, and I understand he does come to Canada. So I am, I'm excited about all of this. Sorry. In terms of that loading gate, uh, and the, the loading of the gun. Um, if you were... People who are familiar with guns, check the guns, they recheck the guns. They, you know, you... If you've left a gun alone, you don't assume it's still unloaded. Um, you, you check. To show me the primers and the head stamps uh, of the of the rounds that you have in the gun, and we know that there are none. Yeah, and this guy's a prosecution witness. Just complete pretend. Uh, show me how you would show me what's in that gun. Well, I bring it up, no one downrange. Here, maybe we go this way so that I bring the hammer to half cock. Okay, we want to show the jury. Let's go over here. Let's so they can. So he's got it up. Oh, okay. not point. There we go. The. You see how it all points as he's moving around? He's keeping it up because he's not allowing it to point at any person. He wants to show the jury this, but he also isn't pointing it at any human, right? So uh, no upstairs if this is the main courthouse. Could have upstairs in one of the courthouses in uh, SF, but he did check and recheck. Also, hopefully the the floor would stop it, but there's a limit to how much, you know, how perfect it can be. She used a term, an industry term, the head stamp. It's what's written on the cartridge. And in the middle of which is a primer. So if she wanted to see, or any of you wanted to see, are there fired cartridges in here? Live cartridges, all six? I just rotate the cylinder. And we go a couple of times around, see if there are any empty chambers or fired cartridges We're up or live four rounds. Checks. If we wanted to take them out, if they're live, you just dump them out. If they're fired, you need this ejection rod here to knock a spent cartridge out because it's expanding. 
So if you were to show me the rounds that you have in the gun uh, in this manner, I can only see the head stamp and primer of one cartridge at a time. That's right. In, in this view from behind the gun with the gate open. Okay. Thank you, sir. Right, you take seat. my seat? Yes. This is also worth noting when you um, when you fire a gun, the brass casing expands to fill the space that's around it. Right, it it gets pushed pushed open. So um, that's that's kind of key here. Um, that's why there it's harder to remove a spent cartridge. So. So, it, uh, they'll also cover Maybe, his accommodations. Oh, yes. um, is there anything else that you can think of uh, from the documents that you reviewed uh, that uh, that that went into that contributed to your opinion that the gun was in uh, proper working order when it was received at the FBI? Uh, yes, the examiner was able to fire at least 12 live cartridges for comparison purposes uh, to recover bullets and fired cartridge cases. Uh, the gun had to be in working order to do that. Had it been in the condition I later found it, uh, you wouldn't have been able to do that. And the condition that you later found it, can you just kind of describe um, what what was wrong with it when you took it into evidence? And I'm gonna pull a, an aid up. This is gonna be an exhibit that's already entered into evidence, exhibit 97A. It had been dis dis partially disassembled. It was in a gun box with some ties. I'm working on it. <laughs> Hang on. Um, My... This is a good point. So if the spent bullet case expands after it's shot, then whoever emptied the gun had to do the ejection rod, right? Or possibly pick it out with a finger. Yep. Uh, definitely intentional. Yeah, whoever unloaded it meant to unload it. Um, this is not correct. There's plenty of th reasons to have real guns on a movie set. You can't make the recoil happen. Actors just suck at that. Um, it doesn't look real. It doesn't anything. Okay. There's also a number of shots. Uh, if you can you use this as an aid and, and sir, your with screen with CGI and editing, uh, you, you can because it's you know, impossible use it to draw lines and okay. all kinds of stuff. So it's a touch screen. It is if yeah. if you need some assistance. This is one of the FBI of the many FBI pictures, and you're looking at three parts of the gun. The obvious one's the hammer. He's going to show you how to mark it and uh, get rid of it. How do I erase it? He's having some tech trouble here. Okay. The hammer's pretty obvious. Here's the firing pin. I really wanted to make a circle. It's making arrows. <laughs> <laughs> He's stuck with arrows. You tricked me. This is correct. Okay. We're looking at the hammer. And I'm really pressing hard. The hammer, the important part of the hammer are these notches. You can see here. There's two clear notches. Something goes in them. Well, one of them is the safety position. The next one is the load position. The one that's very difficult to see, and I almost obliterated it, is down at the bottom of my circle. That's, the, that's where the full cock step would be. But it's been... Uh, peened, P-E-E-N-E-D. It's been uh, knocked off, rolled, rounded off, and is full of very rough tool marks. The piece that would fit into each one of those is the trigger. And the trigger is the black piece here, but the tip of the trigger in the industry is called the sear, S-E-A-R. That's the Sears piece that important. goes in those three locations. And it really sets, it rests on this step when it's in the full cock position. So that's somewhat tenuous, and the pulling of the trigger causes it to slide off, the hammer to fall. There's a little piece in that circle. All right, chat. I see you talking about the peen, P-E-E-N. Um, 
you're right. The cock has been peened. Um, and then the tip broke off. Just the tip. Um, yeah. I just drew. That's the broken off sear of the trigger. So it's an incomplete trigger. And finally, the object up here. Sorry, folks, I was blocking this. Two names. The, industry, the company that makes this reproduction gun calls it the Bolt, B-O-L-T. Uh, I've always called it a cylinder stop latch. It was the thing that was securing the cylinder in the safety position, uh, in the uh, full cock position, but not in the loading position. That The left side of that goes up into the notches in the cylinder for those previous positions and drops down and allows the cylinder to rotate in the load position. So looking at those both photographically and in person, I could see that the full cock step or notch on the hammer was broken away, beaten away, or knocked away. Kind of hard to describe it if you don't see it under the microscope. And the sear was broken off. And the stop latch. No, a snap cap uh, is wings, made two to look pieces that protrude different. out. Uh, that also was broken. And the gun can't work in the normal fashion if it had been that way on the movie set. And based on your document review, do you have an opinion about how uh, the, the bolt the trigger sear and the hammer were damaged. What what took place that caused that damage? So somebody beat off the the full cock um, so that it looked like it had been peened. <laughs> yeah. The hammer had to be in the full cock position and one or more substantial blows, impacts to the hammer. Because it's just sitting, the, the, the sear and the trigger and the full cock notch are just sitting there, engaged with each other. And you can see the small beam area. The so if you give a substantial blow, one or more, to the back of the hammer, it is stressing that area. And it will. If you blow the full cock with the. Okay, I'm going to stop. <laughs> finally, and did finally fail. And I can see under the microscope a lot of very rough tool marks where it's just rolled over and rounded off. It's no longer a step. It's a rounded area, which cannot retain the trigger, even if it was intact. What's your understanding of, of the circumstances of the blows you're talking about? As I understood reading the examiner's notes and report, it was an evaluation of whether this gun uh, was prone to accidental discharge by an impact to the hammer. Okay, we're going to uh, look at a, a few other photos here. Oh, I don't know. I take this photo down, I'm going to pause. Yeah. Found one and only one movie that used live ammo on set. Act of Valor, that movie had real U.S. Navy SEALs. They aren't reckless with firearms. Still concerned about actors. KVB confirmed this. Yeah, I've heard that one. I'll, I'll have to check. Um, is it like a circumcision? Uh all right, so let's skip ahead a little bit. I don't want to go through all of this guy. I do want to go through all of his testimony, but we're not going to go through all of his testimony because otherwise we would be here forever, and we got other stuff to get to. Um, Company calls it the bolt. Replay crew um, I know it as here, a cylinder to stop a latch. Chat. You, as a user, with that would slimy, only slimy see examination. Yep. that part. Comes up and down inside you, the frame of the gun to lock the cylinder up or to release it. The rest of it's well within the gun, and it's being operated when you... Uh, pull the hammer back and it's broken. One of the little ears or tabs uh, is broken off. Can you hold up your um, exemplar revolver and just show the ladies and gentlemen of the jury the, the, the area of that bolt that you have circled? Can you just show the ladies and gentlemen of the jury the notches on the cylinder where that engages? Sure. It, you might be able to see the notches here. They come around. That's where the, the latch goes in. You can't see the latch unless we disassemble the gun. If you were to have this in the jury room and you were to look through here, there's a little bit of daylight. I can see it pop up and I can hear it go into the battery, so to speak. But otherwise, you will not see it. Yep, we've talked about that a fair not. bit. And show me, I'm sorry, can you show me the notches on the cylinder where? Sure. Let's bring it to the load position. Yeah, let's, let, let's walk around so that they can see it just a little bit better, especially since the, it's a dark metal, it's hard to see. Just walk down the line. My finger's right at one of them. <laughs> yes, this is the same make and model that was used. Now, here's the thing this jury gets to see this guy with his 
focus on safety, with his knowledge of the of the guns, with all of this, um, you get to see him. You know, the jury gets to show him all of this. And you know what? You can't see it, but I bet the jury is leaning in to look at this gun. Um, even after they've been told over and over and over again that, you know, about these guns going off on set and every but like and these random things. But I bet this jury is comfortable with this guy. And there's going to be a real distinction between this guy and and Hannah. We're going to see some stuff about Hannah that might horrify you. And a lot of the people, uh, there's been a lot of people defending Hannah, right, in these uh, things. And I'm wondering how many of them have seen Hannah's interviews before this day. Because I, I was watching uh, Crime TV's chat. And, or Court TV's chat, rather. And I watched I watched people change their mind in real time in Court TV's chat. Okay. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> I'm going to shift gears real quick because then we're going to have to move to another machine. Um, the... Were you also asked to examine some uh, ammunition in this case? A lot of ammunition, yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, <clears throat> I'm going to show you what's been oh, marked man, as I watch people State's go Exhibit from 131. Do you recognize of Hannah that? To, oh, my God. What's F that? that? It's a disassembled 45 Colt cartridge with a type of bullet known to the shooting community as a semi-wad cutter bullet. Yeah. The red material is just a, a, a lubricant that can be any color. So it's not the red color that's important. It's the shape of the nose of this bullet called a semi wad cutter. Yeah. And what's this? Uh, that states exhibit 132. Uh, that's a much better picture of the contents of that packet. The cartridge case is on the right. The semi wad cutter cast lead bullet. This bullet was made in a bullet. So guys, you might be wondering why does this bullet have lube? Well, partially because we're, we weren't done with the double entendres. This is a well lubricated bullet. Um, but the lube is like the why it has a lubricant there is so that as the bullet goes through the barrel, it reduces barrel wear, it makes it um, travel more smoothly. And um, if you've heard of like the black talon ammunition, which, you know, they they were calling like cop killer bullets and this kind of crap, the black from black talon was actually a lubricant that was on that uh, projectile. So... Yeah, and you can see the the powder there. It's little uh, little donuts. But mold uh, is right there. You can see the truncated cone is the ten dollar yeah. description of that nose shape. It was going to be a cone that truncated at the top. Again, semi wad cutter bullet is the other name for it. And in the vial is the propellant, and that's a propellant uh, very well known to me it's called Trail Boss. It's designed and intended for cowboy action shooting and no, they're going to have bullets rifling. in traditional firearms like this. And sir, These would be what rifled. was your understanding of of the the source of this cartridge? And, and when I say source, I mean in terms of the relevant locations in this case. This was one of a number of cartridges like this that came from a supplier in Albuquerque of uh, ammunition, okay. props, uh, dummy cartridges, so on. Do you know if that was PDQ props? Yes, that, I recognize the name. Okay, thank you. And States Exhibit 133, what's this? This is one of five live cartridges that were recovered by investigators from this scene. Uh, you can see, probably see, that the powder looks very different. It's smaller, it's darker, it doesn't have that little donut shape. Um, the bullet it's, it's style is also blue. very different. Uh, setting the blue lubricant aside, this is a round nose bullet with a truncated nose. So it would have been completely round had the bullet mold not had this flat area uh, to produce this, this flat appearance. And this is pretty much like a traditional bullet from the late 1800s, early 1900s. And again, a cartridge case, 45 Colt cartridge case is on the left. So if we have a live primer in that cartridge and put it all back together, it's a live cartridge, not a dummy. So Mr. Haig, if I went to a gun store and I bought a box of ammunition, would, let's say I'm buying 45 Colt caliber ammunition, would that box 
perhaps include what we're seeing in 133 and also what we're seeing in 132? From professionally made purchased ammunition, you're not going to see an M&M situation or mixed, mixed bullets. They're all going to be the same weight, style, same kind of propellant, same head stamps, and of course the same kind of primer. They can come either it nickel plated or plain uh, brass. It was not cleaned. And the live ammunition that was taken from the set of the movie Rust. Um, can so this is like one of these questions that is dumb, except you still have to ask it because you have to get the answer into evidence. Um, if you buy a box of ammunition, you don't get a mixed collection. There's no like random sampler uh, ammunition boxes. So actually that's not true. There are situations where you can buy sampler ammunition boxes, but they're a different thing. Um, so basically they're again pointing out this cartridge does not match the cartridges that they found at Seth Kenny's. And so defense is really going to be arguing they're going to be trying to throw Seth Kenny under the bus and they're just, you know, over and over and over again, they're saying, sorry, nope, that is not, um, not that. <laughs> Pause game is on point with the angelic pose Hannah's making. Um, you can practically like see the halo coming down here. So. Can you describe the characteristics of that live ammunition in terms of the head stamp, uh, the primer, uh, those just sort of exterior identifying. Yes, if we could go back to the other sure. e exhibit with the blue bullet, there's one of them. Uh, you can't see the primer, of course, because the cartridge is turned sideways, but it's a nickel plated primer. It looks like chrome, you know, shiny nickel plated. Uh, if it were back loaded, you would only see the top, basically half of the bullet. <laughs> the part with the blue lubricant would be inside the cartridge case and the powder, the gunpowder in the little vial. I'll tell it slow. Be inside that cartridge. So putting it all back together, you'd have a complete round of ammunition. The head stamp, you've probably heard that term plenty of times, so I don't need to define it, for these cartridges was Starline. It's a very well-known manufacturer of cartridge Starline brass. Starline is they super well-known. manufacture well loaded ammunition, at least not as I sit here today. So Starline's well-known. I use it myself. I'm a hand loader. Uh, that's what you would see if we turned that cartridge up so you could see it. And what color was the primer on the live ammunition? I think I said it, but I'll repeat it. Nickel-plated, shiny. I apologize. Thank you. Um, and let me ask you, do you know, can cartridges and ammunition that look exactly like this be purchased at local gun stores? In the gun stores I, I go to, yes. And uh, at my request, did you obtain some and send me some pictures? Both my son and I bought boxes of commercial 45 Colt ammunition with lead round nose bullets with a flat. Uh, meplet is the fancy word, M-E-P-L-A-T, it's the flat spot on the nose. The powders weren't necessarily identical to what we see here, but they're a type of pistol powder. Um, States Exhibit 141, what's this? So, um, this is the dream, because the government gave him money to go buy ammunition. That's the... <laughs> this is one of the few people who has had the government give him guns. Usually the government takes guns away. This is a guy who the government has given a, like, bought a gun for, so, or bought ammunition for at least. Um, all right, so now we're going to go to here. Thank you so much. And 147A. Okay. All right, any objection? All right, so 147, 147A is admitted. You may publish. Let me turn that volume down. Yep, military. I'll play States Exhibit 147. This is New Mexico versus Hannah yeah, I Gutierrez. I took it down too far. So we got this video of gun operation. With the following exceptions. Is there an issue with audio? what uh, we've done uh, to put it back in operating condition. All the parts on the revolver are original with the following exceptions. This is a new trigger and sear, same piece. It's the original hammer. It does also have a replacement bolt or cylinder catch. Otherwise, as mentioned, every pin 
screw spring, whether that's the main hammer spring or the flat spring that operates the trigger, are original to the revolver. So we, what we did is, j just, just as a recap, this, this is the Baldwin gun, is that right? That's correct. And the hammer, or I'm sorry, the, the trigger is, is, a, is a new unbroken trigger, is that correct? That's also correct. And the bolt uh, that we saw in the photos that had kind of lost an ear, is that replaced? Yes. But the hammer that's in this gun is the original hammer from this gun, is that correct? But damaged, yes. And that was the whole point. Does the, the damage, how does it affect the operation of the gun if we isolate the hammer? Um, so this is the hammer that you believe was damaged at the FBI? Yes. The full composition. I just want to ask some, uh, or just a address one thing. Somebody was asking me, do we think this guy is going to be the expert at the Baldwin trial? And I can say the chance of that is 100%. Um, unless he dies. Because um, he's 83. So there is a possibility. I mean, but there's a possibility that I could die between now and the Baldwin trial, right? You never know. Um, but this guy is, so long as he's able to do it, he will 100% be the expert at the Baldwin trial because why would you get a second expert to look at this gun, right? He's already, you know, so th this is going to be the guy. Now, if I'm Baldwin right now, I'm watching this trial and I'm going, oh, 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 I don't like this expert because this expert is, this expert is bad for Baldwin. This expert is, you know, he's charismatic. He's good at explaining things. He is able to explain that, you know, he's able to explain that this gun didn't fire the way Baldwin says it fired. Yep. So, um, see you in July, Mr. Baldwin. Hammer falls and is captured at the half cock position. Again. So what did you, what, what did you ask your son to do? He's the one holding the gun. I asked him to go through the normal cycle. If you produce this firearm and cocked it and expected the hammer to stay cocked until you pull the trigger, it will not. Because that full cocked step or notch has been rounded off, the perfectly brand new trigger cannot retain the full cocked position. The hammer falls to what you just saw and it falls to that I'm such half a child. notch. So the good hand trigger and its sear drop into that notch, preventing the gun from firing. So that's a that's intentional. That's what Mr. Colt intended if somehow the gun got worn and the hammer started to drop when you cocked it, it's going to get captured. And if it gets past that point, it'll be captured by the quarter cock notch. Okay, demonstrate the positions of the hammer, normal positions. From full down when the firing pin is protruding from the breech. Uh, now, this is, uh, somebody said, Let's be honest, Alec Baldwin is looking at this trial, watching this expert witness, and he's getting on the phone to his attorney wanting to know why the hell they didn't take a plea deal. Baldwin is not going to plead out. I can Baldwin, if he pleads out, uh, he is not going to be allowed on a film set again, right? I don't think Baldwin is going to plead out. Uh, Baldwin also has a legendary ego. Baldwin does not think he did anything wrong. He won't think he did anything wrong. Even if he's sitting in a jail cell, if they sentence Baldwin to 18 months, he's going to be sitting in a jail cell the whole time telling everyone around him that he got a raw deal and yeah, so it's not happening. Can you see the firing pin protruding from the breach in this video? Yes. When I first described how this gun works for you, the hammer is fully down. So it's either just fired a cartridge or this would not be a good way to carry this gun with live ammunition because that firing pin is resting right against a live primer. I mean, the, state, in this the state would offer him a it deal, take I'm sure. much of a blow. You don't have to hit it hard. Just drop it from a few inches in this configuration, and it'll fire. Oh, Baldwin cares. He cares about whether he's going to jail or not. The to drop because of the shape of the notch in the hammer. From the half cocker load condition also, pulling the trigger does not drop the hammer. And the cylinder is now out of alignment with the axis of the bore. And then the... 
Tell us what you mean there, and why is that important uh, in gun handling? You indicated that the cylinder yes. is now out of alignment with the axis of the bore. Well, the two things you just saw was starting to bring the hammer back all the way. It went through the safety notch, cylinder still locked up. But when you get to this position, the cylinder now rotates a few degrees, more than a few, about 10 or so. If somehow you were able to fire this gun from that position that you're looking at in the screen right now, there's going to be a real disaster because the bullet can't go down the barrel. Maybe half. The real disaster is going to be you're going to lose fingers, right? This is the gun explodes in your hand and you are lucky if you walk away with all your fingers. So, yeah. So it might, but the other half is going to be jammed up against that area. That's really hard to do. Uh, and you're probably going to blow the cylinder apart. You may get injured. So there again, what Mike and I were demonstrating is if you, it's called a slip off. It, if you're trying to cock the gun and you lose your grasp on it, hammer falls, that safety notch captures it. And now if we get this far, it still is going to be captured, but somehow if it got past that, the safety notch, you're going to have a, a damage at the minimum or a destroyed gun and probably an injury to yourself. And in this position where the cylinder is, is no longer aligned with the axis of the bore, uh, does the firing pin hit the primer every time? No, it, it can hit it just at one side, and primers are designed to detonate, and it's the proper term, with basically a central hit in the primer. If you get off to one side, you'll often have a misfire, a failure to fire. And if it gets any further than that, it hits out in the head stamp area, doesn't hit the primer at all. The more that cylinder rotates out of phase. Which normally would be constant when release drops. And with lateral pressure, both directions, this one slipping the thumb off to the right side of the hammer, this one slipping the thumb off to the left side of the hammer, all catch on the half cock as long as the trigger. Why the example of the hammer slipping? This is to eliminate the possibility that Baldwin accidentally, you know, accidentally fired the gun by slipping his finger off it. The only reason they're asking these questions right now, I think, is to let Baldwin know how effed he is. Um, because this is irrelevant to Hannah. This part is not about Hannah. This is about Baldwin. Why would we do that example? Yeah. It, can, it can be a misadventure with this kind of firearm. One of them I described. You're trying to cock it and you lose control of it. If you haven't pulled the trigger, what you just saw will happen. Nothing. It'll capture the hammer. The... Uh, Similarly, you can cock a gun and then decide, as I demonstrated, I want to let the hammer down. I don't, you don't want it cocked. You're going to have to pull the trigger. You're going to have to coast that hammer down with a good thumb on this area called the spur. And when it gets past the safety notch, the proper thing is to let go of the trigger and the safety notch will capture it once again. All right, this is August 24, 2023. Right. Mike Haig and Luke Haig at the Santa Fe Sheriff's laboratory no. let's look at states exhibit 140 so this is like this is basically them pointing the gun at like pointing a metaphorical gun at baldwin um and that is wonderful so let's jump ahead a little bit they break for lunch um there's some discussion of the uh you know the cartridges here we're gonna for sure, but there's been quite a few hours. As I said, five days just looking at all this evidence alone. Then another one I came over here in July to look at the clothing, and then in August for the videos you saw. So there's. Five, and remember six, to hit the like button, so folks. Days. And what's your hourly rate? 350 per hour. Okay. Okay, and I, I thank you for your time. You're welcome. Um, I missed the thing I was looking at, but uh, it's not all that worried. He, he's asked to describe these cartridges and whether he would describe them as like poorly made. And he says, I wouldn't say that they're shoddily made. I wouldn't say that they're badly made. They're just like, they're just, you know, something that um, an amateur made. He says, I've seen a lot worse cartridges. Um, $350 per hour, by the way, is cheap as experts go. Um, a lot of experts charge 500 and up. So this guy is inexpensive. This guy's a bargain. Um, I can tell you I charge more than 350 an hour. Just is what it is. Um, so, um, 
And people say, oh, does what about accommodations and so forth? His accommodations, uh, they'll like he'll send them his hotel bill, all of that, right? So um, this guy is is solid. And then we get, um, oh, it's on redirect. I think that uh, that we get the redirect. questions about the uh, ammo. Mr. Haig, did you look at all of the? disassembled live rounds from the set of rust yep. yes thousand an hour Do any is of not the primers uncommon. on those live rounds have those tick marks no and just to be clear when we were looking at photos earlier the the photo of the ammunition i don't make 500 an hour PDQ streaming props you described um, that but that's what i charge for semi wad cutter yeah, i charge yes. more than that okay. for legal work um and can you definitively say that the live rounds from the set of rust were kind of homemade sort of reloads as opposed to yeah. the HSM brand that we looked at on the on the photos that you you and your son purchased? Yeah, I wouldn't demean that ammo to ammunition to that degree. There's just a it's subtle, but if you shoot all the time and load ammunition, I recognize them as in all likelihood hand loads. I wouldn't describe them as shoddy or poorly made or uh, sometimes I'll see dents in cartridge cases and the bullets been improperly seated so nothing wrong with them they look like perfectly suitable handles i've seen prettier i'm sure seen a lot worse are you I, I just want to be clear are you testifying to the jury that you don't believe uh that those rounds that were found on the set would have come from a small manufacturer like hsm i can't rule it out but the the ammunition i've purchased in 45 colt from various manufacturers and those that my younger son mike has purchased have a higher quality the bullets are slicker, shinier. Okay. Um. Okay, so that's this guy. We're going to move on from him. And we're going to get to... Um, where, where's her walk-in? Here we go. Do you swear firm under penalty of law that the testimony you'll give in this case will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, sir. All right, thank you. Have a seat. Detective Hancock, go ahead and state your name for the record. Uh, Alexandra Hancock. How are you currently employed? I am currently a corporal with the Seneca County Sheriff's Office. <sighs> so, oh, I wish I was active as her glasses. I will tell you that um, I think the prosecutor could double the, her steps in a day if she attaches her Fitbit to her glasses rather than to her um, rather than to her arm. Um, so, um, this witness, she has amazing hair. That is, that is some epic hair. Um, so yeah, what is her job? Her job is she investigated a bunch of people. Um, and so she did a bunch of these interviews. Why did they have her doing all of the interviews and... Uh, James, you were one of the people I was mentioning in, uh, in the court TV chat. And I hope you don't mind me sort of calling you out there, but, um, you know, I saw you being like, well, I don't see it. You know, it's not her fault until she gets up and starts yammering. And that's what ends or, like, that's what the worst thing is. And so, yeah. Um, so yeah, we've got this person and, you know, She's just doing her thing. So she just basically says, hey, I'm I'm the person who did all these interviews. Why do they bring her in? So that they can play the tapes. And the tapes are damning as hell because the tapes are Hannah. And the worst witness against Hannah is Hannah Gutierrez. That's the one who just absolutely wrecks Hannah today. So... Uh, there's a whole bunch of things about how she, you know, does all these recordings. I don't think we care about that, or at least I don't. Um, and then we're going to roll whoop, a little further back. The time, Christopher Zook. That's the same gentleman that testified earlier in this trial? Yes. And, and what are you being asked to do? Um, I was advised that Hannah needed to use the restroom and um, that she wanted somebody to accompany her. After her? Yes. Yeah. Hi there. You said you needed to use our stream? Yeah. Okay, I can go with you. 
I don't know. I think it got taken. She's not. She'll just come right back here. Yeah, I'm just taking her to use the restroom, and that's it. Let me just close this. Do you think the prosecution really likes playing the video that shows Hannah um, in her very different style? Because Hannah is dressed very conservatively today and on previous days, right? She's got her hair in sort of a very, um, you know, a very boring color, whereas here it's like purple and yellow. Um, I kind of feel that that was, you know, that that was intended, right? That that was... Um, that they're showing us this Hannah just to have a different, um, just so that the jury can be like, hmm, you prettied yourself up just for this court appearance, right? Um, it's, I mean, defense dressed her that way in a reason. Prosecution's showing her this way for a reason. Okay, where are they? Do I have to do this here? Never talk to the police even with your lawyer. Well, yeah, so we're going to take you... Do you want to wait to go to the office, or... Is it going to be a while? Um, I'm not sure how much longer. I'd say not too much longer, but I can't okay, tell you what time. Okay. And, Corporal, I couldn't hear what Ms. Gutierrez uh, said to you at, at the beginning that prompted this discussion about going back to the office. Do you recall? Yeah, it's the uh, STFU no, Century. Okay, no <laughs> Welcome to the worst day of my life. <laughs> uh, hey, things happen. Yeah. Welcome to the worst day of my life. Ha, ha, ha. Wrong time to laugh. Um, now, she doesn't know at this stage. She's been told that uh, Helena Hutchins is critical but stable. Just keep in mind, anytime somebody's been shot, they could go from they're looking great, they're going to recover, to I'm to just suddenly dead. And it could be a nervous laugh, right? But still, that laugh isn't going to play well with the jury. Where's your restrooms here? Right over here. Okay. I can't believe Alec Baldwin was holding the gun. That's so fucked. I can't believe Alec Baldwin was holding the gun. That's so fucked. She's worried because Alec Baldwin was involved, but hmm. That's alright. Can the members of the jury hear what Ms. Gutierrez is saying in the video? Okay, just checking. No, he said no. One person said no. I didn't see it. It's good. Okay. Um, could you, Corporal, could you hear what Ms. Gutierrez was saying in the video? Yes. Can, can you, uh, did we just turn it up? Okay. I'll take it back just a, just a short bit and we'll, uh, we'll see if that works. Thank you, George. Okay. What did Ms. Gutierrez say to you? Um, her statement was, I can't believe Alec Baldwin was holding the gun. That's so fucked. And just to be clear, at this point in time... If there is a situation where... Um, if there's a situation where there is a potential fatality and you are connectable to it by even the most ridiculous string of events you need to forget how to talk like you need to go back to age two and forget how to talk because everything you say is going to be recorded and is going to be potentially used against you um where's miss hutchins um, I believe she's still in the, uh, uh, the care flight, the helicopter. And, um, you saw the, the previous videos, uh, the, the video from Mr. Bennett is, do you recall seeing that? Yes. Okay. Um, and, and in that video, uh, did Ms. Gutierrez learn that Ms. Hutchins was critical but stable? Yes. That's all right. Just take a deep breath and we'll work this all out, okay? Note, police officers are entitled to lie to you, and they do. Police officers are allowed to lie to you, and they will lie to you all the time. Now, in Canada, they wouldn't be allowed to lie about, like, whether or not uh, Ms. Hutchins was alive.
because that is a thing that would affect your jeopardy. But they can lie to you about things like, I'm on your side and we're just going to clear this all up and those kinds of things. Those are really common lies. So if the cop tells you that they're your friend, assume that's a lie, right? Assume that that is a lie. Um, you know how many people I've seen who've had like a defensive use of force, right? And the officer says, oh, well, you know, we're on your side on this one. And then the person ends up getting charged and yeah, lots, um, lots of them because it's, it happens all the time. Yeah, that is correct, Ruckel. I brought that up during the trial. The police can and will lie to you to get what they want. There are limits to how much they can lie to you, but those limits are pretty far out. They can, they can lie. You can't lie because if you lie to the cops and they, they can use that against you. So you should just shut shut up rather than lying. I got the hiccups. Been drinking too much pop. Yeah, I'm just going to stand facing opposite, okay? And Corporal, why do you need to uh, escort Ms. Gutierrez to the restroom? Uh, she had actually asked to be escorted by law enforcement, which is why I was with her. Um, we take it as a precaution to accompany people into the restroom. Why the hell would she... Like, I don't buy this. She'd asked to be escorted to the to the restroom by law enforcement? Really? She wanted you to be in the room hearing her pee? Seriously? That's what you're telling us, officer? Um, I'm pretty sure she just asked to go to the bathroom because she was locked in the back of a police car. She just said, I want to go pee. She didn't say, I want an officer listening to me. Um... Like, for the creepy guys in the chat, and I know one of you is a creepy, creepy guy, you cannot call this police station and ask for this officer to listen to you pee. It's not an option. Like, this is, yeah. Um, just to, I guess, ensure um, that they don't harm themselves, that they're not trying to um, hide evidence, such things like that. You guys have a lot of people out here. Yeah. Is there like a closer cop car you guys can put me in? Alright, we're gonna skip over this because we don't need to hear her pee. She's asking if there's a closer cop car. But this is officer sitting in the you know, in the bathroom while they pee. Yeah, so it's these cars. Mine's actually this the silver car car over here. Fanny packets right in front of that cop car on that thing, if you could bring it. Okay. Possibly. What's in it? Just my key. Okay. Um, yeah, let me just figure out. Let me sit here. Yeah, my inhaler is in it. Okay, do you need that? My inhaler might be in the cop car. What? Let me... Sorry, we have so much gear. Oh, yeah, we could talk about Mr. Big Stings. Not sure. Do you want a Gatorade? It's not open. It's been all right. Okay. So I'll leave that there if you want it. Okay. Oh, you, well, you can control the window. Go. I have to hang out with you here, though. Okay, since my vehicle is. So um, she doesn't want to be up in the cop car. Until they figure out transportation, we just let them know that I have her in here. She doesn't want to be. Look, this is on her? Yeah. Okay. So you just going to hang out with her? Yeah. For now? Until okay. they figure out what they want to do. Is this? Yes. Okay. So she wants to be transported over there? Yeah, she wants to. Car. Right. She, okay. she, exactly. And she just doesn't want to be. Stuck to you well, she doesn't want everybody to see her right now. So she just, I have her back here. Now, supposedly she's not detained and not in custody. Like, bull crap, right? Um, so. Hi, I'm the creepy guy. Thanks for the shout out. Good mask, though. Um, solid mask. So, yeah. Okay. Are you from New Mexico? No. Not a state. Arizona. From 
from Arizona? What part? I actually don't think I know where that is. By the way, all of those questions about like, where are you from? What do you do for work? Those kinds of things. Those are also questions you shouldn't answer. There, there is a purpose. This is called rapport building. Uh, the purpose of that is to get you comfortable with the officer and also into a place where you're answering questions, where you're in a dialogue. Because once you start, it is difficult for you to stop answering questions. So they get you to start talking because that'll make sure you keep talking. So if, you know, if you're in custody and they're asking, hey, um, you know, like, what do you do for work? What do you, anything? Um, you don't want to answer those questions. Uh, there is no good answer to that. Uh, am I under arrest? Do I need an attorney? Am I free to go? Yep. And I mean, if the officer's not letting you go, yeah. Look up uh, Pam Hupp case where she tried unaliving herself in the police station. She has to be watched due to fear of this. Yeah. But if she's not in custody, she should just be able to leave, right? Um, hey, whether you're under arrest or not, she was in custody in interview room. In this situation, you keep your mouth shut. Yep. There's a cop standing right there with a, a body cam. Mouth should not be moving. If your mouth is moving near a police officer, you should assume that you are physically moving towards a jail cell. Let me know how the temperature is, okay? Do whatever you need. Gutierrez's request, did you take her to the restroom? Yes. And at her request, did you uh, permit her to sit in your patrol unit? Yes. Did you turn your patrol unit on so that she could be in a comfortable temperature? Yes. Why are they going through this? Is She was being so nice to her for no reason. And because she's being so nice, she wasn't under any coercion. And all of her statements are super admissible and super, um, you know, there's no coercion, like nothing like that. So um, I'm going to skip ahead to Hannah's next big, uh, big date. She was a detective that I was interviewing with on Monday. And does she still work at Santa Fe County Sheriff's Office? Yes, yeah, she's a corporal as well right now. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So guys, we are going to hate this interview because there, you can see all the acoustic foam in this room, right? Uh, these rooms are wired up for sound. Now, the sound in here is actually, for some reason, not great. A lot of these have fantastic sound, but the sound in here is not great. But especially, one of the mics in this room is mounted to that table for some reason. There's a wireless mic mounted for this table. Um, and Hannah is going to be playing with, you know, with objects on the table and every time she does that we're going to hate our life um yeah headphone users uh lower your volume now i'm on a headphone so yeah yeah. do you know if anyone ever got that fanny pack um so right now it's uh, typically inside the scene so we can i didn't want to be spoilers but yeah okay cool but you said it's, it's black and gray no, it's just the gray one. Just gray, okay. And it was on the card? Yeah. Yeah, so it'll be, I'll be secure and, um, I don't know, it's not hard, it will come back to you as soon as we can. So I can say, this is the, the right that I just need to go over and I'll read them to you as I do if you understand them. You can, uh, signature or check out here. Um, and then read the rest here and if you agree, okay? So you have the right to remain silent and you can say maybe it's against you in a court of law or other proceedings. You have the right to... If you're wondering what's wrong with the audio, it is because this microphone is period appropriate to the setting of Rust. This is the same microphone that Harlan Rust might have used to record a conversation because it was clearly designed in, like, the cowboy era. Okay. 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 Okay
asking any questions. And you may have him or her present with you during questioning. You may have an attorney appointed to you to represent you if you cannot afford one, otherwise obtain, obtain one. Okay. You understand those? And if you wish to... Uh, I'm kind of like an attorney. You kind of like... What do you want to do? I mean, just because the situation... Let's go back a little here. What do you... You kind of like... She says, I would kind of like an attorney. Now, I'm going to tell you, in Canada, this statement stops everything. In Canada, this um, this becomes a big deal. So, now, we're going to watch what the officers do in that. You kind of like... What do you want to do? What, I mean, just because the situation and everything and their attorney already talked to me and I just think I should probably have an attorney represent me. Okay. Notes. To the situation and everything and their attorney already talked to me and I just think I should probably have an attorney represent me. Guys, if you're in this room, you are on record the whole time. Um, Keep your finger out of your nose. Just somebody on the jury is like, I hate her now because of this, right? Just don't go mining for nose goblins during this moment. Okay, before you make any statements or talk to us. Do you know what attorney she's referring to? Uh, there was an attorney that was at the ranch, but I don't know her name. Okay. Well, I can I can probably answer a few questions. I mean, so at any if you're getting the Miranda warning or the equivalent warning in Canada, it is time to stop answering questions with anything other than lawyer. I want my lawyer. Um, like that is what you should be doing. Time, so I'm gonna again. Okay. You don't have to talk to us. And if you want to talk to your attorney, that's fine. If you want to answer some questions, um, you still have, you still could change your mind during this question, right. questioning. Yes, so she picked you, her If you want to talk to us in that point, repeatedly. you feel like maybe you want your attorney, you can't. But mm -hmm. you need to make the decision on what you want to do right now. If you want to talk to us, how long would it take when to get here, I guess? It's going to be you calling them and finding out. Really? Okay. Uh, I don't know, they're a fucking attorney, I don't know, it's just like such a big company, you know. Are you talking about with the projection company? Yeah, I don't want this, like, I don't want anything in this case to be fucked up for me as much as I possibly can. So, you no, know, you're fine. I don't want anything in this case to be fucked up for me. Stop talking. Yeah, and I can probably answer a few questions as consent. Um... Stop talking. I want my lawyer. I am not answering any questions without a lawyer present. I, once the lawyer is present, I'm not answering any questions. And my lawyer is going to help me not answer questions. And it's, that's why we go over these. Yeah. So you know you're right. Okay. It's up to you. Um, is there an attorney I can call? It would be a public defender. They might not. And they, they might advise another day. Uh, it's gonna, it could go a longer process. I don't know. This would be sketchy uh, in Canada. It Oh, it's going to take a long time to get a public defender. It might be another day. Um, you can't really talk... In Canada, you can't really talk someone out of getting a lawyer once they say they want a lawyer. Um, but this statement is in, so this, this was fine. I can answer some basic questions. If I you, can answer some basic some questions. questions. To do that, and then if you at some point feel like it's right on, yeah. 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 And like By the way, cops love when you say, I can answer a few questions and later I'll get my lawyer because nobody ever gets their lawyer right. You know, nobody ever gets their lawyer after they start answering questions. Right now, 
now we are just interviewing you because you are you were there. Oh, there. it's you were this there. You and the next are interview. Are in charge of yeah you know, the armor. Okay. So you're okay with talking with us? Yep. Okay. So. I just ask a basic question, okay? So you've already mentioned that you've been... By the way, if they give you pen and paper in that interview, that pen and paper is not yours. Anything you write down on that, they will keep. So if you write down notes, they, they can keep those and they can use them against you. They give you water, if you... Like, they can use that to collect DNA. There's all sorts... Like, everything in this room is designed to get evidence against you. On um, set for five months now? On um, this particular set? No, on this particular set, I believe I'm actually late. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry, you want to get in time? Oh, yeah, please. It's going to be, um, 21. 21. 21. Yeah, I'm so sorry. Um, how do you spell your first name? Hannah, H-A-L-L-A-H. In your last name? Lugetta, G-U-T-I-E-R-R-E-V. What's your date of birth? April 28th, 1997. April 28th, 97? Yeah. And how old are you? 24. Yep. Yeah, 24 is a full-grown adult. Okay. So this said uh, you've been here for two weeks. Yeah. Um, and this is your primary job is handling the armor? Yeah. Can you uh, go into detail about what you do? Um, I'm supposed to check the guns, and I load the guns, and uh, I hand the guns off to the actor. Okay. I check the guns, and I load the guns. The subtitles were not correct, and I hand them off to the actor. Uh, how long have you been doing this? Because you mentioned you've been on multiple sets uh, since about March, but I've been handling guns my whole life, pretty much. So you're very familiar with guns, mm -hmm. and this is your primary function. You go to different sets and you primarily handle these guns. Yeah. Okay. So, can you tell us what happened today when you started work, when you got there to work? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I uh, went to work. We got the guns out. Uh, I mm -hmm. said we. Me, uh, my coworker Sarah, she helped me with the guns a little bit too. Um, yeah. And uh, we got the guns out, we went to set, we had the guns on set. Uh, I dummied the guns up with the dummy rounds, and yeah, we were on set all day, no, nothing happened, and then we came back from lunch, and uh, that happened. So you got on set with the gun, with the dummy rounds, about what, oh, about what time? Like 7.30, probably. Around 7.30 this morning? Yeah, I didn't dummy the gun up until about a little before lunch, like an hour before lunch. Corporal, could you understand what Ms. Gutierrez said about something about the gun? Did she say dummy the gun up? Yeah, she had um, said that she dummied the gun up right before lunch. Okay. Now, I'm just going to say, as a defense lawyer, there is a thing we hate, which is when your client is given an interview. Um, it makes things so much worse. But this guy has no freaking excuse, as we'll see. And we take all the guns and we lock them up for lunch. So yeah, that's what I was going to ask you. You and Sarah, uh, she doesn't know Helena's died yet. Sarah's last name. I don't think. Uh, I don't think she really worked with that gun that day, by the way. Um, but Sarah Zachary Z A C H R Y. So just to be clear, did Ms. Gutierrez just tell you that Ms. Zachary didn't really work with the Baldwin gun that day? That's correct. But she was there today. With now, I love what the prosecutor is doing. The prosecutor is just pausing every once in a while to say, Hey, um, just can you repeat the last thing that was said? And she does this strategically. It's not because she thinks that it was a particularly hard moment for anybody to hear. She does it because she wants to emphasize this. Sarah Zachary didn't touch Baldwin's gun that day, you're saying. Oh, cool. That's really horrible for Hannah's case. That would have been a really big thing for Hannah to be able to point to. Oh, let's just eliminate that jury. Are you sure you heard that? Let me just wave some freaking semaphore flags and land a plane right on this. You helping you today, Corey? Yeah. Okay. So you and Sarah 
Who has access to that? So when you got there this morning, where are the guns kept? The guns are kept on the prop truck. On the prop truck? Yeah, and the dummies and everything is kept on the prop truck. Are the dummy rounds separate, contained, than the gun? All yeah. in the truck? Yeah, yeah, they're in their own box, and the guns are in that safe. Okay. And who has access to the safe? Sarah and I. Just the two of you? Yes. Okay. What about the dummy rounds? Who has access to that? Sarah shouldn't um, have access. The dummy rounds, they were on the, the cart for lunch. Um, yeah, the dummy rounds were on the cart for lunch. All the ammo was on the cart for lunch. Is there, if you think dummy rounds and ammo, are there two separate things? Um, so there's blanks, my bad, not ammo, but there's blanks, you know, uh, the blanks look different. Okay. They shoot the stuff and the dummies normally just have a little BB in them. Okay. What is the purpose for the dummy rounds? Because you were loading those up this morning. So first. the dummy rounds, they're meant to, uh, they're meant to put in like the belts of the cowboys and everything. And uh, like in the revolver, you can see the if it's empty or not. So right. yeah, I have to dummy them up if they're gonna be like looking right at the camera. Oh, okay, so you just for show the dummy rounds are just for show to make just it look just as for full. show. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. But then the other rounds that you like the other round, the scene, yeah, the other rounds. Yeah. They don't shoot a BB. No. No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no. They just shoot like they just open up and a little black powder comes out. No, oh. it's just a little black powder. And yeah. She's talking about the difference here between dummy rounds and uh, and blanks. So, guys, we're going to hear a lot about her behavior as an armorer. And what we're going to learn is that it's very important if you're hiring a film armorer that you shake their head to listen for a rattle beforehand to find out if your film armorer is a dummy because that might prevent you from hiring Hannah Gutierrez, who I'm pretty sure her skull rattles around when you shake it. Um, the only reason it might not rattle is there might not actually be enough there to rattle. But, um, yeah. The statements that this officer is leading Hannah into in the interview is another tactic that's used by officers to elicit the despised response. We, um, yeah, I mean, she's getting her to laugh. She's getting her to, uh, to, to look awful so yeah is there live ammo that's kept on set no never okay no never huh so so why was it there i hardly even go shooting with 45 ammo at all i normally just use 22 okay. so and so you you got the guns this morning you and sarah are the only ones who have is it a combination for the safe it is, yeah. Okay, and you guys are the only ones who have that combination? Mm -hmm. Okay. But the rounds are... They're in the truck, yeah. The truck gets pretty much locked up every night. I mean, okay. not like padlocked, but just on set security. It gets pretty much locked up? Like, not like padlocked, but... uh, um, Like, it's your job to manage those and to make sure they're secure. That is part of doing your job. Okay. Um, what do you guys have lunch there's a lot of people just eat lunch there uh we all leave and we go back to base camp okay and you guys left the dummy rounds and the ammo but it's not real ammo my bad blanks the blanks yeah we'll go with blanks i, I will use blanks yeah <laughs> uh just so i also don't mix up in the confusion yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so <clears throat> i mean if it was me i would be keeping that in a locked con like a locked thing that nobody can mess with because yeah. Um, yeah, notice her attention went immediately to her. I hardly ever shoot 45 ammo, already demonstrating she doesn't want to. Yeah, she says she does shoot it. Um, These interviews make me sad, angry, because she had no business being hired to do this job, hence more blame to go around, especially Baldwin. She agreed to be hired to do this job. She gets full responsibility for what she agreed to do for money, and she was unwilling to do. When you got yep. the dummy round, she's gonna boast about how much of a strong lunch. boss babe she was. What were you guys doing before lunch? Was that just we were just um, with the dummies only? Just yeah, just the dummies. Yeah. We were we were just about to get into the blank stuff, and you know, like part of my job is checking the barrel to make sure nothing's in it because that's how Brandon Lee died. So, you what? know, yes, yeah. When so like that's what I checked for. I definitely checked this morning, and I was planning on checking again right after lunch before we got into all the shits, and I already started checking uh, the other two guns to check in the. And the thing for them, and none of them had any barrel obstructions. 
So, so it's not a barrel yeah. obstruction. It's live you rounds. Do you check the guns? Do you check the lengths and the dummies as well? I do check the dummies. I check all of them, and they all they all showed that they were not hot. I guess you could say. Um, I mean, you obviously didn't, and they're going to hammer her with that. Like, did you really check all of them? Nope. How can you tell the difference on the uh, ammo, on the dummy rounds, or the blanks? Sorry, sorry. How can you tell the difference from the blanks and life real am ammunition? Now, I'm just going to say, I am pretty sure that this officer went through this ahead of time. I am pretty sure that this officer studied these, this distinction ahead of time. She's asking these questions and looking like she's got no freaking clue because she's like she's trying to get information, right? She's trying to get um, she's trying to get Hannah talking. So this is I don't think that this is like the officer not knowing what's going on. This is the officer fishing for information. A little ring. Like there's a little ring in there, it's just rings, it rattles, just a little rattle when it's a blank. Yeah, and then also there's ones that I have with holes in the side to show that there's nothing in them. So what are these ones? They're the rings? Yeah, these ones were the rings. There was one, I think, with a hole. Yeah. So I want to visit with you a little bit about Ms. Gutierrez's statements up to this point. Um, initially, Ms. Gutierrez told you that she shook all the dummy rounds, is that right? Yes. And then, uh, upon further questioning, did Ms. Gutierrez tell you that, uh, in fact, um, one of the rounds actually wouldn't have been a shaker, it, it had a hole in the side? Correct, which wouldn't give any sort of audible noise if she shook it. All right. Um, you put the gun before going to lunch back in the safe. Yeah. But the blanks and dummies were left on the cart. Yeah. Her. Did you, when you got back, were they, did they look moved or tampered with or touched when you got back from lunch? They did not. No, nothing, nothing. Oh, they didn't look tampered with. Okay, you're agreeing that it wasn't tampered, like it wasn't sabotage. Uh, Rob earlier made a good point. The, the fact that it's two female officers in this room is not accidental. They don't want the optics of, like, a big hulking guy with this, you know, younger woman. Um, this is optics, right? They, they definitely want to... Uh, they want to show that this is, you know, she's on her own footing, right? So. Out of the ordinary. Okay. Was the gun still in the safe after lunch? Yeah. Who pulled right. it out? Uh, Sarah pulled it out and she handed it to me. Okay. Yeah. And he watched her? Yeah. Okay. Mine. And you watched her like she didn't load it with anything or anything like that? Okay, cool. We're. We're closing doors. What I'm trying to get with is because they, you can handle the gun. You obviously are going to be loading the gun. So that's mm -hmm. why I'm concerned about the dummy and the blank because those were left out. And if I, oh. is there some way that somebody can alter them to make them still look like your dummy room? Well, so that's the thing is that like bullets, like real bullets, pretty much look the same. It's very dummy. common. The only difference is the rattle. Um, and so, yeah. Uh, that could, that's a choice, but also, um, I don't know, I'm kind of wondering, because I heard back in the day, dummies used to have, like, a primer cap, mm -hmm. so I'm wondering if maybe it was one of those older ones, or something like that. Did you load them after lunch? They were already loaded from before lunch, okay. and so that's the thing, is like, you know, we they were already loaded from before lunch. You know what I do if I've loaded a gun with dummies? I unload it when I'm done, and I check and recheck. Check, 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 recheck, recheck, recheck. This is just, you know, they're going to play this, that clip uh, with an armor. They're going to play it, and the armor is going to say, hmm, that is fucking insane. We're past two hours. That is fucking insane that you just left this low. Oh, my God. He had that gun the whole time before that, and it was nothing happened and I wasn't in there and they weren't supposed to be even pulling my hand back. Kidding. So, okay. Um, all right. Let's talk about Hannah testifying just as a little brief break here. So, um, Hannah may well have to testify both to deal with this shit and also to deal or, and also to try to sell the argument of she was being bullied. She was being pressured because 
how do we get to she was being pressured when she says in these interviews that she is a boss babe and she's super tough and whatever else? Well, she's going to have to testify. The problem is her testimony is going to be like a cow walking into a slaughterhouse and figuring it's going to talk its way through because these interviews are terrible and she's going to get slammed with her comments in these interviews if she testifies. Just over and over and over again, the prosecution on cross is going to be like, roll tape, roll tape, roll tape, and it's just going to be ugly. Uh, the prosecution also gets to ambush her with, you lied to the cops, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah, clarify a little bit. So prior to lunch, the guns, you had them out. Yeah. And where were they when they were out? They were inside with all the camera crew and everything. That, you know, COVID, everything happening right now, they don't really like a lot of people in there. Okay. And so usually I'm like hardly allowed in there unless there's actual firing happening. Okay. Yeah. Did Put your foot down. It is your job. Put your foot down. Kevin says, give me an example where an armor on a movie discovered a live round mixed in with dummies. Has it ever happened before? I don't know. Um, most armors would never make that, would never work in a situation where that could be possible because they control their dummies like they're, like, you know, like it's essential for safety. But the thing is, is that is, that's your entire job is making sure that doesn't happen. Were you inside this morning? Uh, I walked in there and I handed the gun to Alex a couple of times and Alex took it and everyone was there with him. Alex? Alex. Okay. Baldwin, yeah. Baldwin. Okay, so you handed him the gun this morning. Yeah. Um, does he pass it off to anybody? He... Now, it sounded like she said Alex a lot there. Um, yeah. You see that at one point, Dave had it, uh, the assistant director, but he was just sitting in with it and then I saw him and I was like, okay. At the time, he's just sitting in, and then I walked out, and yeah. And how do you know that Dave had it? I handed it off to Dave while he was sitting in for the shot. Okay. Um, yeah. All right, so you guys were the only three handlers prior to lunch? Alec, uh, Dave, me. Dave was after lunch. Okay, Dave was after lunch. Um, yeah, that should have been the only ones. Um, maybe Sarah, possibly, but yeah. Um... Because they, the they, they chill on our little table, and we're pretty much there all the time. Okay. And then, so prior to lunch, did they do any um, scenes or anything of the sort where they were firing the weapon? No. Okay. Nothing just before lunch. Handling. Yeah, we were just supposed to get into it right after that. Like, literally, that was the last shot before we actually got into blanks. Okay. And those blanks were already loaded in before lunch? No, the no. blanks are different than dummies. Yeah. So, that's, yeah, yeah blanks totally different they actually have like ignition and powder and everything dummies no powder just for look just for looks right yeah now. so yeah so i think everything was after lunch then so mm -hmm. after lunch you get back and that's when you loaded a dummy round i mean the blanks no 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 no, no. um if uh, they need an armor and the armor might be their next witness and then done that might be it so yeah no blanks were loaded no, like, oh, today. Yeah, no, no blanks were loaded today. I was like getting ready for it. I had my fanny pack like full of like blanks and everything. But okay, so and my fanny pack full of blanks. No, I loaded hell. it with the with the so I loaded it with five of the dummy rounds before lunch, and there was one that wouldn't go in. And so when we got back from lunch, I took the like little cleaner guy and cleaned it out really. Also, don't make this gesture while you're on video. So I loaded it with five of the dummy rounds before lunch, and there was one that wouldn't go in. And so when we got back from lunch, I took the like little cleaner guy, I cleaned it out really quick, and I put another dummy in there. Okay. So there. Yeah, it's really not a good look to be making this gesture. Um, but yeah, it wouldn't go in, so she cleans it out and then puts another one in there. Five total in the gun. Yeah. Can you um, describe? Six. There was six. So six, six, five, yeah. Let me answer that. Great. Yeah, there were six. Okay. Can you describe the gun? Uh, it's a Colt. It's a long barrel Colt. It's a long barrel? Mm-hmm. And six rounds spin in it? Yeah. What color? A brown. Six bronze? Yeah, they're brown. Yeah, kind of brown, brassy. 
What uh, caliber? I'm Two not 45. in a police station. And that was the only one that was used today? No, the other two were used too. Okay, what yeah. do those look like? Uh, da, 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 da. those are both 45. I think they're either Colt or you birdies, um, 45, and yeah, the two other characters have them. Okay. And they're revolver looking? Yeah, they are revolvers. But the long barrel was the one that was used so during people the people are like clipped? Yes, yeah, the long barrel one, yeah. Okay. Yeah. No the little cleaner guy is not a, uh, those it's not a, okay, so a technical a term. Pretty much, you know, yeah. Okay. And like, uh, you know, they took them out and they had them on camera too. And yeah. Okay. Um, do you know, what time did you go to lunch? Probably about 12.30. Pretty much on the dot. And then, so after that, Sarah pulled them out. Yeah. Did she, did yeah. you see her um, check them or did she just hand them to you and that's when you check her out? She just handed us, we all took them, we took them in the bag to the set so we didn't check them there. They're in little like socks, little socks. Okay. Yeah. What do those look like? Little socks. They look like. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Yeah. They, uh, they honestly look like socks. Yeah. Okay. And so when you checked it, it was on set? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was on set. Um, I didn't really check it too much after lunch, you know, because... I'm going to take it down to normal speed for a moment. Because it was already locked up and everything at lunch. But yeah, I checked it and uh, put in that last round and, and then... Okay. Yeah. I know that you had said something about um, keeping stuff in your fanny pack. Yeah. Can you tell me a little bit more about that? Yeah, it's a little fanny pack. It's super... It has a lot of pockets, so it's really cool to, like, separate, like... You know the the dummies from the blanks, but it's mostly to separate like the blank sizes because there's quarter loads, there's half loads, and then there's full loads. And I usually don't keep any. You know what's even better than like a you know a fanny pack with multiple pockets for that? Um, boxes. Boxes are better for that. Like they make little ammo boxes that you can, and where stuff can't like. My fanny pack is really cool. Fuck. Now, I just want you guys to note her cadence in this because when she testifies or when she gives another interview with her lawyer present, she has a very different cadence. Right now, she's got this really sluggish way of talking. People loads out there unless I need them, um, but uh, I usually keep quarter loads and half loads right here. So if it's close up to an actor, we use a, half, a quarter load, and if it's farther away from an actor, we go ahead and we use halves. Okay, so what's the reasoning for that? Uh, just uh, the halves have more smoke and they look more real. Okay. Yeah. So pretty much for... Like if it was a bigger gun, like a rifle or something. Yeah. So you keep... Or if it's outdoors, you know. But mostly it's the, it's the quarters, just in case they're closer proximity to an actor, you know. Yeah, if they're firing a gun that is like, you know, a foot off, uh, I don't know what's going on. Her demeanor is weird here. And so the question is going to be, is she coming down off something? Is she high on something? What's going on? So, Yeah. Um, let's take it back up because otherwise she is so sluggish. And this is the other thing. It could be an adrenaline dump. It could be, that, but I don't know. It just, it seems weird and it's going to start getting really off putting when she starts playing with shit, when she starts breaking out the toys for show and tell. Or if it's around an animal or a child quarters. Okay. And then you had said um, that they're only supposed to pretty much expel dust or smoke, right? Yes. Okay. By the way, did you hear the thing about if it's going to be around a child? Because there were children on this set. There was an 11-year-old on this set. And, yeah. Um, were you inside when the incident occurred? No. By the way, no matter what it is, if... If this is she's coming off of adrenaline, if this is she's coming off of some drug, 
If this is she's on some drug, whatever it is you do, like whatever it is, this was a perfect reason to not have this interview today. Oh, getting a public defender here will mean that we have to do this another day? Fuck yes, let's do that. Um, let's do that. So, yeah. It'd be interesting to know how much the jurors know about guns and if they can comprehend it all. It's New Mexico. Somebody on that jury is going to know guns, right? Somebody on that jury is going to know guns. So, um, yeah. I was right outside by my, uh, uh what do you call it? My, uh, cart. I'm not saying she's high. I'm saying she could be. Her demeanor here is very different from her demeanor in the other video. The jury is going to wonder about that, and whether it's an adrenaline dump, whether it's something, she should not be giving this interview today if she can avoid it, which she can because she's not under arrest. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Um, so, prosecution doesn't care about the tampering charge. The only reason it's there is so the prosecution can bring in drugs. Shady, but the judge allowed it. Prosecution does care about the tampering charge. I can guarantee you about that. Uh, I'm pretty sure they're going to bring in the witness on the tampering charge because they can... She can get as much time for the tampering as she can for this. So, EDB doesn't think she's on anything. I think she's either coming off of things or... Which means she's not on something, but in fact, off of it. Um, and I say this as a guy who has attention deficit. I take stimulants, you know, or I have taken stimulants. I Coming off of them sucks. Or she's coming off of adrenaline, and that's equally a problem because there's going to be another interview, and the other interview is going to be one where her demeanor is, is very different. Her demeanor is going to be very different, and the jury's going to look at one... And the jury's going to look at the other and they're going to say, why is, why are these so different? What was going on that day? Especially when the, you know, when the prosecution starts dropping noises about cocaine, the jury's going to be thinking it. The jury's going to be wondering it. So, yeah. Okay. How close is it? Oh, about 20, 15, 15, 20 feet from being inside. Okay. What's that building? Uh, the building with the door is facing, I don't know where the door is. the crossing? Mm -hmm. Is that, that where the door is? So uh, where, 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 the, where the door, where they were like coming in and everything? That door, we were like right adjacent to that, to the left. Okay. Could you yeah. get inside at all? No, not really. Um, no, I couldn't see inside. What do you remember about? Basically, I just like, you know, we had a couple of, uh, like we had a popper pop last week. You know, the poppers are for special effects. Like one just went off randomly last week. So I was like, oh. It must be a popper, and like you know, I checked all of them myself. So I heard like the shot, and I was and Sarah was like, "What was that?" And I was like, it "Must have been a popper." And I like turned around, and then I heard them say "medic emergency," and I was like, "What the fuck?" So she thought this was a popper, um, which is just a pyrotechnic, but she was outside the room when this went down. That's a problem for her as well. And then I like checked in, and I like looked, and I saw Alec on the ground, and I was just, like, not Alec, uh, Joel, and I was like, "What the fuck was it? The gun?" And Dave was like, yeah, it was a fucking gun. And so I was like, I walked in and I like tried to see what was happening or like where the gun was, you know, to secure Taking it down the to one time. On set. And I got yelled at. Um, and I ran out and Dave brought me the gun and I opened the gun up and one of the dummies somehow had been discharged. And can you kind of explain a little bit more what you mean by uh, that it was discharged? I, it was a live round. It wasn't a dummy. She immediately suspected her gun. She had the gun brought to her. Did you remember how the defense lawyer was saying, you're going to hear about how Sarah Zachary emptied two guns and threw the contents away? What this gun Hannah messed with. Hannah's the one who gets to handle this gun, and she gets to tell us What's going on here? So, when... If I had a bullet... Oh, wait, I have some dummies. So. By the way, if you're ever in this room, don't... This is not a time for show and tell. 
Like, don't bring out the ammo. And, oh my god, this is so annoying. It's so maddening. Right. Ow. Uh, I wish it had just been one of these. But, um, but these so I wish it had been one of these. She says these are not the bullets that were used. Why does she have ammunition in her fucking pocket? Why does she have anything, any sort of dummies in her fucking pockets? <laughs> Why? Um... Why? Um. Mm -hmm. Like the whole okay. And then this one doesn't have a primer, right? And most of them, like they have like the primers, but the primers aren't like hot. Like I've never had one with a hot primer before. Okay. So that seems pretty weird to me. Um, but so basically, this that seems part, pretty weird to when me. When a bullet shoots, the fire projects it, and this comes out this little piece right here this little nipple oh this little yeah. nipple and that's so a when great I had term checked the gun this part that was gone did you get to see the shell i saw the shell yeah and it's on the it's on the thing did it have one of the did it look like this or was it different it looked it wasn't it didn't have the hole it didn't have that so i mean it had that and it didn't have the hole um and this was gone it was just the shell. Yeah. So it kind of looked just a cartridge. Just the regular, like, cartridge when it went shot. Out. Yeah. So these ones are done or because they have the hole. Yeah. So that one didn't have a hole. So it looked like a realistic yeah. one when you saw it. Mm -hmm. Okay. What I can tell you, if I'm the prosecution, she gets up on the stand, I am absolutely suggesting that she keeps dummies in her pocket to just like feed in because she is a giant shit show of disorganization. Oh, and yeah, she should have been like, I, I don't know. Um, yeah, we use the word nipple for a baby's pacifier, not bullets. What about your, what about your blank? What about breathe? Do they What's the difference between a blank and that? You know? The blank would have a crimp, crimped end and no projectile. Oh, the blank is very different. Um, and you would absolutely... Did you see how when she was asked about a blank, she starts patting down her pockets? She thinks she might have a blank on her. She's patting down her pockets because she thinks she might have a blank in a pocket somewhere. Like, it's... <sighs> She thinks like she's looking like it's hallow like candy after Halloween. Like, oh, I just might have, you know, might have a chocolate bar left over. Be able to tell the difference just by looking at it. Uh, so basically, the end here where this is gone, uh, the projectile is gone in the blanks. Basically, this is squeezed shut. Like you know, it's filled with like a little bit of gunpowder. Like I said, either a quarter, half loaded. Yes, full of but not for the bullet. It never with a refers bit of to black a bullet. Powder, and it's opened by the metal part just going. So okay. just so nothing flies out of those. Okay, so this is pretty much what looked like what was in the gun. This is one hundred percent what was in the gun. Um, it wasn't what was in the gun. Like obviously not. And yeah, somebody should have searched her because if she can have like a pocket full of metal bullets, she could have a small handgun. And you know what? You know, I would feel real stupid if I was one of those detectives and she pulled out a small handgun. Hmm. Except without that. I mean, it's hard to say, right? And with the primer, but the primer normally is on there anyways for a lot of them. Okay. Yeah. So it's not as well. No, it's not. A lot of them are, a lot of them have the primer, so that way you can, like, see them in the belt, and they look real. Okay. But a lot of them also have the primer in a hole, and that one didn't have a hole. All right. So you have said when, who, so how did you end up being the gun after? Um, I went in there, they yelled at me, I ran out, and I was like, can I see the gun? 
and they brought me the gun and I opened it and checked it and it's the very first one that I like because you know once you shoot it the next one in a revolver it'll be that one and the first one I pulled out didn't have that. Okay. Did you get seen the others? Uh, the others all had, yeah I took them all out we were there on the cart so it didn't have that. Listen to okay. this. Did you get seen the others? Uh, the others all had, yeah I took them all out we were there on the cart too. They all had rings and they all had holes. I took them all out and they're on the cart. Remember how you had, um, oh, hey, Emily, uh, good to see you. Remember how you had the defense lawyer? Um, yeah, you know what hasn't fallen out of her pockets yet? Drugs. Um, the defense lawyer was saying that you will hear that Sarah Zachary unloaded two other guns and threw the contents out. Well, you know who unloaded this gun? Hannah. She's just agreed to it. You know how much, how excellent, fan-fucking-tastic for the defense, the unloaded two other guns, like Sarah Zachary unloaded two other guns uh, evidence would be, without this testimony? Amazing. It would be fucking amazing for the defense. This blows it away because that cart ended up having live rounds on it. So, like, yeah, and this is the thing. I was so surprised she unloaded this gun after the defense opening. I had already watched this. I knew this was coming. And so when the defense said that, I was like, you know you're setting a landmine for yourself because I will say, if I'm the prosecution, I am going to hammer the defense going... They told you that two guns were unloaded by Sarah Zachary because they wanted you to think that was suspicious. But the gun that shot Helena Hutchins was unloaded by Hannah Gutierrez. She unloaded that gun onto the prop cart where you found live cartridges. Boom, right? I hadn't watched this. I am shocked. This is like... <laughs> This puts Hannah in a giant hole that she has to dig her way out of. And I would love to see how the defense is going to do it. I also think it is stunning. Stunning. Yeah, and this is the thing. I heavily suspect that those rounds on the table are the one from Alex Gutton. It is... It's entirely possible. I don't know why the police did not... Like, it doesn't seem like the police seized these. And they really ought to have seized these, like seize these guns, or seize these bullets, rather. And Corporal, just to be clear, the live rounds that were found on set, none of them rattled, did they? No, they didn't rattle. And none of them had holes in the side, did they? No. And I love the way the prosecution just like, let's stop to completely blow up the crap she's saying. Like, just, oh yeah, we're just going to take a little pause as I aim the big guns at Hannah and, like, fire a little bit. Um, I'm sorry. Explain again what the ring is. So, imagine if this... Oh. Oh, okay. So just the noise. noise. So that's what I'm saying. So this one is exactly what it looked like was in there. Okay. And that one doesn't have any holes. So that's some, yeah. Um, honestly, that box of dummies might have some wonky ones in it. And we got that, I think, a week ago. Cool. Might have some wonky ones in it. Um, whose job is it to check for wonky ones, which is the term for live ammunition that could kill people? Like, who, whose job is that? What are them? Um, well, we got them from our, like, from a set our like supplier and everything okay you better believe that if she gets up on the stand i am going to hammer her with wonky ones and yeah this is astounding to me how in the hell did these officers let her play with ammunition for the rest of her interview and let her put it back in her pocket and leave with it at the end i can tell you 100 percent. if i was one of those officers um first let's assume she gets searched. But if for some reason she doesn't get searched before she goes into this room, the instant she pulls out this ammunition, I'm like, 
Thank you. That is ours now. That is critical. We're going to call this critical evidence. Um, yeah. Wonky is a technical term. Like, yeah, the wonky donkey. That Seth borrowed them from someone. I don't know who. I believe they put them. the a, runs that you have? I you, believe that she um, takes them yeah. with her. We'll check. Yeah. And how do you know he borrowed them? I don't know. Uh, that's what Sarah said. And then as soon as Sarah called that, I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I don't know if she can talk to him or anything about this. Okay. You mean today? If she called him today or not? Talk to him or I, I don't. Uh, Corporal, Corporal based on your investigation, let me back up. I, I think that we heard uh, Ms. Gutierrez um, testify that that box of dummies might have had some wonky ones in it. Is, is that right? Yes. And did she also testify we'll that that box was provided about a week earlier by Mr. Kenny? Yes. And did you continue to investigate uh, the the box and the source of that box of dummies? Yes. Based on your investigation, uh, was Ms. Gutierrez's assertion that that box came from Mr. Kenny a week earlier? Did, was that assertion correct? No, it wasn't. I know she called him, but I didn't. Hey, that thing she just said, was that a lie? You bet it was a lie. Cool. Um, like, they're rolling this tape with interruptions to be like, hey, she's a liar. And guys, if Emily wants to come on, she can come on, but I'm pretty sure, I suspect Emily is in bed and, you know, doing her thing. So, we're not pressuring anybody. That's not how we roll here. I get to hear the police officer told her to stop talking to me. So I don't really know what happened with that. Um, but yeah, so, okay. Um, are you aware of a time or know if something like that can be dysfunctional or? I mean, you know, like overall, these are some weird, like what we're dealing with are like, you know, explosives. It is, there's always like a chance of like, you know, safety to be compromised and that's the issue. And that's what I'm supposed to watch out for on set. And, yeah. Oh. She just agreed that there's always a chance for safety to be compromised, and that's what she's supposed to watch out for on set. Every time they come up about, like, somebody else could have put these ammu this ammunition on, she just said it is her freaking job to, you know, to, to catch that. She just said that's her job. Mmm. Like, prosecution, hammer her. This is the dropkick moment. Like, this is, yeah. I mean, I she's what did Gutierrez just say? What she's probably watch watching on her it? phone. Enjoy uh, the, the ammunition, uh, pretty much. Ch chat, you're bad. I'm not, ah. I'm going to back it up just a few seconds. Anything about this? Like, okay. Um, today if she called him today or not he talked to him or when? I, I don't i know she called him but i didn't get to hear the police officer told her to stop talking to me okay. so i don't really know what happened with that um but yeah so okay um are you aware of a time or know if something like that can be dysfunctional or i mean you know like overall these are some weird like what we're dealing with are like you know explosives it is there's always like a chance of like you know safety to be compromised and that's the issue and that's what i'm supposed to watch out for on set and yeah is it back um, up i've never really heard of i've heard of blanks before with the primer you know that's the only time i've ever heard of them which is why i'm wondering if it was kind of one of the older ones because that kind of stopped after that whole brand Lee situation but i'm not really sure so if that order is called your round yeah and is there anybody else that's involved in that oh um, i can't really say okay I just get what I get, and I'm told not to visit this. Um, yeah. Do you know who the manufacturer is of this? No. Do you know what the box looks like? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's, uh, the box is on the card. Okay. It says dummy around. Okay. Yeah. What, Corporal, did Ms. Gutierrez just tell you where you could find the box of dummy rounds that she was pulling from? Yeah, yeah she, she said it was on the card. Okay. And, and is that consistent with what you saw in Mr. Benavides' video? Um, in his lapel video, she grabbed them from the cart, however, handed them directly to Lieutenant Benavides. Okay, so somewhat consistent. Yes. Something about that. Somewhat consistent. She's only a little bit of a liar. Um. Just that you that's for them, or? No, that's his, uh, he's um, had armor on for The Walking Dead. Okay. He was on that show for 10 years. So he's also familiar about yeah. getting these. Yeah, that is 
<laughs> like, yeah, he pretty much is teaching me everything other than my father. <laughs> Has anyone ever allowed live ammo on set? No one. Okay. What's your guys' protocol for the ammo? Protocol. Um, like, what do you have in place? You know, are you supposed to check in every day? Um, basically, basically, like, you know, our protocol for the ammo is, like, you know, I have to know load sizes. I have to know, like, who's in the proximity, if it's a child, if it's a horse. Um, and my protocol really is a lot of checking for barrel obstructions, mostly because that's where a lot of mistakes get made is like just a blank behind something and a lot of guns get thrown into like dropped in rocks, you know, and rocks get into the barrel and fly out and shit. So my shit is mostly just checking the barrel and everything and then making sure the dummies are dummies. Yeah, and I've never really had any that didn't sound like dummies. Okay. When you looked at the gun, when he, Dave brought it back to you after the incident, did it look like it was the same gun when you handed it to Dave? Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would I would be able to tell too by the there's like markings on the bottom of it. Okay. Yeah. Do you what those markings are? Mm, they're kind of like kind of like little fingernail marks, but like a little more than this. Okay. Mm. I'm not mad at her for like I'm not upset that she's like looking much more like conviction. I'm just this is so dumb, right? This is so dumb. Yeah, and I'm supposed to check the guns. It's, that's what I'm supposed to watch out for. It's like a confession that she didn't. You bet. You bet. How much time... Okay, so how many guns were pulled out after lunch? Like seven. Seven? Yeah. Okay. Um, because Miller has two, ooh, maybe, okay, wait, Miller has two, uh, the two officers have two, and then Russ has one, and then there's three long guns out, so, okay, sorry, Miller has two, the officers have two, yeah, who else? Uh, Russ has one, that was the one that was discharged, and, um, yeah, that, and then we had three long guns that were on the cart, a yeah. shotgun and a right, two shotguns and a rifle. And you're in charge of watching all of these? Yeah, two, four, one, three, eight, okay. And you said Rust? Yes, yeah. Rust is the character from Dallas Baldwin. Okay. Then you handed it directly to him. Or did you hand it to Dave? Mm, I handed it to Dave after lunch. Or then Dave gave it to him. Yeah. Stop playing with the ammo. Do you know who all was inside the building during the incident? Uh, some new camera people we got. Our camera crew just quit last night. Wow. Yeah, the whole fucking crew, except for like two, one dude that stayed. Um, the whole fucking crew quit. Hmm, maybe that was a sign that everything is a shit show. Yeah, and then the DP, the director. Do you know anybody's name? Helena, the DP, she got shot. The director is Joel. He got her shot. back in the and nose. The DP, the director of photography. Okay. And that was Helena, mm -hmm. H-E-L-E-N-A? I'm um, not really sure how to spell it. That's a good question. Do you know her question? No. And you said Joel, and he's another director? No, yeah, Joel. And you said that he was also shot? Yeah, which is just fucking mind modeling to me. Yeah, because that I'm not shot. How many, so how many rounds are I heard, heard one. It? You just heard one? I heard one. Go. So I must have went through one. Other. Now this is funny because this is a place where the cops actually have it wrong. The cops assume that there must be two shots because there's two shooting victims. She correctly identifies that it's a through and through. Um, by the way, if the cops have it wrong, don't tell them the correct thing. Which is fucking insane. Um, she feels like thing? she's um, figuring it out there. last minute. Um, yeah, Alex, right? Yeah, Alex was inside. Fuck yeah, I'm proud. I hate myself for that. And what about Dave? Yeah, Dave was inside. Um, what's the, do you know Dave's last name? Mm, on the call sheet. Corporal, did Ms. Gutierrez say that she hates herself because Alec Baldwin was in the church? Yes. <laughs> you know why she's emphasizing that? Because why would she hate herself if it wasn't her fault? When she says she hates herself, that's, a, that's her saying it's her fault. Don't talk to the cops. I will tell people that, like, you go through this and the prosecution is going to go through every moment of what you say and is going to pick out the bits that suck for you. Now, in this particular statement, the bits that suck for Hannah is the whole bits. 
the whole all the bit. But in this case, um, there are bits that suck more and bits that suck less. This is like a shit cookie with shit chips in it, like extra concentrated shit chips. And the prosecutor here is picking out the the chips, the yeah. So, uh, hey, Paul. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got the Helena Hutchins. H A L Y N A. H O Y N A. Helena Hutchins. She was another person that was in there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I have Helena, Joel, do you know Joel's last name? Joel Olds. Joel Olds, that's O U Z A. Okay. Alex, Dave, anybody else inside? Um, well, her first her steady cam operator was inside. His name is Reed Russell. R E I D R U S S E L. He's a camera guy. Okay. Um, I mean, it's definitely not just because, it, and I don't care about north or that, but the, where we were parked here at the back of the church, that way around, the car is where you were parked. This, I think, is a great point. Do you think the ammunition is a toy? Do you think it's a toy to play with? Do you play with it when you're not in the police room? Are you taking this seriously? Yeah. Yeah, we were parked over here. So the church across the main entrance to that would have been over here. We were parked okay, over here. Okay, yeah, yeah. Where was your car? Because I don't think there was doors here or on this side of the building. Oh, there's a door here. Okay. And my car was approximately over here by a little black tent. Where? Residing chairs or fucking casks or anyone would show under, really. Okay, and then that door's over here. So can you can, can you see the front, that door from where you were standing? Yeah. And you could see Dave the whole time on his way. On his way. Corporal, did Ms. Gutierrez indicate that the prop cart yeah. uh, during the incident was located over by the black tent? Yes. And was that the you exact same spot it. where I it was it when like Mr. Halls two months took ago. Mr. Benavides over to the cart to look for the gun? Yes. Hey. Could you see well, no, I, I went outside to hand him the gun. Oh, he, he was sitting, he was standing in pretty much. Oh, okay. so you, you didn't just hand it and then he walked off? No, like, yeah. So you I handed it to Dave with the camera people there. Okay. So you were close to the door when he handed it. I was, in, I was inside for a second, and then I went back out because, yeah, I'll tell you to get out. Yeah, okay, pretty much. I'm just curious because of the whole transferring from the one person Literally to the other. Literally anything else. Yeah. Um, Play he, with he anything else. Directly to Alex. Um, here's a picture. A um, little bit. And I just want to see if this is something that would have come out of one of these. Totally. It wouldn't be a, a real, real life. Let me pause there for a moment. Um, what is Detective Talamante, or now rather Corporal Talamante, uh, showing Ms. Gutierrez on her phone? So we had um, received a... Running around your police station with a pocket full of shells. Uh, yeah. A photo from the deputy that was at the hospital with Joel Souza. Um, he had sent us a photograph of the projectile that was removed from his shoulder um, inside a little like plastic canister, essentially, that the hospital staff had put it in. Um, I'm not going to put this up on the monitor because I think everybody can see it. I'm showing you what's already been entered as State's Exhibit 54. Uh, is this a photograph of what, is this what was in that photograph? Yes. Okay. Uh, just the projectile? And yeah, inside of a little <laughs> container. Okay. And, and, and this was just a photograph that a detective at the hospital took of the projectile inside the container and texted. Uh, I don't believe it was a detective that was there. It was just a deputy that, I'm um, sorry, yeah, that was instructed to go to the hospital. Well, with we're getting there. Car. We're getting there. Um, so that, that looks like a blank one, which I'm pretty sure because normally the blank ones, like they have kind of this little line right there, mm -hmm. and I'm pretty sure the regular ones don't. Okay. So that... Detective... That is not correct. That is bullshit, and the prosecutor is just about to point out that that's bullshit. Uh, are you now relatively familiar with blank rounds? Yes. Do blank rounds look at anything like that projectile? No. It looks like that would be in the blanks all the time. <laughs> no, it wouldn't. Blank rounds do not have a lead bullet in them. You fucking chimpleton. Oh my god. <sighs> mm. That was what was pulled out of the shoulder. Oh my god, poor Helena. That's why they were thinking it could be an actual live round at this point. Really? Yeah. Does that look like it would have been a live round to you? Well, honestly, if we had my extractor, we could pull this out and check it, but... Um, I don't know. It's actually so cool. Though. Yeah, I don't know, because look at that line. That's kind of a distinct thing. That's, I think that's mostly for dummies. 
She's pointing to the crimp line. It's not for dummies. It's just be <sighs> dummies use exactly the same projectiles as live rounds. There is no difference like this. There is no distinction. <sighs> Just to be clear, was Ms. Gutierrez offering to use a device to disassemble a round? Yes. Did she do that? Uh, no, we couldn't. I could not find a tool at the, at the sheriff's office that we could use to do that. But did she indicate to you that she had one? Uh, yes. But just not on her? Correct. All right. Uh, well, that, might, that might be a regular live round, though. It looked pretty. That's what they were thinking. It could be a live round. Um, Holy fuck. Mm -hmm. I, I just think you said... And I, and I think it's weather protocol because of the, when all that happens. Let's talk about this. Because the prosecution, if she gets up on the stand, is going to suggest to her that she lied here. And her only defense to I lied is, I am too idiotic to do my job. Because this is like somebody, this is like you go to your mechanic and you say, Hey, um, I think my engine is, you know, is, you know, is malfunctioning and your mechanic says I'm pretty sure this car doesn't have an engine in it and you're like it's it's a car of course it's got an engine in it and they're like nah this is one of those new engineless cars and you're like what the heck is this what the heck is this thing and they're like ah that's the doohickey like <laughs> either she is lying to the cops, which is awful, or she is so moronic that she should not have been on this set or anywhere near this. Um. Hmm. Oh. On set two, was there anything that stuck out of ordinary today to you? No, I mean, just the whole camera group quit. That's all. So they were like super behind and everything. So. When did the camera kind of quit? Uh, yesterday. So is there a reason? I don't know. Did you not ask? Okay. Um, I, mean, I don't think that they would be involved in that. Well, part. yeah. Is there because maybe people were disgruntled? Oh, there was definitely some bickering. But I don't, yeah. I, I highly doubt that they were able to switch any rounds. And especially getting a 45 round is like stupid hard right now. Mm -hmm. And at least, yeah. Hey, yeah, the camera crew couldn't possibly have tampered with this. I don't think the camera crew did it. The camera crew couldn't possibly have done this. Um, cool, because the defense would have, lo like, your defense lawyer would have loved to argue that maybe it was the crew that did it. And here you are saying that they didn't do it. So you're saying the crew didn't do it? Cool. Um, your defense lawyer hates you. Yeah, this is why you don't interview after a traumatic event. I bet she remembers little of what she actually said. You're... 100% right. Oh. Was there any of that towards Joel, or did anybody have any issues with uh, Joel and what was the other one? I don't believe anyone had issues with Joel. Um, uh, Elena. Helena. Yeah. Yeah, nobody had any reason to shoot Joel. Her. She's definitely a strong personality, that's all. But there's nobody that you could think of that might have any anger. I couldn't really say that anyone would be. Oh, like, they're that like, roll angry. the whole like, thing. You know, we're on a film set. Everybody always sits off at each other a little bit. Together for 12 hours a day, five days a week, you know? Yeah. It's hard, not for, it's hard to not be with people a little bit. Well, I mean, it's kind of interesting that the whole camera crew quit yesterday, and then that is pretty something funny. happens like this today. Would somebody want to maybe, uh, or they could even have an issue without, if somebody wants to disrupt the filming of this movie? Mm -hmm. Is that I don't, something that you could think of? I don't know. I can't really say for sure. And I wouldn't want to think that about anybody on that set. Personally. You really don't want to think that about anybody. Never. But unfortunately, the cop is like, could it be a conspiracy? And she's like, no, no conspiracy. The only person at fault is, I don't know. Oh shit, it's in my chair. That's the person I'm pointing the finger at. Damn it, again. Yeah, I can't think of like any one person. I couldn't really think of a situation that would require like, you know, I don't know, almost killing somebody. Mm -hmm. I mean, it happened. I mean, yeah. you keep mentioning it was what the crow when that happened. Yeah, that was scary, oh. man. These things happen with somebody. I know, I can't believe I'm like the last thing like this that happened since the crow. And my own fucking worst nightmare. Well, I think right now there's like a few enough late, unfortunately, you were that they're that way, like, oh, it's the person who, yeah. who is in charge of all these. Totally. And that's why we wanted to talk to you. One yeah. of the main ones because, yeah, you're in charge of it, but that's 
You're the person who's like in charge of all these. Yeah, totally. <laughs> Whoops. Why would you put yourself in that predicament? Yeah, you know, so would it be possible? Yeah, I don't know. I think I think maybe there was just perhaps a bad round in that box. Mm-hmm. Well, a couple of bad rounds, possibly, because yep, there was she mentions one round the that went off. What? There was one, right? How did, because some people get shot. No, so there was only one round that went off, and I must have went through Joel somehow and fucking hit Helena, and I'm, like, flabbergasted by this. Now, she's correct about it being a through and through. She's wrong about the order because she didn't see it. Um, I can't fucking imagine how that happened, but I heard one shot. Okay. Yeah, I heard one shot, and honestly, like, I opened up the gun. I checked the rest of them. Only one of these was gone, and the rest were fine. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I wish we could. That's because Baldwin pulled the trigger once, and after Helena died, he didn't feel the need to pull the trigger again. Like... Yeah. Good. This one has a difference. They will. They're gonna try. This one, that, yeah. Yeah. I mean, like they all. I mean, like you know, they all kind of vary a little bit. That's just the thing about them. They all vary a little bit. Um. Yeah. Tell me about what happened yesterday. Did Stop banging them on the table, my ear balls. I have no idea. I think at the end of the night they all quit. Um. Uh. The camera crew always figured a lot, to be honest. Like a lot of. I don't know. Just animosity, I guess. Or. Them with the grits, uh, everybody, yeah, the whole, it's almost unpleasant to be inside there, just because it's so, like, toxic. Yeah. So, so, but yeah, I tried to stay out, and then I was definitely on the side watching, and they weren't supposed to be pulling the hammer back or anything. Like, it was just supposed to be in the shot, and so I don't know. But it was... They're going to use that for Baldwin, by the way. Um, for Baldwin, they're going to use it. Um, would I have taken this case? Yes. Um, I don't think I'd have won this case, but... I, you try your best. I don't know what, yeah. I mean, if, if they wanted to pull back, like, that's fine. I, I had no idea about it, you know. But, but even then, it's yeah, going to have Yeah, so that's why I was all like, I was like, okay, like, it's right there, you know. I stand right by whenever there's gunfire. I'm still there whenever the shit's there, but I'm not usually directly inside the room just because they don't find it necessary. Yeah, well, and that's why, like, they're not supposed to pull the hammer back, but it still is a prop gun or prop. It's a real gun. It's a real, real gun. fucking gun. Your prop. Yeah. Is that. Yeah, so, yeah, totally. I love how she steps in to correct her. No, no, it's a real gun. Like, I know. I just, I don't know. I wish I would have checked it more. Yeah. I wish I would have checked it more. That line was quoted from the pros, like in the prosecution's open. It's gonna be in the close as well. I wish I would have checked it more. So you've just agreed that you didn't check it enough. Cool. Game over. Is there anything that you think could have happened? I have no idea. I kind of, I don't know. Uh, like I said, that box was shown there for lunch. Uh, I will say it is hard to get 45 ammo. You know, ammo is super expensive right now, and ever since the election, pretty much all ammo has been like bought up a ton. I'm sure you guys know what the police force. Yeah. So. This is a great question. Uh, if I did take this case, is there anything you've seen defense counsel do that I would not have done differently? I would not have turned over the phone. I would not have done the interview we're going to see next. Um, I would have told her not to fucking do that. Um, I also would not have... um, The more I think about it, the more I think that the interview of uh, Reed um, Heisenberg was really a missed opportunity because that guy, if we remember from last night, that guy hates Baldwin. He hates the production team. He hates Hannah. He hates a lot of people. And the defense lawyer comes in hot. And once you go hot in an in a cross-examination, you can't go back to do a soft cross-examination. And so what I think I would have done, what I would have done with that, with, you know, Heisenberg, is you go in soft and you say, listen, someone's going to clip that. I, I just know. Um, you start out with the, don't you hate Baldwin? And you get that guy talking about how much Baldwin sucks. You get that guy talking about how much the production team sucks. All the people he sue, he's suing, you get him to say how much he hates those people. And he's going to be 100% on board. He's going to be 100% going, I hate Baldwin, I hate them, I hate that. And then you bring him around that to say, and it's not really Hannah's fault. Because she's just another cog in the wheel, right? 
you you just you know and I see the defense attorney destroyed the grip from yesterday's trial. They made that grip look like he was only out for the money in the civil suit. They could have actually got him to... They, I think they could have gotten that grip to say that it was Baldwin's fault and that it was the production team's fault. I think that they didn't need to destroy him. They could have got from that grip that it was Baldwin and the production team's fault and not Hannah's fault. Um, I think that that was a real missed opportunity. So, yeah. I was just thinking, you had mentioned when you were loading, dummy it up, one of the rounds, one of those six rounds didn't fit in, correct? And you had to clean it. Yeah. Did that feel, seem odd to you? Mm, you know, no, that didn't really seem that odd. That bed had been dropped a lot in the dirt previous before that. Um, yeah. So it might have just been a little gunky. And then after I cleaned it out, like it fit right in. Okay. Yeah, but, yeah fit right in like just like a live round into a into a gun does that usually happen does that usually happen um i mean yeah. you know, every now and then every now and then you yeah. can always go hot later you didn't think it that it could have been the round itself that was the reason why it was initially given you know That's i don't think so like these are dummies and everything and they slide out a little easier per se but um yeah i don't i don't think that that would have been a thing sometimes they do just get stuck because like the guns are a little dirty Corporal, did Ms. Gutierrez uh, just indicate that the dummies slide in and out of the cylinder a little easier than live rounds? Yes. And she also indicated that that last round uh, didn't want to go in as easily. Is that correct? Yes. That sixth round that she put in after lunch? That's correct. Good, not everything else. You know why she's highlighting that? Because we heard from somebody else that the dummies go in more easily. Now that, I think, is actually BS because the dummies should be exactly the same diameter. But that's what we heard. So... Um, yeah, the diameter should be the same for both because that's what caliber is, so. Normal with the round, everything was status quo, and I thought today was going to be another, like, super great day. Did you see that little look that she gave her counsel? Did you see this? I'm just going to, she gives her, uh, she gives her co, or, no, that's actually, she's giving defense counsel a look. There's a little look she gives defense counsel. Look at it. Normal with the round, never gone, status quo, and I thought. Did you see the eyebrows? Did you see the eyebrows? She gives, she looks over to defense counsel. She goes, how you feeling about this? How you feeling about this? I want to watch it again. I'm going to put it down to one time speed. Other that, everything else seemed... With looks the over to defense counsel. Status quo, and I thought today was going to be another. Looks over to defense counsel. Is like, how we doing? <laughs> um, that's the, um, uh, that's the. You feeling good about this moment right now? That's the. How you think this is going? Um, I've given that look to prosecutors, and prosecutors have given that look to me, and it's always a bad thing when that look is happening to you. Um, because that's somebody who feels like they're about to win. And you don't give that look unless you think things are going real good. Like, super great day and that we were done shooting after this and it's going to be smooth sailing. <laughs> so this is the round that I showed you, you think it could have been yeah. um, the, the yeah. dummies? Yeah. Honestly, I'm not, I can't remember, I can't remember really if I got, um, if they were from the box or if they were from, a uh, on... On top of the, we have a cart, you know, and we have several dummies just around. Some come out of the box, some are, but they're all out of boxes, really, like, you know. But yeah, um, might have just been one of the ones on the cart. But it should be, yeah. And that's your cart. Nobody else puts anything else on it. Not really. I mean, you know, there's, but it is possible. It is possible. Before the end of prosecution's yeah, case, I hope. Cart. Yeah. So, as you're loading it, do you Corporal, at this point in time, were you aware that there were actually six live rounds on set? No. So at this point in time, all you knew of was the one that resulted in the injuries. Is that correct? That's correct. You do and check every single time? Yeah. Every round? Yeah. And you did it on this time, too? I did it. Rob bribing the chat. But that one round, you weren't sure if it was fresh out of the box or just laying on the cart? Honestly, I don't think, like, if it didn't rattle, I want to put it in. Okay. And so you heard the rattle? Yeah, I checked all, all six of them for a rattle. 
I checked all six of them for a rattle. Is that, you know, is that your final answer? Because, hmm. I hate to belabor the point, but she indicated she checked all six of them for a rattle, but one of them didn't have a BB in it, right? That's correct. Um, one of the rounds that Hannah had loaded in that firearm actually had a hole in the side of it to indicate it was a dummy, so it would not have rattled, which is contrary to her statement of if it wouldn't have rattled, I wouldn't have put it in. And the live rounds wouldn't have rattled, rattled correct? No, they won't. All right. We're almost done with this one. I just really, I think. So, um, Hannah's lying there, right? <laughs> it's, it's like, pause. She's lying, right? Um, if I was the defense, I would have objected. I would have said, if they're going to roll the video, make them roll the video beginning to end. No interruptions. She can go back and ask questions later. I would have made them do that. Um, but yeah. Ooh. I guess sometimes happen in the bush. Does, does the whole crew quit the table for and then something like this happens? I, I don't know. I totally feel like this is just a fucking really fucked up accident. Yeah. Nothing happened. Nothing I wouldn't think that anyone on that film set is that malicious. I mean, I just have to ask you, yeah, no, because totally. it is something. Oh, well, yeah. What about Sarah? How much do you know about her? How long have you worked with her? She's like the nicest little Christian girl ever. Okay. You're not a instructor? You know, are So I'm an instructor? Yeah. For those? Yeah. So I'm going to take... Okay, then. Want to be yeah. here quickly? Okay. Oh, I'll be back in just a minute. And so just to be clear, the one that you had seen, that you had pulled out, was like which one? Um, I believe... Like that one. Okay. With, yeah, yeah, that's when I saw it, it was punctured, so, not, it wasn't when I, when I took it out, yeah, it was punctured, so. Okay, have you come here, okay? Unless you have anything else that you think, you know, or want to add. I'm going to hold on to the... By the way, folks, um, when you are in this room and you think you're alone, I'm just going to note, oh, and they are taking the ammo, okay, awesome, um, they cut out a substantial portion of this video. She was left alone in that interview room and you're on video the whole time. And you know what I've seen people do in that interview room? I've seen people say things like, oh, I'm so fucked. I hope they don't search the whatever. And if you say that in the interview room, they will search the whatever. So, hmm, yep. Okay, just one more question. Okay, so they do keep the ammo, cool. Has someone already opened it too, or you did all the manipulating of it? You did all the manipulating. They just literally just handed it to you, and it was still closed. You see that when the when they handed it to you, had someone else opened it, or did you do all the manipulation? I did all the manipulation. Nobody else messed with that gun. Just me. Just me. Yeah, leaving the, a sus, uh, suspect in interview for a long period of time is another tactic that officers use to get people to incriminate themselves. Because people say things when they're on their own, and people do things when they're on their own. And also, you just start to get stressed. You start to get worried. Um, yeah. Often there's two cameras. So they can see That's the cool. entire room. Would the court like to take the afternoon break? All right, we're going to take our afternoon break. Please don't talk among yourselves or anyone else about the evidence received here in court. Follow the bailiffs. All rise. All right, break time. Break time. And then we're going to come back and we're going to come to the interview that is going to make me shout, um, what's the opposite of Hallelujah. Okay. What the fuck? I guess. I think, Corporal, you can turn yours off as long as you remember to turn it back on when we're talking. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, never make phone calls either. But remember. Tarnation. I'm just going to play it from the beginning. There you go. There you go. Oh, really? Wait. The other one was Sam? Yeah. Oh, geez. Yeah. Um, she was assisting. Um, I'm actually primary on this. And okay. I totally had you guys mixed up. That's right. <laughs> I was kind of like out of it. So, yeah. Oh, I think everybody was a little bit that day. Yeah. Um, okay. So, at this point, let's back this up a little bit. Um, 
So let's talk about our cast of characters here. Um, this is our cast of characters. We've got Hannah, who is cleaned up a lot. Her lawyer has told her, ditch the purple hair, ditch the yellow, ditch all of that. And Mr. Bowles is in the in the room. This is with a lawyer. And I'm going to have some comments about this because also this is substantially later. They know Helena Hutchins has died at this stage. And let's just watch how this begins. Because it um, starts out wrong. Um, I'm actually a primary on this. And okay, I totally had you guys mixed up. That's okay. <laughs> I was kind of He's laughing. He's smiling. Kind of like out of it, so yeah. Oh, I think everybody was a little bit that day. Yeah. Um, so I tell you, I'm walking into this room like it's a freaking funeral. And... Yeah, and the I was out of it last time. That's not a good admission because it's going to be asked about that. Uh, please make myself tinier. Let me edit this. Eh, how do I make myself? And tiny. I'm just going to park myself right there. I'm going to enlarge this, and I'm going to move myself eh, there. Okay. All right. There we go. Updating the layout. There we go. So don't laugh in this. You should be walking into this like this is a funeral and it has just been revealed that you were cheating on the widow with the dead guy. And their sister. Like you should be treating this like this is super, super solemn. Um... Yeah. Don't laugh. Don't giggle. I would be telling my client, this should be super, super chill out. You know, you need to be... Ugh. Formality. Um, she signed this the first night, okay? I'm going to have you do it again tonight. Just that way, we're all in understanding. I know your attorney's here. So this is your statement of rights, okay? Okay. Oh, thank you. Sure. Uh, do I check all of these? Yeah, initial them for me. Okay. I like your necklace. Thank you. It's actually a locket. Ian, you and Rob always say shut up, and uh, all lawyers, why does your lawyer keep on letting her talk? Uh, we had this uh, with EDB. I don't know. This is unfucking imaginable to me. Um, as to why you would... Uh, Zora, you're doing a bad job. You're in the wrong position. This is unimaginable to me as to why you would let your client do this. Unimaginable. Um, and, like, she doesn't seem like she's been prepped as to what she should and shouldn't say. Her lawyer never steps in and says, whoa, 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 time to go. Um, Zara was doing an okay job, but she was not in the right position for, yeah. Uh, so now she's signing that she agrees that she doesn't have to give this interview. And that piece of paper probably says in big letters, it is stupid for you to be in this room. Sarah's lawyer was constantly interrupting. I can tell you, as a lawyer, I would have just been saying, do an answer anything. I mean, if you don't know that it's a dummy, you don't load it. Right. Now, now keep in mind. Can I go over your um, experience again? Okay, so can you tell me your years of experience with armor? Okay. She knows Helena's dead at this point. So pretty much, um, mostly really started taking on this armor job in March with my dad. 
Uh, we did the movie Murder at Immigrant Gulch together uh, on the same team. I was his assistant. And then I did my own uh, did my own job as head armor on the old way after that. Uh, and then after that, um, I did this, you know. And before that, I had gone on a couple of things with my dad, mostly doing production assistant work, but also still kind of watching him and still kind of learning from him on the side. Okay. Okay, so let's talk about this. She did one show with her dad uh, running. So one show experience. Then she went directly to Head Armor on a movie where she almost blew out Nick Cage's ears and she should never have worked again after that. And, like, because, like, Nick, she repeatedly had discharges that were unannounced and unexpected and where Nick Cage is like, what the fuck? I don't have my ear pro in. So yeah, so she did. And then she was, she had some other films where she was production assistant. Um, production assistant is like one of, if not the lowest role on a film set. It is. If somebody's like, we need more coffee, you go get the coffee. If it is like, you know, like it is step and fetch work. And she's like, but I'm also paying attention to my dad. No, you're not. You're being told to get coffee. Like. Oh, yeah. She's prone to playing around, goofing off and being a hot mess of fuckery. Yep. Her tone and body language here are brutal, nonchalant, almost to the point of seeming arrogant. I wouldn't say it's all, almost. Um, yeah. Yeah, I did Magnificent Seven, like, back in 2015, and we were out there for, like, two months, and I was learning a lot from him then, too. Okay, so pretty much assisting him. Yeah, from 2015 like, until... Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. And, so, and also, well, not, like, consistently either, because I was in college for a lot of that time. Okay. Yeah, so for a lot of... Before this, I was in college, so not really able to do the whole film set thing. Okay. Now, it might stun you to find out that she's got a college education. What did you go to college for? Uh, I went to college for communications and film. Okay. Yeah, and I also took a lot of art classes, too. So what I've heard through the grapevine is that daddy is retiring. And so daddy wants the business to be handed off as soon as possible. So, yeah. Um, she's worse with the confidence of having her lawyer next to her, yet her lawyer lets her answer all the questions. Her lawyer's having nap time. It's, it's something else. So how many uh, productions now do you have under your belt? Um, Yuma, uh, what do you call it? About seven. Seven. Seven, yeah. And then also I did a bunch in college, you know. And then how many with you as... Now note armor? that most of that is like... Two. Okay. Yeah. So the, as armor, the two. The rest and the old way, yeah. Okay. Um, how long did you spend on the old way? We did that for a month and a week. That's just like not that much time. Not that much time. Mm -hmm. No. But it was only me doing the guns on it. So it was me, 22 guns, doing all of the loading and everything myself. Okay. Oh. Um, what about any official muffin. training that you've done? Uh, official training? Uh, not really much official training. So I was planning on getting my uh, my uh, concealed carry the permit uh, pretty soon, but haven't gotten there yet. Okay. Um. Not any official training. I was planning on getting my concealed carry permit, but I hadn't gotten there yet. Are you fucking kidding me? Um. Like, <laughs> she has less experience than like. Tons and tons of random people on the street is... Ugh. Any chance she has a cause of action for ineffective assistance of counsel from this? No. Uh, this is not going to do it. And, um... Yeah. Um, what's the explanation for lawyer switcheroos? We don't know, other than it seems like they had a, uh, a fight. So... For what you do as an armorer... Does this job require to use like specific tools when you're doing inspections on weapons? Uh, so I don't really do the inspections on weapons too much. I'm not a gunsmith by any means, you know. Um, I get them from Seth, Seth, like, you know, maintenance them and everything. I was cleaning a couple of them, and a couple of them did have some issues that I couldn't figure out, so I sent them back to Seth, and he sent them back to me, and they were okay. Okay. I wasn't able to do my armor, like, my gunsmithing, so I sent them to Seth, and I just... Like, I don't know. I, I I can maybe clean them. I can maybe clean them. Um, so let's talk about Movie Armaments Group in Toronto, who are actual gunsmiths who, amongst other things, have never killed anybody. 
Uh, Movie Armaments Group does do their own gunsmithing and is able to do things like, you know, installing blank fire adapters and modifying guns to, like, deactivate guns and, like, oh my god. Um, oh my god. Oh my freaking god. Um, I have more experience I am more qualified to be an armor than she is. Like, legitimately. It... Legitimately. And and I should not be an armor. Right? I sh I am not... Uh, I'm gonna get soon a... Um, I'm gonna get soon um, a license here that allows me to armor. Like, I'm getting the armor's license here in Canada, because here we have a license... But I'm only going to be an armor for my own movies. Because it's going to be for YouTube where I'm discussing, like, here's how a gun works. You know, and here's what makes this gun legal versus not. Like, that kind of thing. Um, yeah. So any type of, like, malfunction or anything that you came across would go? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Right? Yeah. Okay. And I sent back one of the guns because the hammer was pulled back and it wouldn't release back down. And I don't know if he said something about... I cleaned it wrong or something. I'm not sure, but I cleaned 17 other fizzles that day. So I don't she know how cleaned it wrong. wrong. Okay. Do you remember which one that was? Uh, you know, that was actually one of Miller's guns and not related to the incident really, but uh, Miller was one of the deputies and it's just one of his. The hammer got stuck back and I've never encountered that before. So okay. I just went ahead and sent it back. Okay. Um, so as far as like the movie productions go, do they require you to have any certifications to work? And it can be like, you know, anything. I'm not really sure entirely um, just because most of the jobs I've gotten have just been like through word of mouth and everything or like, you know, Seth works on getting them for me or my dad gets them for me or my dad got me on as his assistant the first time, you know, so I'm not really sure entirely what they are looking for. I know that they get a firearms license and everything and a license nope. for the area to shoot on and everything, um, but they usually get that. I don't even get that usually, so okay. I'm not really sure. Her certification for getting these jobs has been, I know daddy and I know Seth Kenny. That's her certification is I know some people. Um, mm, mm. yeah, no U.S. standards, though many have Class 3 FFLs to do pyro, have autos, to and to mod have, modify firearms, have modified firearms, not required, but most do it for themselves. Yep. Um, me too, Ian. I used to teach NRA safety and uh, concealed carry classes, about a thousand percent more education, training, and experience as she's had. Yep. Um. So, yeah, it's, um, yeah, having a concealed carry permit does not make you competent as an armor on a movie set. But, like, her saying that she had almost got a concealed carry permit, um, was, was nuts. In terms of what else, I know that Seth always tells me that I'm on his license to work with these weapons, and that's all I really know. And that's kind of the same with Sarah, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. not really sure what that's ever meant. Seth always just says Hannah and Sarah on my license. Okay. But as far as, like, you go... There's no, um, no one really asks about much of that. Like, you don't have to take safety classes in regards to anything with movie sets. So that's the thing. I was actually just getting into the union, and with the union and everything, because on the set they hired me non-union. Um, but normally with the unions, you take a safety course, you take a sexual harassment course, and you take a few different things. And I had, like, literally just gotten the paperwork and everything to get in that. And you need 30 union days on a union show before you can do that. And so I had 22 before this job. And so a lot of the days from this job were going to count towards that. Okay. But, yeah, so I wasn't even able to get that. But for other than that, like, the... the I wasn't even qualified to join the union yet. Because I didn't have 22 days on a show. Um, oh, my God. That is... Um, yeah. Um, <clears throat> yeah. The, most, the whole industry doesn't really require anything. It's mostly just California or Union, and I wasn't Union. Okay. And so Russ wasn't like, you know, the guy obviously has to have a cert to be a cop. Yeah, no, and totally. Like, like, you know, every year I got to take, like, driving courses and shooting courses and everything like that. Yeah, no, totally. Um, yeah, no, Russ didn't really ask me anything about that. They kind of just conferred it all through Cat Okay. Um, so I heard that you were hired to do a couple jobs on this set. Yes. Can you talk about or tell me about both of them? Okay. So, uh, like originally when I got on the set, you know, I have always done armor kind of really separate from props. Like I'm always with props, but I usually, we do it ourselves. Me and my dad and props doesn't really interfere. This is the only job that I've taken 
where I was heavily incorporated into props, and it's because originally they had hired me for armor and key prop assistant. And that's not just like prop assistant, that's the key prop assistant. So that Now, I don't know what her lawyer is writing down here, but um, yeah, and this is... For the non-Americans, being an armorer and thinking of getting your concealed carry permit is like saying you're in charge of the stunt cars and thinking of taking driver's ad. Yeah. Um, I can tell you, as a lawyer, there is one way you would have gotten my client, like, you know, you get my client in this room again, one of two ways. One, against my advice, like, I have said, don't fucking do it, and they go in anyway. Or two, and I'm not there at that point. I'm like, I'm not your lawyer anymore. I told you not to go in there. You're going in there. Get the f out. Like, you're not my client anymore. Or the other way, and I would have entirely blessed her giving this, um, you know, this interview if she had been given immunity. I would have asked, hey, I want, you know, I think my client should, like, if you want my client's statement, full immunity. That's it. That's the uh, that's the way you do it, because otherwise, we're not doing this. And I'm yeah, pretty sure her attorney is spending this interview drawing stick figures. Um, this is like the most privileged notebook full of dong drawings I think there's ever been. Or like that little, like, weird stylized S everyone drew in high school? Means more responsibility. That means I'm Sarah's second. Okay. In a lot of cases. So if there's an issue with props, you go to Sarah. And then if there's an issue where Sarah can't, you know, is there, then it goes to me. And then we have our assistant, Nicole. So I had, <clears throat> my job is the armor. And originally I thought that I was mostly going to be doing my armor job and kind of left alone to do that. But after the first week, uh, I got talked to by some people in production and they were told that I wasn't really pulling my weight in props. So... Basically, I was told that I needed to um, take less on armor chess. and more on props. Who do they expect to take on the armor role? They're later. dogs in a trial being fully cocked. They said, yeah, we <laughs> hear that you're taking your armor job very seriously, but we need you to support props right now because props is also struggling. And I was like, okay, I'll try my best to do that. And they said, normally before that, I would kind of just hang out in the prop truck and, like, you know, work on the guns and just kind of be in there doing my own stuff if, the, if there weren't any guns on set. But after that, they had told me, like, no, we want you on set. We want you as a present on set for props. Okay. Yeah, so it was split up quite a bit. Can you give me some so your job as the armor, if they say you need to do stuff that is taking you out of, you know, out away from your armor duties, is to say, no, I'm not doing that, uh, because it would be unsafe. Examples of what you would do, like when you're assisting props? Okay, yeah, so uh, normally, you know, I kind of, like for the saloon scene, I would just kind of be standing there, you know, watching over the guns and everything, checking them for the actors as I brought them into the actors. That's just my job as the armor. With the saloon and everything, I'm pouring drinks for props. I'm running outside and rolling cigarettes. I'm, like, doing several different things and grabbing several different pop props and setting props up constantly. And so, yeah, when some scenes aren't exactly super prop heavy and sometimes they're just kind of gun heavy, and so in that case, I can, like, focus more on the guns, but sometimes I would split between running the guns and also dealing with the props. But She would have been fired, and you bet she might have been fired. And you know what? Fired is looking really fucking tasty right now. Fired looks delicious from where she's sitting. She would give her left arm to be fired back in time. I'm betting not being fired has cost her, mm, what, $75,000, we'll say? More? She's got three lawyers in that room. Um, she's got three lawyers. I can't move the captions. They're in the original film there. So, um, get fired. That is exactly it. Or walk. Um, you know, I am doing the guns. I can't pour your drinks. I can't roll your cigarettes. Sorry. Like, and the thing is, is if she'd been fired, she wouldn't be looking at a felony, you know, felony charge if she had been fired and they had gone ahead anyway and somebody had been killed she right now would be the star witness and i can tell you other other establishments would have been lining up to hire her as the armorer who was th like throwing the flag on this one 
in the moment she cared more about staying in the industry than safety. Yeah, and it got a woman killed. That that's it got someone killed. So, yeah. Cole, the assistant, tried to help Ellis alleviate that a little bit, but not every, you know, she's, she was pretty green, so had to step in a lot. Okay. Oh, she was pretty green. Miss two shows under her belt. Yeah. Mostly I thought that I was there doing props at the beginning just to help find everything because we got hired on a week before. And normally you hire the prop master a month in advance. Sarah got brought on a week before. I got brought on a little after her. And so we were just kind of running around that first week trying to find props. And then I thought after that, you know, after she got the assistant, I'd be able to focus more on the guns. But then production talked to me and said that I needed to focus more on props. So. Okay. And who from production? Um, Gabrielle Pickle. And um, also the head of the art department, Brian. But mostly, yeah, Sarah just said that I couldn't really support props in the way needed. So they were talking about possibly taking... I was talking to them and I was like, well, do you not want me to do props at all in this case and just focus on the guns? And they were like, no, like, we don't want Nicole stepping up and taking your position. We want you to step into this position and we think it's a great opportunity for you. But really, I just got to do two jobs. We're going to go to one time speed. Nicole is stepping up and taking your position. We want you to step into this position, and we think it's a great opportunity for you. But really, I just got to do two jobs for less pay. Yeah. How yeah. did you feel about the added responsibility? Uh, you know, it was a lot, but uh, I'm super eager. And when someone kind of says, uh, like, you know, you can do this, like, then I'm just like, okay, now I have to show them, like, I can do this, you yeah. know. So ultimately... It was frustrating, but at the same time, I was like, all right, got to go and kick ass and props now, I guess, too. Yeah. I got to go and kick ass and props now, too. She just fucking said that. Um, she just fucking said that. My dude, Helena Hutchins is dead. You do not get to talk about how much you kick ass. You do not get to talk about how much you kick ass. No. A woman... You... <laughs> if I'm her lawyer, I'm like, we're, we're done. You're too stupid to talk. We're out. Like, I mean, I would have been, we're out ages ago, but... Did you just say you have to kick ass at two jobs? Mmm. Mmm. Motherfucker. Did you ever have like any time that specifically pointed out to you where you felt overwhelmed? By doing um, that? Well, you know, props, we were told a lot, you know, that we were kind of lagging and like the Wranglers would kind of shit on us for not propping up horses soon enough. Oh, isn't that like, sad? You know, getting actors propped up soon enough. So props was definitely struggling. And then after, um, that talk I had with Brian, I went to Sarah and I was like, I'm not like pulling my weight, you know? And I tried to talk to her about it and she was like, yeah, I didn't mean to like be a jerk about it. I just wanted to let them know that I needed more help in the department. And so we talked about it and I was like, well, that's cool. Just maybe next time go ahead and talk to me first before going to. This is a very expensive lawyer. I don't think this is a, this is not a public defender. This is a private lawyer. Ooh. Um Yeah. Um Mr. Bowles. Sit the fuck up, stop slouching, and march your client out of there. Like, oh my god. Um yeah, Bowles did great as the prosecutor. Um She fired the wrong lawyer. She fired the wrong lawyer because I would have shit canned the guy who let me say all this stuff in an interview. Where's her lawyer? It's the. It's the dude who's doing his best impression of a fucking tie rack because he is otherwise not moving. Like that is his job right now is he's replacing a coat hanger. She would have done better to bring a fucking coat hanger in there and just hung a tie on it. <sighs> Brian and Gabrielle. 
Um, do you know why they didn't utilize Nicole more? They, uh, well, we, you know, we definitely did utilize Nicole, but ultimately I have a very strong personality. And also a lot of the times, like, my personality would even be stronger than Sarah's in a lot of respect. And All right, let's go back and hear that again. Next time, go ahead and talk to me first before going to Brian and Gabrielle. Um, do you know why they didn't utilize Nicole more? They, uh, well, we, you know, we definitely did utilize Nicole, but ultimately I have a very strong personality. And also a lot of the times, like, my personality would even be stronger than Sarah's. And a lot of, so a lot of the times, like, my personality would even be stronger than Sarah's in a lot of respect. And um, so defense has been saying she's this wilting flower who's getting bullied. You know, they're going to play. I have a very strong personality over and over and over again because you strong personality to woman to death. Your job was to stand up and she has always been saying that, you know, like her defense lawyer is like, oh, she's a 24 year old woman who is boasting about how she has a strong personality stronger than Sarah. Holy fuck. Like this <laughs> defense has been running this like this argument knowing that this is coming up. And, I mean, he had to know it. He, he can't even say, well, I didn't even watch the video because he was right there. Like, he was right there. Um, yeah, she tried to tell production she needed more time or mistakes would happen. She knew it was dangerous but kept at it anyway. I think she believes she did well in this interview. She thinks she, he's representing her well. She might not be very good at thinking. This is like the Firefly moment of, like, oh, no, he thinks he's doing well, doesn't he? Yeah. A lot of people were already kind of gaining respect for me, like in terms of like, you know, the Wranglers and everything. And I'm just good at meshing with other departments, okay. you know. So How's that respect working out for you now? Are you feeling respected? Are you feeling it? <sighs> so they wanted me on set more just to kind of, you know, be a presence of props and really, you know, kind of just be a demanding force. Okay. Be a demanding force. Mm. <laughs> now, this has been at one time speed. You see how her demeanor is different? You see how it's a different, um, you know, a different style of delivery? Because the jury, I bet, has been seeing that and has been going, what the hell? So, yeah, we're going to take it up to one and a half again. Yeah. Um, did you ever express to them at any point if you felt overwhelmed? Or um, After that, you know, I thought we were doing pretty good of managing both. There were some days, you know, where I would talk to Sarah and I was like, like, she would be like, could you come out here and see what's going on with me? And I was like, no, dude, I need to, like, focus on guns and I need to pull guns. That's when you fire on. the client. And she would be like, well, you're the second. I think you should be here with me on set to watch this. And I was like, there's not a lot of props out there. I'm going to be here doing the guns. Okay. So there was a couple of times, but I also kind of really held my ground on not, you know, spreading myself too incredibly thin. I really held my ground. I was told to do this stuff and I was able to tell them to go F myself. I held my ground. I was I was in charge. I was the boss. Cool. Um Have you told your defense lawyer that this interview happened? Like if only there was some way he could have heard about this. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Because you kind of just have to, you know, but ultimately with higher positions, sometimes you get ran over. Okay. Uh, who hired you for us? Uh, I believe, I'm not really sure, Steph just texted me and he's like, you got the job, prop assistant, so-and-so, I sent him my resume and they, uh, Sarah sent it in and I think Roe approved it, and yeah, so Sarah, Sarah hired me, Roe approved it. Okay, so it's not like a typical hiring process for a job where you have to go in and... Yeah, no, there's no, there's no real interviews, like, any time in film. Film is a very weird industry. Word of mouth. Word of mouth, by all means. I think it's so weird how, like, 
secret is it is almost, you know, like it's really hard to get on anything unless you know somebody. And if you stop working for a while, it's like almost hard to jump back in it. Yeah. Yeah. It's really weird. You can't just like look up like film jobs in your area and then go and apply. It's not. That's Indeed. Not it. Yeah. <laughs> I really wish it was kind of like that. That would probably yeah, that'd be a lot better. But right now, there's just such a media surge, especially that you know they're just kind of getting on anyone that they can bring really because the media surge with all of these different uh, like the networks and everything coming out with their own. They're just getting on anyone really that they can bring it. Eh? Hmm. Hmm. Oh. Little internet things. It's making everything like boom right now like crazy. Yeah. Um, I know you had talked about how you were in the process of becoming a union member. Yeah. With which union? Uh, I was working on becoming a union member with yep. the Local 44. Okay. That's the oldest and longest established union, and it's also the one that my dad's a part of. So. Is that like international? Or? Um, I'm not really entirely sure. I know it's mostly California. Oh, you know, pissed. each union is kind of specific to the area. Um, yeah, I think that one is the most put together one, and it's definitely the most active one, which is why I was trying to be a part of it. And I had already actually started the like kind of OSHA safety one a little bit after this actually so I had already been starting that because okay. I just got in like a little bit before that into the program okay mm -hmm. so as far as your employment on Rust were you hired on a contract or how I was, hi determined? I was hired on a on a contract yeah you know uh, that the contract wasn't really specific to the job per se the contract was just like regular employee contract Jason has a copy of it okay is there any way you can get it? Jason has a copy of it so all the people saying, hey, what does her contract say? Um, unless she's tendering it, then yeah. It's like a lamb talking to some wolves about dinner. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Awesome, man. yeah. So, all right, we've heard Bull step in. What he says is, sure, I will send some evidence to the police. Um, besides... You and Sarah and Nicole, were there any other armorers or front masters or anybody brought onto the set at any time? Um, I don't believe so. Not anyone brought on the set. Uh, I don't really know if Seth ever came to set, but he was the mentor on the paperwork and everything, and he was, like, where we got most of our stuff from. Okay. Yeah. So no one else ever worked with you guys? They didn't do, like, lay it higher? No, oh, so they did, they did bring in one girl for swing shift, but I don't even know if she ever made it to set or if she just met up with Sarah outside of set. Okay. Um, but, yeah, we had finally, week two was coming around, and we told them, like, we're just getting crazy busy. We can't have Sarah leaving set to go find these things. So they brought in a day player that could run around and go find things for us. Okay. Because before that, Sarah had to leave set a lot of the time. Oh, that also contributed to spreading us in for a little while there. That's why they brought in the third person. Yeah. Because ultimately, Sarah would have to leave set pretty much every this is the thing that is so, so horrible. <sighs> so horrible. Um, yeah. Um, and yes, I've seen it. Um, Rob is saying, whoop, they might be coming up here. All right. I'm just going to pull this down until I've seen it. So this thing about Hannah Gutierrez DM'd me. I, I've seen this. The uh, the claim about Hannah Gutierrez DMing, I consider it a little bit unconfirmed. Um, so I I don't know. Um, I I watched his I watched his video. Um, I don't know if it's actually Hannah. That's the thing. It's somebody with Hannah's name. Um, I don't know. And um, so. But all the all it says is basically you need to stop putting videos out with my um, uh, with my phone number in it. It's not the worst thing, but um, if I was the prosecution, I'd be following up on it. So I I don't know until it's until it's verified. I want to you know check, and I mean hey maybe she'll reach out to me. I don't know, but yeah, a strong personality. She sh this is destroying their whole thing about about that day for several hours and then it would just be me out there and what would sarah do at that time? sarah would go try to find props that's the thing it might be somebody week, messing with you know, jay to find like a weird indian axe you know like <laughs> there's a bunch of weird obscure things for a period piece that are super hard to find so she would go try to find them meet up with other prop masters in the area and see if they had them do you know who that source was um you know i think her name was jade jade yeah okay yeah i was hoping for her to come more on set but and this is the thing I bought defense's opening line uh, hook or defense's opening hook line and sinker, and wow, was I wrong! I watched the chat in Court TV do a hard shift because Court TV's chat was split probably about sixty forty, with a lot of people saying 
Hannah is innocent. Hannah, you know, all of this. And then I watched, after all of this, I watched it shift real hard. And it went to about 95.5 in favor of Hannah causing trouble. Like, Hannah being at fault here. She has been blowing up the defense's, you know, things throughout all of this. So... Yeah, they just hired her as a day player every now and then. Okay. Okay, so as far as... Her lawyer's um, pro bono. We talked about before, well, she's um, getting better than she paid for. Okay. Um, but yeah. I'm sure to um, so, again, who provides the ammo? So, as far as I'm concerned, me and Sarah, we went together and we picked up the ammunition and all the weapons and my leathers from Seth Kenny in Albuquerque at his shop. Um... When she's talking about leathers, she's referring to the things like the bandoliers, the holsters, all of that crap. Um, now, you might be saying, why is she worried about her leathers? Because that stuff is fucking expensive. Uh, also, I looked up the guy who um, who does her leathers. Um, I commented a bit on the edging. I think the edging is, um, is worn. Because that guy does actually really fantastic work. I looked at his other work, and his work is fantastic. I think she just probably hasn't been treating them well or has been intentionally beating them up to make them look older so yeah we got two boxes of ammo i'm pretty sure that day and the then, leather um, worker actually we went on in the show there really were a couple times work. that we needed more so sarah and i would text him you know that we needed more and occasionally sarah brought in more ammo from seth okay those two boxes that were originally supplied were they linked to them originally supplied um, that you picked up two boxes of ammo. oh yeah so um, I really? think there were like boxes, like the white boxes. No, they were, they were, they were like bigger boxes, okay. for sure. Um, yeah, no, a lot of them were, uh, there wasn't a lot of dummies in those really much at all. There were some dummies, you know, like obscure dummies that we couldn't really get, like, uh, the 50, 70 rounds, you know. I don't know if you're familiar with those. Those are big rounds. They go in the trap door. So we had some of those dummies with it. But in terms of 45 long colt dummies, I don't think there was a lot of dummies in there. And so I asked Seth about it, and I said, hey, like, where's all the long colt dummies? Because the 45, you know, 45 ammo is, like, different than 45 long colt, so... We didn't exactly, I couldn't find that, so... <laughs> 45 ACP versus 45 Long Colt. And I can just say, 45 Long Colt is actually really hard to find. Um, I still have trouble finding it, so, yeah. I, he told me to check the dummies that I had from the last show, because he got me those ones and everything. And so, I went back through a bag that I had. This bag has, like, a bunch of loose dummies in it. And I went through and I checked all of them and I put them into two boxes. And so we had two boxes of 45 long cold dummies that were mine from the last show. Well, original. Did you just hear she had a bag of mixed, like mixed assortment? Um, I mean, maybe she had a sorting bin. I could see having like a dump bin for dumping stuff. But yeah, um, 45 long cold cowboy load was scarce AF in 2021. I've got two guns that shoot 45 long cold. Um and it's really hard to, um, yeah, it's really hard to find. Yeah, okay. and I just brought those off of the old way, and they were in my car for, like, two weeks. I jumped right off of the old way into this. I was barely home for, like, a week. So, yeah. so he told you to check your supplies yeah. and what you had to take it. Yeah, so he authorized you to bring... He authorized me to bring, yeah, dummies. Okay. And then also there was one time where... He didn't give us any eighth loads, and I had one box of eighth loads, and so I was like... So, Corporal, just to be clear what we've just heard, um, did Ms. Gutierrez tell you that she brought two boxes of dummies onto the set of rust that she had left over from the old way? Yes. And did she also explain that they were loose in a bag in her car and they had been there for two weeks? That's correct. And did she explain that she took them out of the bag and put them in boxes? Yes. I'm okay. going prosecution's like let me highlight the absolute fuckery that's going on here and i know i'm stealing edb's line uh, i've got the facts not fuckery mug here um like let me highlight how fucking lunatic this is gonna use my box of ace loads put it on the invoice and i would have received money for that for blanks for blanks yeah ace load blanks okay did you ever get recompensated for this uh, no, I don't really plan on it, uh, given the circumstances, um, because usually that goes through Seth, and then Seth kicks me down. We're going to go through this again. Uh, 
So she just said she brought her own ammunition on and she would be, um, she would normally be paid for it, right? For bringing her own ammunition and basically selling it to the set, right? And I would have received money for that. For okay. blanks. For blanks, yeah. A flow of blanks. Okay. Did you ever get recompensated for that? Uh, no, I don't really plan on it, uh, given the circumstances, um, because usually that goes through Seth, and then Seth kicks me down. I don't really plan on going after my money for these blanks, which is going to be, like, whole dollars because of the circumstances. I'm walking away from this, like, ten dollars because... A woman died. You fuck. Um, the absolute fuckery. And then we have Bowles who speaks up to be like, for blanks. Are you kidding me? Your client is absolutely sabotaging herself and you're helping. And Shiraz, thank you so much. Um, I gotta roll this. Uh, says, fully appreciate how much time and work goes into these summaries. Just remember, nobody expects perfection or full coverage. Recap means you get to decide what was important. I'm here because I don't know jack about ammo, uh, so you do you. I want to go over these things because this is the trial, potentially. Like, this is the trial happening right now. So, yeah, we're watching it at speed. I got my comments, but this is the trial. We skipped over a lot in the morning. This matters. Um, whatever. Okay. Yeah. So, how then her lawyer should be keeping her the out of this room. Is, you know, kind of to, we're just trying to understand. So, how many rounds would you say were supplied? Asking, I don't know. You know, mind if I check my phone really it's quick? I think Seth like sent me a picture. Of like it written on cardboard or something. Okay. Or actually, if you look at the boxes, oh. I think the boxes on the flap. Yeah, on the flap should say it. Okay. Did you see that at all? Yeah. yeah. I, don't, I mean, I don't. That's the yeah. Okay, that's what that showed me. So that same thing. That's what should have all been in there. Okay. Um, and so you and Sarah picked it up at the beginning. Yeah. Of the production. Yeah. Um, from Albuquerque, brought it to set, and yeah, but we couldn't exactly bring it to set right away because they hadn't had the prop truck ready for us, so. We had to leave it, you know, she had the guns in her car in Albuquerque. I had the ammo in my trunk at the hotel, and then we just took them to set the next day. Okay, so it was less than Overnight, yeah, just so overnight. It was like multiple days that, that's a, multiple days of what? That, I was just going to say for Sarah to keep all those in her vehicle in Albuquerque, that's mm -hmm. a bold well, move. Well, it was, only, it was only one night, and she had a garage. Okay. So that's why we ultimately, she was like, do you want them to go with you or me? And I was like, you, you have a garage, you know? Okay, I'll pick you though. Oh, I'll, oh, I know, I told her. Somebody was all like, get those and get out, and I was like, oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, so when you guys brought additional rounds on the set for additional boxes or needed more... That's a fair delivered. question. Uh, Sarah brought them in most okay. of the time. I never saw Seth after the first time that I saw him before the show. Okay. So did Sarah, you know, she went and picked them up from Albuquerque or how did she get them? She, she lived in Albuquerque, so most of the time she would just run and grab them. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure if she got any more from anyone else. I had heard that some of the dummies were borrowed from someone. I don't know. She said, don't lose any of these because we have to give them back. And I was like, okay, they fall out of the gun belt and everything, but I'll try not to lose them. Okay. Some of them are borrowed. Did you check those borrowed dummies? Like, did you check the stuff? Um, if she's convicted, uh, she'll be under felony restrictions that should prevent her from having a gun. So a felony conviction is a major limitation. I don't, some states, I think, do allow you to get your gun rights back, so she could move to one of those states to, to do that. And then, how much did you supply of your own? Of my own dummies? Yeah. Just the two. And we mostly went through those right away, just because mm -hmm. two boxes, two of the little boxes. Not like big boxes, just the, the little boxes. And yeah, I had two of those, and some, most of mine had the no primer caps, the ones I showed you, remember? Is it the ones that are like indented in? Yes. Okay. So a lot of those were mine, and then also, uh, I had a multitude of the ones with holes and the ones you shake, so yeah. And I checked those all and I put them into two things okay. myself, yeah. Do you remember what those boxes look like? Uh, yeah, yeah, I do. Um, they usually say JF on them. Okay. Um, this is one. This is something that I get asked every stream. The JS, 
is for Joe Swanson. Swanson makes these dummies. Um, he's a major manufacturer of dummies. So, yeah. And she's, yeah. That my dad sent me. And mine are usually beat up pretty bad. Like, okay. they're very dirty and uh, gross, usually. Okay. Do you know the JS stands for them? Not from Family uh, Guy. Okay. Have you met Joe? I have not, but him and my dad are pretty good friends. Okay, yeah. Because you're dumb. Let me stop it there for a moment. Um, Corporal, did Ms. Gutierrez uh, show you a photograph on her phone during the interview? Yes, she did. And did she indicate to you that the photograph that she was showing you was a photograph of the box uh, or a box that would be like the box that she brought onto the set that had dummies? Yes. And did she tell you who she got that photo from? She um, said in her interview that she got that photo from her father, which is Bell Reed. And I'm going to show you what has uh, previously been uh, admitted into evidence as State's Exhibit 69. Do you see that? Giggity. Yes. Is that the exact photo that she showed you during the interview? Yes, it is. Thank you. Does this look exactly like the uh, box of dummies that Mr. Benavides took from the prop cart on October 21st, 2021? Yes, it looks exactly like it. Thank you. So this is a good question. Homemade blanks would not be... Nobody home makes blanks. You'd buy the blanks. Right. And blanks are manufactured. They are just, you know, you'd buy those um, homemade dummies would be really common because it's not hard to home make a dummy. Um, I could do it. Right. It's not difficult to do. So um, why are homemade dummies used? Because they're just it's pretty simple. Um, it's not that difficult. All right, so as far as the ammo goes, who has access? Um, they stay, they stay in the truck, like on, you know, the only thing that's in the safe is the guns. So yeah, pretty much, I don't know if they locked the prop truck at night or what happened with that, but yeah, so pretty much just me, Nicole, Sarah, and the first week we did share that prop truck with locations. Okay. Um, but other than that, the prop truck, you know, would kind of be open most days just because we're running in and out of there. And sometimes, you know, ammo is underneath on our cart, just chilling there usually. Like on the on the bottom, no, on the cart. Okay, on yeah. the second shelf. Yes, yeah. Okay. I usually try to keep it down there. So all the ammo is pretty much out in the open. Possibly. Yeah. Uh, just for the yeah, crimping. Yeah, unless it wasn't the like taken out difficult. directly of the boxes or anything. But, but if yeah, you're starting with a blank there, casing, the then it's pretty easier. Much regularly. Okay. And they never get locked up in a safe. No. Okay. Um, were all the guns provided by Seth? Yes. And who has access to the guns? Uh, Sarah and I, and I believe Nicole kind of knew the the code, but I don't think she remembered it most of the time. Okay. I'm just going to note here, um, people go from thinking they're a witness to thinking that they're a, um, you know, to finding out they're a suspect all the time. Um, like, yeah. Uh, James noting, I reload all my own ammo and I don't know anybody who makes blanks at home. I've never even seen the dies sold that would crimp a blank. Um, I have heard of reenactors reloading the pre-crimped brass um, but they don't, like, I don't know anybody who just makes blanks out of nothing. No. Okay. They're out there, out in the open, pretty much regularly. Okay. And they never get locked up in a safe? No. Okay. Um, were all the guns provided by Seth? Yes. And who has access to the guns? Uh, Sarah and I, and I believe Nicole kind of knew the, the code, but I don't think she remembered it most of the time. Okay. Yeah. Did she ever... So previously she said only her and Sarah. Now she's saying Nicole sort of knows it maybe a little bit. Remove the guns from the safe? I had her put them away sometimes. Okay. Mostly just because I couldn't leave that. Okay. Yeah. And does anybody watch her do that? Uh, no, not really. So you're handing off guns to Sarah and not watching her do it? Like, oh my God. The armor should be doing all the gun stuff, right? Is she allowed to? Uh, mostly if somebody has to lock them up and they shouldn't be on set. So, you know, Sarah or I would give her permission to go over there and just put them uh, in there. Blessed, I will yeah, be getting to them. To We're almost to done do the uh, this interview the and then I'll think for a be going through every yeah. single super chat. She only put them away ever. So
I'm not I'm not done for the night until I've gone through every single super chat. I'm going to be going through all of them. So, yeah. Who all have the ability to lock the safe? I mean, anyone that has on, like, can close it. You, know? that, you don't have to punch in the code again to lock it? No. So you turn the knob and it's done? Yeah. Okay. That's uh, most safes. Most safes are not hard to lock. Who has the ability to lock the truck? You know, none of us lock the truck ever. Um, we figured that's kind of like the transpose job. We don't have locks for the trucks normally. Uh, I know some prop masters lock up their own trucks, but... Yeah, I'm not really sure. We kind of just closed ours up every day. Okay. Do you know? I don't know. Yeah, if every armor I've talked to has said like I keep track of everything, I've got my own locks. Nobody else has access to it but me and my team. So, like everybody having access to this stuff is just ridiculous. Transpo ever locked it? Okay. Do you know who was in charge of that truck? Uh, not specifically. Okay. I don't remember his name. It was a male though. Yeah. Can you describe him? He was a sweet old Hispanic man with a nice mustache. Okay. Hispanic man with a n- nice mustache. Okay, midway. cool. And he was the one primarily in charge of that truck. Towards like the second week, yeah. Before that, we kind of just had random people moving it. Um, and then eventually he got assigned to us pretty much. Okay. Yeah. Um, in the morning. Oh, random people. Fan-fucking-tastic. You're excellent at your job. Random people. When you got there, was it ever locked up? No. Good morning. Okay. So you just... Walk in, walk in, and pull the handle. Okay. What about the back of it? I know it's got one of those big. Yeah, that's what we normally did. Yeah, we uh just closed up the side and we would unlock the handle. We figured it was usually getting watched by security. Do they just have security? I don't know if you don't know, but do they just have security at that front gate there, or do they have? I know that I've seen some security around other parts of set, like just in a car, but that was mostly after the incident and everything, and it was just a car near the church. Okay. So that's really all I know about the security measures. Right. So you say, um, as far as ammo goes, it is common to have it outside of that safe. Isn't yeah, it? no, it's. It's super common to have it outside of the safe. Okay. Who loads the ammo into the guns? Me and Sarah. Okay, you both load them. Yeah. And who loads ammo? Why the hell is anyone who's not an armorer loading ammo into the guns? That's re- ridiculously car- careless. Ammo into, like, the bandoliers, the belts, and... That's me and Sarah again. Uh, I think Nicole helped us a couple of times shaking them. Okay. Yeah. Did she ever, like, actually load them, or did she just shake because them okay, they're good? And she would shake them and put them into the belt with me. Okay. Yeah. Do you know how often, or should I say, when did you guys put the ammo in the bandoliers? Um, a lot of them already had it in there. So from the last Nick Cage set and everything. So still check those ones out and everything. But we, of course, had a couple more that we had to, like, switch around and everything. So mostly the whole first week we were switching them around. And then after that we did have a couple more characters come in with different, you know, waist sizes. So we would have to, like, put them in other belts too. So Bowles is a, and it's, B-O-W-L-E-S, I think, but he's a prop attorney during this interview. Yeah, he just sits there. He does not do a damn thing. Um, Why are there people shaking? Don't trust anyone else. Yep. Um, Some of these belts already have rounds in them. Yeah. Okay. Do you remember which ones? No. Um, They mostly, yeah, they mostly got switched around a lot, and a lot of them fell out. Pretty regularly out of the, them. Yeah, so the dummy rounds would fall out sometimes just because when they're riding the horses, they jiggle out. Okay. By the way, for people who don't know, KVB Studios is has done work as a professional film armor, right? So, um, you know, if I don't have a, a dedicated locking room, that props truck is my fucking truck. I have the only key. It leaves with me. Get your own. Yep. So... Um, so you regularly have to put more in them. So since some of this ammo came from another production, was the ammo in those belts ever checked? Yeah. So you guys physically removed them from the belts? Yeah. And checked them? Yes. Okay. And who all did the checking? That was me. That was involved in the two boxes that I did. At the beginning? Yes. All right. Um, so when ammo's not being used then, does it ever go back in a box? Does it stay? When ammo's not being used, um, if it's about to be used, it's there on the bottom of the cart. Like, if we're going to get into it later that day, we don't really have time to run back to the trucks. So we usually keep it right there if we're shooting that day. If we're not shooting that yeah, day, it doesn't really come on set. I'll usually bring, like, maybe a box of quarter loads just in case they randomly decide that they want to shoot something because they'll change their minds last minute, and then you have to be prepared for that. Who's they? Oh, her lawyer would have a copy of these before the trial. Um, yeah, they absolutely would. Uh, correction, a prop attorney here would have fired. <laughs> 
Um, uh, directors, have been fired. actors, whoever just like feels like mm, maybe I should be shooting right now, kind of. Okay. So when you go to unload the belts or the guns, anything of the sort, um, does it go back in the box? The belt? The like we, we don't ever take once they're once the the dummies are on the belt, they stay on the belt, and the belts just get hung in the prop truck. Okay. Like yeah, and then uh, for the guns and everything, yeah, we take all the dummies out if it's dummied up, and then of course we take the flanks out too. And yes. Then they go. They go back in the box. Okay. Or sometimes the dummies they'll go on the cart on the top of the cart. Okay. So would you say that animals ever mixed? The dummies and the blanks, or just you know various kinds of dummies? Well, various kinds of dummies. Yeah, like I told you, all dummies are kind of weird and individual in their own way, pretty much. Um, so yeah, they were mixed pretty regularly. Okay. So it's not like you know I say, hey, I take these out of here and they have to go back in that specific box because these are. They're all weird and individual in their own way. Um, standardize and check. And if you can't be certain, don't anything. No, they just go in a dummy box, okay. in a box of dummies. Um, so our actors are, or crew members on set, are they um, advised to self-inspect weapons? Uh, I'm not really sure. I Well, most of the time when they tell me, like I'll go up to them and I'm like, here, and I show them it's clear, they'll be like, it's okay, I trust you. I say, don't trust me. You know, go ahead and always check for yourself. Okay. But, um... Don't trust me. Go ahead and always check for yourself. That's going to come up with Baldwin. That's going to come up with Baldwin a lot. Um, so, yeah. yeah. I'm trying to figure out why she thinks that she's helping her case by talking about keeping everything on a cart like that is supposed to be secure and safe. Yeah, that cart was as secure as like leaving something in your front yard. Where can I apply to get paid as a prop lawyer? <laughs> uh. Not required. No, not really. Okay. But I do, I do show them them every time before I hand them off to them. All right. Um. I show them every time before I hand them off to them. Baldwin accepts the gun from Dave Halls without being shown it. He should have thought that was weird, right? Show them that the gun's clear. Have you seen any of them do their own safety checks? Yes. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Jensen does his own safety checks. Uh, Travis does his own safety checks. Travis Amell. Um, uh, Devin was getting into doing his own safety checks because I taught him how to do it, so he was kind of getting better at that. Um, what did they do to do these checks? Pull the hammer back to half cock, spin it around, and close it. Okay. Now, I'm just going to note here. Um, A, the reason why they're doing their own safety checks is they don't fucking trust her. B... The actors are not supposed to be doing safety checks on their own. They're supposed to be getting shown the gun to be safe with the armor. They're not supposed to be fucking around with the guns on their own. It's supposed to be when the armor hands the gun to the talent, the, the armor shows the talent that the gun is safe, and then the talent doesn't fucking mess with it after that. She's just said, like, everybody messes with the guns. It's some sort of crazy playtime here. Like, mm, no, no, <laughs> this is not how this is going. Um, oh, yeah, about pulling it round out, checking them themselves. No, not really. Okay, um, has it ever been common practice for actors to? I'm not really too sure. What about on your last production? Did they ever do their own? Uh, Nick Cage definitely did not. Uh, he barely really cared to train with the gun at all. Um, a lot of actors sometimes will barely care to train with the gun at all and think that they'll just do it on the day. Um, and But, yeah, no, not a lot of them take it out and check them. Okay. Um, when you or somebody gives a gun to an actor, um, do you tell oh. them, like, hey, these are the rounds that are in this gun? Like, do you tell them it's hot or cold? And then what kind of ammo is the gun? Um... So, I'm sorry, can you repeat that question? Yeah. <laughs> so I tell them, yes. I tell them, all right, so this is a clear gun if there's no dummies in it, right? If it's dummied up, I show them and I say this is dummied up, and usually I have the dummies that have no primer cap in there. So I'll show them that. And then if it's hot, I'll tell them it's hot, and I'll tell them four quarter loads or four eighth loads or whatever is in the gun. Yeah, okay. and I let them know. That and Bowles look, looks like he's hearing this for the first time. Why did you not have a discussion there? Judy is saying, Runkle, do you reload your own ammo? I don't have the time. Um... I should. I just don't have the time. I need to get a reloading set up because uh, I shoot some weird calibers too now. Exactly how many is in there, and I put it exactly to where they'll shoot it, and it'll go for that time. Okay. Have you ever allowed access um, to anyone for any of these firearms? No. 
<laughs> Whoops. <laughs> Have you ever allowed access to anyone at any time for these firearms? No. Okay, cool. For using them on set or for any purpose? Well, I allowed outside of yeah. what their scope was. No. Um, like after hours, during lunch? No. You know, days that you guys weren't? No, we, me, Nicole, and Sarah ate lunch together pretty regularly and uh, pretty much every day. Yep. Except for a couple of days where I would sit at another table or converse with some other people. But yeah, we all went to lunch together. We all locked them up every day at lunch and we all locked them up every night. And I definitely didn't go to work on my weekends because why would I do that? You know, right. I want to be yes, as late as would. possible. <laughs> 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 all. Yeah. So. all right, let's back that up. another table or converse with some other people but yeah we all went to lunch together we all locked them up every day at lunch and we all locked them up every night and I definitely didn't go to work on my weekends because why would I do that you know right. I want to be there as least as possible isn't this funny uh, a woman is dead stop it Fucking stop it. Um, Bowles, your job there, aside from getting her the fuck out, is to remind her to stop fucking doing this. Mm. Mm. You know what I'm thinking if I'm sitting there as an ordinary person on the jury? I'm sitting there thinking, fuck her, fuck him too. I now hate the defense lawyer because why the fuck are you laughing? There's a woman who is dead. <sighs> oh, don't have some fucking respect. Don't look like such a fucking narcissistic monster. Like, look like you give a shit. Look like you're unhappy. Look like you're upset. Like, <sighs> unfucking believable. Last weekend, I wasn't. I was in Denver the first weekend, actually. So yeah, then the other one, I was just relaxing in my hotel. And I got to tell you, if I'm the prosecution, I play that to her. Did you think this was funny? You knew Hannah was dead at this point. Did you think this was funny? Um, Do you spend any time with anybody on the weekend? Yeah, I spent some time uh, with the nice boy at the front desk at my hotel. He was nice. Um, I hung out with some crew members. I went bowling one time. And other than that, I didn't really hang out with people outside of that too much. And I kind of went and did my own thing in Denver the week before. We haven't really been there that long. Okay. Um, did you go out? This, this is kind of in, did you go out um, with the crew one night too? I think you went <laughs> to the brewery. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We went to the brewery downtown after bowling. After bowling. Yeah. Okay. And that was on a day off though. Yeah. Did you have work the next day? No, that was on uh, Monday. We worked. We we had Monday too. Oh, sorry off. to hear that. that which that's Monday? rough. For it was the last Monday before the incident. So the 20th was the incident, I believe, on Wednesday? 21st. 21st, so. The 11th? Monday. Columbus Day? The holiday? No. Yeah, it would be the 18th. Okay. So you were off that Monday and Tuesday. Yeah. We're back. Yeah. Okay. Um, do I ever do mock trials with my clients? You bet. I teach my client what a cross-examination is going to look like. Hey, let's run through a cross-examination. You need to know what that looks like. I'm about to make your whole day suck. And I had clients who wanted to punch me after a cross-examination who later was like, thank God you showed me what that could be like because I didn't know. Um, you know, you don't want to over-prep your witness, but you want your witness to know what a cross-examination is going to look like. Whew. Have you yourself, and not just on this side, but have you ever um, encountered a defective blank or a defective dummy? Yeah. So, you know, I've had a couple of blanks that haven't gone off you know, but usually that's because the actor doesn't pull the hammer all the way back. 
and so it'll just be at half cock. And so when they shoot it, it won't ignite it. And I usually just say like, oh, it was a misfire to kind of save the actor's face a little bit in that case. Mm -hmm. um, and then for in terms of bad dummies, I had never experienced a bad dummy. Okay. I have never experienced a bad dummy. This doesn't happen. Okay, cool. That that helps convict you. Um, I think she's likely to, and I think it's going to be a gong show, but I think she's likely to. Um, if I'm a juror, I'm thinking I don't want to be here either. You're the one person who could have prevented this killing. Yep. Um, yep. Um, and, yeah, I saw somebody saying, you know, you say to have a lawyer present. Are you still 100% on that one? What if you get someone like this? Um, you should have a lawyer who's conscious. Um, so what's your standard protocol like if... Hello, M. One of them's defective. Either, one, either, either, either one. Okay, so if the blanks are defective, you know, um, usually I'll just take them, I'll put them in my pocket, I'll save them for later, and then if I'm curious enough, I'll just go ahead and like shoot them and be like, okay, yeah, they didn't pull the hammer all the way back. Or if the if the dummies were defective, I guess, I would put them in my pocket and just save them to later and check them out. Okay. Um, I just save them for later and check them out? Um, put them in my pocket. Oh, right. All the pocket ammo. Cool. And um, Jeremy, thank you so much. Thanks for your time and energy, Ian. I'm so surprised that some people don't have enough respect towards deadly weapons to treat them with absolute focus seriousness. Of course, I'd be constantly checking and rechecking. I can tell you, I have brought newbies to the range who've had more respect for guns than she has. And also, I have brought people to the range where I'm like, okay, let's teach you how to shoot. And if they don't take it seriously, if they don't take it a lot more seriously than Hannah seems to be, I say, okay, cool. We've been through the safety briefing. You weren't paying attention. Get in your car. You're going home. And they say, what? But I thought we were here to shoot guns. And I say, yeah. And I thought you were going to pay attention to my safety briefing. So go home. And they're like, no, 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 no. I'm going to, I'm going to go home. Like, I, I'll pay attention again. Do it again. It's like, no, you had your chance. If you're going to be the sort of person who fucks around, we're going home. Um, I have taken people to the range and gone home with them never having touched a gun because I didn't think that they were up to it. And yeah, my cat talks more than this lawyer. He works for chicken. <laughs> Love it. Um, have yeah. you ever in your history of working encountered live round homicide? Never. Okay. And how do you know that? Uh, because every dummy I've ever shaken has been a dummy and the other ones have holes on the side and I've never experienced a round that looked like a dummy and behaved like a blank or anything. So, yeah, I am shaking all of them most of the time. Okay. So, and then I know you've said this a million times. Whoa, 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 whoa. Cool. Let's, let's do that. Let's go back and hear that. That was a comment. Experienced a round that looked like a dummy and behaved like a blank or anything. So, yeah, I am shaking all of them most of the time. Okay. I am shaking all of them most of the time. All most of the time. Hmm. Most? Most? Like, not all of the time? So, like, not this time where you where a woman got killed like if i'm the prosecution i'm just like can we just put this quote on a loop for the next half an hour for the jury <sighs> um whoop. where'd that Most of the time? Yeah. Um, nervous giggler here. I messed up several disability interviews until I hired a lawyer who pointed out so I could be mindful of it. Yeah. The lawyer hasn't done shit for her here. Um, would the defense put HG on the stand now? Um, I think they're gonna. I think it's not going to be great, but yeah. What is it? I'm shaking all of them most of the time, aka 50% of the time. It works all the time. Um Guys, this is a tip for the men. Um, it's also a tip sort of for the women. But um, guys, if you are going out with a woman 
And she says, most of the time I take my birth control. Wear a condom. I mean, wear a condom anyway, but like most of the time I wear, I take my birth control means there's going to be a kid. And most of the time I shake the dummies means, yeah. Um, hmm. Can you imagine you're driving a car where the brakes work most of the time? Not every time, just most of the time. Well, what happens the other time, right? Um, mm. Oh, my God. So, and then I know you've said this a million times, but just do me a favor. Go over uh, each round and then how the He's round. only shooting blanks most of the time. She was shaking all of them. Your, your microphone off. Sorry. Did Ms. Gutierrez tell you that she was shaking all of them most of the time? Yes. Thank you. <laughs> the prosecution is coming right back to that. Um, and we've gotten a condom. Somehow knew it would get here. Like, why is the prosecution highlighting this? Because it's awful. Because it is awful. Awful, awful, awful. I don't have the picture ready, Rob. Each round of blanks and dummies. So I know okay. that there's like obviously a couple different kinds of dummies. All right, yeah. Okay. You don't have to go into like no, every okay. specific caliber or anything of this sort, but just okay. Let's. Uh... Bulls, stop grinning like an idiot. Uh, all right. So. A lot of the dummies, the ones with primer caps, those ones mostly go in the belts and everything. Uh, a lot of the primer caps are punctured most of the time, you know, because they get hit while they're in the gun. So those will go in the gun sometimes uh, if I don't have the other ones. There are some with holes in the side uh, that also still have the primer caps and everything. And then there's the ones with no primer caps, and there's no and there's a hole in the side sometimes too. With oh, those, that's sweet. Sometimes there's not. Um, and mostly I like to put the ones with no primer caps into the guns, you know, just to make everyone feel safe. Um, and then for the other ones, those go in the belt, you know, and, uh, the ones that have the primer caps. Corporal, is it your understanding from your investigation that, uh, the dummies that were put into Mr. Baldwin's prop gun on October 21st, 2021, uh, all had missing primer caps? No. <laughs> Hannah, you should realize this is going real bad for you. Real bad. Oh, and the hole in the side are good for both, really. Okay. And then, and then for all the lows, yeah, all right. So for all the blanks, all the quarters, um... So there's eighth loads. Those are the super quietest ones. And I just I worked know. with I Ryan to to Zealand, Armstrong, that little 11 year old on the old way. And I had her use those. So especially if it's someone that's really young and new with the guns, I'll make sure that they're the smallest load possible, which is an eighth. Um, some horses. So for the newbies, they get the smallest load possible. Require eighth loads. Um, most of the time, I'll put horsey. I'll put the box and I'll put horsey rounds on them in my own handwriting, so that way I know. Horsey loads. Oh, and bulls! You've got to stop this fucking weekend at Bernie's lawyering. Like this is this is unbelievable. Um, and are those the eighth? Yeah, those are the eights. And then sometimes, you know, um, I will, if it's super close proximity and inside eights too, but quarters also work for inside proximities that are close. Um, and then on top of that, uh, for the quarters around kids, around horses too, that's like the last size pretty much allowed. And then around kids. So keep in mind, if I'm the prosecution, I'm hammering on the around kids. So 
Miss Ditz better just take her career and freedom and chuck it in the fuck it bucket. Yeah, I mean, if I'm the prosecution, I am hammering that there were kids on this set because it could have been a kid who got sh got shot. We do the half loads if it's going into like a rifle or if we're outside. Like we did a lot of half loads on the show because a lot of it was outside. And then for the full loads, it's very rare still that I use a full load unless like an actor is just really weird and wants it. Uh, Alec only wanted to train with full loads because he wanted it to look realistic. Mm -hmm. So she just called Alec really weird, which I'm there for. This attorney is something else. I feel an idiot would have more gravitas to the situation and pay more attention. Um, yeah. Um, so Alec wanted to use full loads because he likes the, the sound. Um, and because he's kind of method-y. Um, and uh, most of the time I'll use full loads if it's a really big gun. Like a trap door or something, a trap door rifle. You, that would have a lot of smoke coming out of it. So you want to make sure it looks realistic. Okay. Um, were all of these used for rest? Folds were used for us. Some of my eights were used for us. Quarters were used for us. And halves were used for us. Yeah. Okay. So it was really a variety and just depending on the situation. Okay. And then... Well, um, I'm pretty sure there was a kid and, in this. Uh, most in of the time I'll use full loads if it's a really big gun. Like a trap door or something. A trap door rifle. You, that would have a lot of smoke coming out of it, so you want to make sure it looks realistic. Okay. Um, were all of these used for us? Folds were used for us. Some of my eights were used for us. Quarters were used for us. And halves were used for us. Yeah. Okay. So it was really a variety and just depending on the situation. Okay. And then is anyone allowed to bring their personal firearms on the set? Uh, no. Did you see anybody bring personal firearms? No. And you know By the way, I've heard multiple different armors say that they have banned people from a set for bringing personal firearms. Like, oh, uh, you brought your concealed carry piece? You are banned. The armor has has had the the power to, like, ban grips from the set and so forth for this. So, yeah, that shouldn't be a hesitation. It should be an, oh, God, no. No. Okay. No, you Maybe can't bring your own ammo. You about going target shooting? Uh, yeah. The 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 Wrangler has made a joke about it one time to me, and I said something to the effect of, "Well, you can try. You don't have the ammo." Okay. What did they say? Do you remember? Uh, not really. I don't really remember what they said. Yeah, the plot of the movie Rust is him running with his grandson from the law over an accidental shooting. Um, yeah. <laughs> Which is horrifically on point. Um, now, the Wranglers apparently made a joke about going target shooting. I can tell you from talking to armorers, um, a, lot of, a lot of the time when they go on set, people will talk about, like, can we shoot these guns for realsies? And what the armorers have said is that they say, okay, yes, we absolutely can. Once the filming is done and wrapped and everything is done, then maybe we can go shoot some real guns. But not until then. And she's looking real casual here, right? So's her lawyer. She's got her leg up. He's getting full slouch. Like, uh... They insinuated about shooting actual rounds. Yeah. Okay. I think that they were joking, though. Okay. A lot of boys on set will be like, oh, my God, can we go shoot the gun? It's just, yeah. But no one pressured you into it. No, no one ever seriously pressured me into it. Uh, what about Sarah? What about Sarah? Did, it, did she ever mention anything about shooting? No. Okay. Sarah, yeah, no. She never mentioned anything about shooting, and we left every day at the same time, and pretty much... Not during filming. During filming, those guns are sacred. You do not... Those guns do not get near live ammo. Full stop. <coughs> After shooting, maybe. Um, but then you got to be super careful with them. Got there. 
just around a little after each other. Mm -hmm. <coughs> um, so as far as safety protocols on set, um, do you recall? So Hubby, also in armor, fired a lead actor for sneaking into armory room and pulling the trigger on a blank loaded gun prep for set. They had to reshoot all his scenes. Armors have actual power. Armors can fire, can get talent fired. Armors can get talent recast. Armors, the other one I've heard is armor, like an armor saying, I know your character is a gunslinger, not anymore. And they had to redo the character to be a knife thrower because the 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 actor was messing around with guns and the armorer said, he doesn't get a gun on my set ever, full stop, period. And that guy then spent the rest of the film with plastic knives. Um, you know, Baldwin and his lawyers are watching this case very closely to orchestrate their defense. You bet they are. You bet they are. And they're going to be throwing Hannah all the way under the bus. Um, this is great for Baldwin. Any sort of safety protocols during the time of the production? Um, we had a couple so. of safety meetings. A lot of days we did not, which normally it's typical anytime that there's firearms or live animals on set or open flame, you do a safety meeting. So a lot of those days that we did not have a safety meeting. Um, other than that, Who safety... Who hosted them? Huh? Who hosted those safety meetings? Dave. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, um, I wouldn't have had her do this interview at all. About, um, guns, my, the guns and everything. We also said, you know, because actors will leave guns around sometimes. They'll forget them. So we always told people, you know, like, don't ever touch a gun if you see it, you know, because Jensen totally left his on the snack bar one time. She just threw Jensen Ackles under the bus. Jensen totally left his uh, gun on the snack bar one time. Why the fuck did he have his gun to walk around with to leave it on the snack bar? Why isn't it, you need the gun for this scene, here is the gun, gun goes, you know, gun goes into the holster, and then as soon as the scene is done, I get that. That is mine. It's not yours to take to the fucking snack bar. It shouldn't have been his gun to take to the fucking snack bar. Mmm. 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 <laughs> Um, I really hope that they call in an armorer to go through all of this and to be like, should it ever be possible for the actor to leave his gun at the snack bar? The fucking snack bar. <sighs> yeah. Mm -hmm. we, we found that pretty promptly. But I've talked to like a dozen different film armors. No. None of them it's have said that that would be okay. Go all the way back to base or okay. snacks. Well, so I was like, mm, no, uh, my cafeteria. I think you're thinking of the cafeteria. Yeah, where we you went. It. Yeah, no, we have crafty on set, really close to set most of the time. Okay. Yeah. I was like, oh, that would be interesting. You're talking about the snack bar, like the little like trailer that has all the. No, it's crafty. It's just a table on set with like nutritious bars on it. My favorite part of getting to work movie sets is oh, yeah. they have like a little I love when they like have the trailer, yeah. Oh, those gosh. are the legit ones. This one was like stupid cheap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they look great. <laughs> Let's all have a, a laugh about the shitty craft services on the film set where a woman died. You f fucking heartless monsters. Like, that's what this comes out to. Did you think this was funny? Did you think the most important thing was the quality of the food on this fucking set? Oh. They barely let her make soup for us. They barely let her make soups for us, and she had to fight hard for the soup. I called Becca the soup angel. She fought hard for those soups. <laughs> Um, did you ever see safety bulletins? Um, where would they be posted, I wonder? Um, you know, sometimes they would put some things in the call sheet, you know, like some safety bulletins and everything. 
Do you remember what they said? Um, I think they would pertain to COVID. They would pertain to, you know, like f firearms on set. They would pertain to live animals. Uh, yeah, it's usually kind of like in red on the call sheet. Okay. Other than that, they would sometimes in an email, yeah. like, put it in red, like, anything you needed to know about the day. I mean, I'm not worried about them cutting corners on the craft services. I'm worried about them cutting corners by hiring an incredibly shitty armorer. Um. Oh, right, that's you! That's you! You're the shitty armorer. Oh. Oh. Breathe. Have a sip. Again, rebuttal close. Bowls during this interview, then sit down. Um, yeah. Oh. Do you still have those emails? I, have, I think I might have some of those emails still. Okay. Yeah. Do you want to yes, grab those? Yeah, because, sure. Mm -hmm. um, that's, you know, obviously. Steve, she's yeah. not an equity hire. She's okay, a nepotism yeah. hire. Who distributes... Because you guys get, would get call sheets the night before. Yeah. Right. Tim, Tim... I don't have... Um, I don't have closed captioning. I'm sorry. It's just we're stuck with what we've got. And the Zara usually sent them out. Okay. Yeah. What is his position? He is also an assistant director. Yeah, but she should know not to laugh. Where he is never on set and his only job is sitting in the office and creating these schedules and doing all the paperwork. So he's normally out. Um, yeah, he's normally never on set, that poor boy. All right. Who would you say is in charge of the safety meetings that were being held? Dave. And then uh, the first time we did it, he let me speak. Um, yeah. And I told people, you know, like, these are regular weapons we have on set. Don't stand in front of them. Don't point them at anybody. And then after that, the only other one we had was the day of, and Dave kind of just covered most of that. Okay. Do you remember what you talked about today? Not entirely. He just told everybody, like, you know, we do have, like, blanks on set. We are going to have a... Yeah, this is the thing. Every ounce of credibility Bowles worked so hard to earn with the jury is now shot to hell. The jury is judging Bowles for this. They're judging him as the defense lawyer. And when he gets up to do the big close, because he did a great open, when he gets up to do the big close, they're going to be going, you're that fuck who is laughing. Ooh. 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 A lot of gunfire today, real guns on set, no one touched them, you know, okay. and things like that, and also things about the horses, he told. When did you host the safety meeting? I never hosted one all by myself. She did. What did you say that he let you do it, though? He let me hop in on his. Okay. Yeah, he said, Hannah, do you have anything else to add? And I said, yeah. And I said, let's be safe, you know, like, no one be standing in the way of these things, and just, like, don't be, if it's pointing in that direction, don't stand in front of it. Okay. Do you remember what day that was? Like? <laughs> that was the first day we had gunfire on set, which I believe was the second day that uh, we started uh, on set uh, filming. Okay. So yeah. So what do you teach um, actors or crew members when it comes to gun safety? So it really um, also depends on the actors too. You know, like big ones like Nick Cage, if they tell me, if, or if they tell the director like, you know, they, that they don't really care to do it, Simple I can try to teach lawyer. them for the most part, but like a lot of the times they might not even listen to me or really pay attention or be on their phone. Alec was on his phone a lot of that entire thing. But for the most part, uh, they... Alec was on his phone for a lot of the... You know what you do? You pull that strong personality and you say, get your fucking phone into your pocket or out of the room because I am teaching you how not to kill somebody with a gun, you giant sack of grease. I don't care if you're the lead actor. On my film set, you know, with my guns, you pay the fuck attention. Um... Oh, oh my God. It put me in training this time. It was pretty irregular how I trained actors this time. This time they put nine people all together in one day okay. that I was supposed to train. And during this time, they put a ton of producers right there. Normally I train the actors one-on-one. -on -one. It makes them feel comfortable. It allows them to not be distracted and everything. And this time they had me training three people at once. And so you say no. You say I'm doing it one at a time. This is your job. Break out that strong personality you've been telling us about. And um, a ton of producers oh, behind she's me. Oh, a name dropper. There too. The producers are talking to the actors. The actors were distracted even, too. Um, and I tried to do my best to work with all three of them. I worked with Jensen. You could probably see a video of him saying, like, 
she showed me, like, this is how you check it, you know, this is how we make sure it's safe. So I try to do that standard same thing every time, show them how to check their own gun and show them how to make sure it's safe. Um, <clears throat> and then I always talk, I have them draw it a few times, you know, with nothing in there, make sure that they have the draw down. Uh, usually a little before that, I'll have them, like, just fire off a couple of quarter loads, you know, so they can get the idea of not drawing it from their thing, but just holding it and firing it so they can get, so they can understand what they're going to be doing. Hmm, did you actually go over the safety shit? Like, okay, cool, learning to draw is great. What about safety? And then after that, we work on uh, the actions that they're going to specifically do. So, you know, if I know that they have a scene and everything, we kind of talk it out together and, like, how they would run, pull it out, what they could do, you know, how not to let it fall on the ground, how not to, like, let rocks get inside of it. Okay, yeah. that's useful. Mm -hmm. What about safety rules? Do you advise them any of those? Safety rules such as I tell them all the time uh, not to point them at each other. Uh, that's my biggest one, and I always say to everyone <laughs> in front of them, I'm like, if you don't have to be here, don't be here. You know, um, other than that, safety-wise, um, I tell them to keep their finger out of the trigger guard unless they're ready to shoot, because that's how a lot of um, accidental discharges will happen. And that's just what my dad's told me, at least. So I always try to... That's just what my dad's told me, at least? Really? You don't know for yourself that that's a big issue? Keep your booger hook off the bang switch is a common line. Like, um, would it work for defense to argue that she's far too stupid to do this job and the first, uh, people who hired her should have known, so it's their fault? The thing is, if you take the job and you're too stupid to do the job, you're on the hook for the job. Um, mm. And it can't, you can't argue that she's too stupid because she's doing this interview because the lawyer's there too. Yeah, and this is a very real possibility. Bullion could have told her that they were sunk, they're done, told her to plead, and she fired him. It is possible. We, we'll never know. Um, Advise them to keep their finger out of the trigger guard, and yeah. Okay. Um, besides you, were there any other trained armorers on the set? Mm -hmm. Sarah was kind of trained by Seth. Yeah. I believe Sarah did a show before, and I think that there were two guns involved in the show. And Seth had trained her personally for that. Okay. And then I also kind of showed her what to do at the beginning of it to make sure that she wouldn't have an accidental discharge. I can't but claim credit for booger hook, folks. That um, that's so a, a gunny thing. Um, gun scene, even just like rehearsal or filming or anything of sort, did they do a brief? Uh, you know, sometimes sometimes they would have time to like really go into it and everything and like kind Forms, of yes. you know work out the action. Sometimes they would do like an overall one. This you know, where they kind of just say like bang, 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 bang. So we did have some rehearsals. Sometimes you know there wasn't always rehearsals. Okay. So sometimes, yeah, we totally had, like, rehearsals, usually the big ones, and we just kind of have people go bang, 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 bang. All right. uh, this was testified to by uh, the lead grip, Heisenberg. Um, it's also something I've heard from a lot of the, uh, like, a lot of the armorers I talk to. I'm like, what's your background? They're like, yeah, I was, you know, formal, uh, you know, former special forces or whatever the hell else, right? So, yeah. Um, so, yeah. Safety rules such as <laughs> head desk, yep. Um, as far as so what it's an opportunity with the show and tell <laughs> we brought out yeah um, pretty much everything right yeah we brought out every gun that we had that Seth gave to us and uh, the director really just wanted a lot of options for people especially because there are so many big names on this so he wanted to be sure that all the actors knew that it was possible for them to switch around with guns and not just because we had thought that they would look good with that gun doesn't mean that they were stuck with it okay so this, I saw some commentators, and I'm not trying to call anyone out, but saying, like, why are they having, like, a um, a gun smorgasbord? This is actually something that happens in film. Um, if you are somebody who is important enough to be caught, like, to be brought in for this, you may get the opportunity where they bring you in to choose a gun, right? To be like, what gun do you think goes with your character? And if you are in that position um, where um, if you're in that position, then yeah, um, you know you've kind of made it. You know you're kind of at a place where you've achieved some success. Um, it helps you sort of define who you are. You don't get to do this if you're like extra number 72. It's like, here you go. Here's the fake gun you get. Um, but when you are playing like the lead or like somebody else like that, you've got a character that's defined, they may say, which gun do you want? Um, 
And, you know, how does it feel in your hand? How does all of this? So this is this is something that happens, right? You you get you might get to pick. Um, it would be really cool. I will never be in that position, right? Um, um, can you go into a little bit more detail about how this day played out? Like, where did you guys set up this table? Okay. And yeah. So the day played out. Um, we go to the edge of the town and everything, uh, away from all the people working on the other side. Um, they set up a table. They set up an easy up for us, and um, the prop truck was coming later that day. So that was finally the first day that we got Council. to get the prop truck going. I brought. How long does she go into the day? <laughs> Council. How long is this going to be? Because uh, at this point, they're starting to run at like 4.40. And the judge is like, mm, really? Yeah, Nick, I said quick recap when before these videos were going on. Because these videos are the trial. Um, so yeah, 10 actors got, got to choose. And then we had to rent rubbers with them for the stunts. And those are what is listed and what we have set up as a named character. Yep. Um Ruckle, you get to pick yours at the shop. I do, but, um, yeah. Um, so, I don't know. I mean, I think it would be cool to be some random figure in a movie. It's not a reasonable goal, but it's kind of a cool idea. Um, renting rubbers doesn't sound sanitary. Rubbers for gun, like for a film set, is just a gun that is entirely made of rubber, right? It's, it's not supposed to look real except from a, a distance. Um, but you know, when you see, like when you see the camera pa pan by like 50, you know, terrorists with AK-47s, they're not all rocking real AK-47s, right? They're rocking fakes. Um, because you don't want to have to worry about 50 real AK-47s on a film set. You give them rubber guns, right? So. I'm sorry, I don't recall. Was it more than 20 minutes? Let's let's break so that we can have this uninterrupted what went on in the day. I also just want to say um, she's starting to look real rough, uh, the prosecutor. And I don't mean that as like a, a criticism. I just mean she's working so fucking hard. Uh, she is she does eight. Um, you know, she's doing an eight hour day in trial. And then she's doing more work than I am on these recaps for prepping for the next day. She's working so hard and she's going to, she's going to feel like shit through this whole trial. By the end of this trial, she's going to be just, you know, it's going to feel like the scene from Princess Bride of like, you know, I've, you know, I, you know, I've just drained 10 years of your life. Um, that's what these trials are like. Um, Seth Kenny is the ace up her sleeve. They've been doing a lot to take care of that ace. Um, so we'll have to see. Um, so we'll have to see. And I'm told I can run this to describe what we're dealing with. This is pigeon business. Yeah. And, and, and just just to be clear, I think what she's talking about is the day of the show and tell. Is, oh. that, is that your understanding, Corporal? Yes. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I thought it was the day of October 21. Uh, I don't believe so. Okay, thank you. Yeah, so the judge didn't want to break up the day of, you know, um, the day of the shooting. Yeah, trial is exhausting. You don't eat well, sleep much, and it's incredibly stressful. Then there are cameras. I mean, when I say she's looking rough, I'm not trying to make fun of her, right? I'm not trying to be critical or anything like that. I'm just trying to point out just how much of a death slog this is and how I've got some sympathy for her and sympathy for the defense lawyers in the same boat. So, yeah. Do you want me to keep going or you want to break? No, we'll keep going. Okay. Sorry. The gun safe in my tiny Honda I fit it in there. And so I had that with me right next to us and I kept all the ammunition in my trunk and everything. And I kept, and Sarah had all of the guns in her trunk. And so we took all those guns out of the trunk we put them on the table. We had two tables, so we had two tables filled with long rifles, short guns, Seriously? a lot of guns. Um, and then also, once the oh. show and tell was over, um, Joel was she pretty cool and happy tired. with everything. Yep. Um, after that was over, he stuck around, and then, like, I think the first I love it, Sally. I love it. For training and everything, because I remember they said, like, okay, you're going to have, like, three at this time, and, like, three here and three there, and I was like, all right, like, that's kind of manageable. 
and it is kind of manageable, you know, and it definitely I've worked with two at a time before. Three is manageable, but like also then all of a sudden with the actors, all these producers came, like a ton of producers. And so the producers are just kind of behind us the whole time. The guns are out there. We put a lot of them away that we didn't need for the training that day. So Sarah put a lot of those away and we just kept those in my car because I had the safe and ultimately I was going to put them in the safe at the end of the day. Um, and then so the actors came, we started training and everything. And then all of a sudden a producer just like jumps into the training because I guess he was also firing, but they didn't schedule him for me. So at one point I was training four people at one time, which is a little chaos. So you're not in charge of your own training? What the fuck? Um, um yeah, so, so I'm there. Them, sorry, but when you had them all out on the table, how many people would you say were there, like, max at a time that were... Emily is always ten, rocking nothing. it. Ten, and, like, not everyone was really allowed to mess with them. You know, like, a couple producers, like, would ask if they could touch them. Ultimately, I always get pissed at people if they touch them without my permission. Okay. Joel, I let do that. You know, Joel is the director. He can touch them. Um, but, yeah, other... Wait, Joel's allowed to touch the guns without your permission? What the fuck? No... And yeah, trial is like a marathon. If you aren't doing them regularly, you're out of shape for it. COVID kept everyone out of trial, so this may be your first trial in years. I doubt it's her first trial in years, but um, yeah. I don't know why a producer was shooting. I don't know anything. It's just... Uh, I see the officer is just sitting there going doop de doop waiting for this to finish. No. Let's talk about why there's two officers in there. There's a second officer, and his job is just to listen, right? Is just to... You know, he doesn't have to do any of the question work. He just sits there and observes because he then can go and, like, tell the, in, like, the actual questioner can say, hey, um, what, you know, what, uh, you know, you should have asked this. Like, you can ask this now, right? Um, on some really high profile, um, yeah. So, you know, EDB gives a flash sensitive warning before code red. We need one for pigeon business. RIP, my favorite shorts. And then a cat emoji. I've heard cats do not like pigeon business. Um, yeah, they watch for body language. If you, um, if you ever watch the questioning for like, um, a serious murder trial, I've watched a questioning that went on for 16 hours. And you know how they do a questioning for 16 hours? They have cops that rotate through. They have cops that rotate through. Somebody's in the back room watching, and they, they swap in. So there's always, yeah. Not most people were there, and most people would be like, wouldn't even so touch them. Yeah, good, like, 10 producers were there. Okay. Yeah. And I the think they told her to leave the, the pocket bullets and at eventually, home. like, they left with kind of everybody. Okay. And then yeah. towards the end of it. So at the beginning of the day, I was supposed to train six, uh, and then I had an hour-long break, you know, um, and I think I was there from like nine to like two or eight to, yeah, nine to two, just training actors pretty much the entire time um, and doing the show and tell. And then so I trained six of them then, and then plus that producer that they threw in there randomly. And then after that, an hour went by, and I trained Devin, and I trained Miller. And yeah, and the last guy didn't show up. Okay. Who yeah. was the producer that you trained? Nathan. Okay. Do you remember the last name? Mm. Didn't show up. Did he still get to use guns? Because, ooh. Um, yeah. Um, and Hannah acts as if she still has a career and a life in this interview. I wonder if she realizes how much her life is about to change. Prison life will be tough. I mean, she's not going to be there that long. But I actually think that... Um, I've heard that she thinks she's still going to be able to be an armor after this. That she's hoping that she can get back into it. I don't know if that's true. It's just what I've heard, but I've heard she thinks she can be an armorer again, and that is never going to happen. No, not really. He was on set a lot. He was like a nice, uh, nice younger one, kind of. Okay. How long would you say you spent with each group training? Uh, with each actor, probably like mm, 30, 20 minutes okay. or so. Yeah, usually I like to work with the actors one-on-one -on -one and get like a full 30 minutes to an hour in, you know, but that's just not how it went on this one. Who made that call? Uh, Gabri Gabrielle. Okay. Did she give you a time limit? She just put three people together. Like, she scheduled it like that, and she said they had other things to do and had other, you know, they had to go and do training with the Wranglers, and a lot of this training was like the day before. Yeah, they're like, ride a horse now, and now you get to shoot a gun, and like, yeah. You get to shoot a gun off the horse. Yeah, honestly, <laughs> it's crazy because a lot of the times they have actors start working with the horses like months in advance because you can grasp grasp the guns a little quicker than like a weird living animal and all that stuff yeah so yeah they 
if there's a horse person on that jury, they didn't like the weird living animal. But I mean, it's it's kind of accurate. Um, horses are dangerous, by the way. Horses injure more people on film sets than guns do. Um, blessed in Texas. Do you think her dad still supports her? I do. Um, apparently he's on her witness list, so we'll see. I'll be interested to see if Thel Reed gets up to testify. Then it have people training on horses well in advance for the theater, which I thought was pretty wild. And yeah, that's not going to go well if somebody it. likes horses so on that jury. You know, we got Jensen in here. By the way, horse people really don't like if you're dissing horses. They really don't like, yeah. So. When I found out that the gentleman who provided the horses for the set, I used to actually be a regular horse. Oh, really? Oh, That's fun. Isn't he so cute? His horses are terrifying. Yeah, no, the horses are scary. I, I called horses honestly, weird. I was trying to get out of Western because every Western horse always yep. kills me. Yeah. Well. I think not. Like, horses back up crazy. And like, nobody even said, like, not to walk behind the horses on us. I was like, Sarah, Sarah. I was like, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> like, you know, I was just like, the complete lack of just like, yeah. Yeah, I used to wrangle for him. Yeah, let's all have a laugh about... No, stop laughing. Yeah, I love Rally. He's, he's a sweetheart, but yeah, the horses are bad. But honestly, like, it's been a long time since I've been able to work with any really good horses because I have been doing independence. You know, no one can afford, like, the good horses that Magnificent 7 had back when I was there in 15, you know. Well, he used to do all kinds of, like, trail rides and stuff like that, too. But, I mean, he, I can tell you, like, because he goes, when they do trail rides, they go, you know, that mountain that goes across on it, down at the end of Bonanza. Oh, yeah. yeah. So he used to take the horses up that mountain. Yeah. And I just remember one day he put me on a on a uh, thoroughbred that came off the track in there and like sh shoe hot, shoe hot work. Yeah, so he like slightly drugged her up before oh, wow. this trail ride. Yeah, and, like I remember a couple of the horses, <laughs> she was off in her own world, we'll just say that. Oh, yeah, fair. a couple of the horses got loose on this. One like made a full ass run for it like wow. three times during one scene. Uh, they did their best they could to catch it and eventually they started catching Okay, Why are you talking about the, the horses? Um, remember this is what, uh, a couple more hours on this maybe? Less, less than a couple, I'm sorry, less than a couple, but we've still got quite a ways to go. Okay. Um, so that, if I can judge, just for the record, we stopped this redacted video at one hour and five minutes. Okay, so we will uh, carry this on tomorrow. Uh, this will be what we uh, queue up with. Please don't talk among yourselves or anyone else about the evidence received here in court. Don't do any research. Don't look up the, 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 the movie set or this case or anything. Thank you. Have a good evening. See you at 8.30 downstairs. All rise. Now, there is one other fun moment that I skipped over. Um... And I'm not going to go find it, but um, she tells them that uh, people can have coffee on set <laughs> or on the not on set in the courtroom. So we find out that uh, coffee has been permitted. Um, that was fun. Um, Marbled Cat says, I stood up to my abusive boss many times on safety issues and refused to break IBC protocols. It would be my career on the line if someone got hurt. Absolutely. That is the way to be. Um, also, I wanted to show you guys what. Canada looks like right now. Um, let me see if I can show you guys Canada. Um, or at least Edmonton. Uh, all right. Is this the video? I think this is the video. Video. I'm just going to pause. So. Yeah. Um. Does that look like fun? Does that look like um, does that look like an enjoyable uh, thing to be in? <laughs> it's pretty, but um, yeah. Um, my wife and I stopped at a restaurant to eat, and we had to dig our car out after uh, afterwards. So um, yeah, that um, that was not a lot of fun. All right. I got to go through some super chats and then I have to go and get some sleep because um, we're going to be at this again tomorrow bright and early and there's going to be more video and Hannah, like they're like, we're going to run the whole video of Hannah because Hannah is blowing herself up. Um, all right. So let's uh, let's do that. Uh, Janelle Silver, thank you for the YouTube membership. Much appreciated. Uh, Bill, he's Momzilla. Thank you for five gifted memberships. Against the Tide says, make sure to like this stream and share and help him reach his pro bono goals. That is, I want to do YouTube for my income and freely, like legal work for free um, to help him reach his pro bono goals. Also, check out Ian's Roll of Law Gaming channel. Thank you so much. 
Manders 13, seems like every system in place around Helena failed her. Every one. Yeah, it kind of does. Powerpuff uh, Kitty, uh, thank you for the membership there. Uh, Perry Rush, catching up. Paramedic esophageal uh, intubation is an oh no. It could have been bloody AF and then and they couldn't see. Still, at uh, ETCO2 should have shown. Yeah. Um, Callista, not a gun person, isn't the size of a bullet written on the bottom of the casing. Usually, but not always. Wouldn't Hannah have been able to read that she uh, put the wrong bullet in this gun? Not always. Um, the head stamp doesn't always indicate. I don't know if these ones do. I'm um, pulling up my... Uh, yeah. Okay, these ones do. Um, not all do. Um, there are plenty that don't. So um, you can't be certain on that. Um, all right. Uh, Diehard HTTR, thank you for the new membership. Uh, Deb N, thank you for the membership. Uh, Lori Lenny, if you bump up Runkle subs, some of us may gift. Thank you, Lori Lenny. Um, Rainman YYC, thanks for the disabled ads. Thank you so much. Uh, James Copper, Runkle, will I see you tomorrow at the Clown Show Day 5? You will. Today was crazy. Can you say incompetence? Oh, so much in so much of a clown show. So much of it. Um, Dr. Reason would have a lot to say about the events leading up to the shooting. You should see if you can get him on for an, an interview. I I should. Um, I'm not sure how. Tell me you didn't take the five-hour challenge. I'm not sure what the five-hour challenge is, but if it involves like five hours of sleep, that's my kind of go-to. Um, are those cylinders filthy or aged? Filthy. Uh, the reason why is that blanks are really, really dirty. They they put a lot of gross crap out there. So, filthy. Um, Law and Lumber, thank you so much for the 20 gifted memberships. Rob was in the chat throwing around memberships. It's really appreciated. Thank you so much, Rob. Indy Cindy 01, thank you. Uh, Joe uh, W101, thank you for the super sticker. Much appreciated. Uh, Rachel Duick, celebrating fi finishing my gradual return to week this past weekend. That is awesome. Um, congratulations. So, Deb N, thank you so much. Uh, Charles Vance, welcome aboard. And same for Gromit Baby. And Charles Vance, thank you for the 10 gifted memberships. Much appreciated. Um, Regina Crawford, uh, first time viewer, uh, heard amazing things about you. I hope I lived up to the hype. Um, I hope, I hope. Um, I don't know. <laughs> Tess, thank you so much. It's much appreciated. Um, Tiffany Bernie, was her hotel ever searched? If not, uh, she'd get a not guilty from me. Obviously, she needs to pass uh, for blow just in case she gets searched. Seems normal. Um, I don't know if they searched her hotel. I'm not sure. Uh, Ay vamos. Uh, thank you for the five gifted memberships. And that looks like a New Mexico uh, sort of starburst. Is that what that is? So thank you so much. Uh, my baffled brain waits. They could have uh, could have blocked due to hearsay. So does this mean the defense thinks this is nothing? I'm confused. Thanks for the recaps, Logalus. That was with regards to the text messages. The critical text messages would have still gone in, but then it would have been confusing to the jury. So I think that the defense probably found that it was better to admit the non-critical stuff along with it, just to sort of yeah. Uh, watch with EDB. Do recap with you. Thank you so much. I'm watching with EDB. I'm watching. I'm during the day. I'm watching several streams. I'm watching EDB. I'm watching Danny. I'm watching uh, Recovery Addict. I'm watching all sorts of things. So yeah, um, five hour challenge was beating the length of yesterday's stream. As you nearly made five hours last night. We're at five hours and two minutes. So we have beat it. Um, Megan T, welcome aboard. Thank you. Uh, Debbie Childers, said to you from Megan Fox. Glad to meet you. Glad to meet you too. Um, Lori and Lenny, if you're green, you don't get slow mode. Like and sub. And Ivamos, welcome aboard. Good to see you. Uh, Hannah G, thank you so much for the super sticker there. Much appreciated. Powerpuff Kitty for the pro bono fund. I really appreciate your expert coverage on this case and your general coverage in general. Thank you so much. Uh, Nicholas Starro, I had an idea of her contract being her saving grace, but her attorney allowed her to talk uh, to, for hours to the cops, so that's out the window. Yep, major blunder. A snowy hello from Prince George Runkle, actual snow, sending some love to your community and Law and Lumber. Thanks for your time and analysis. Thank you so much, JJ. Vomit Fountain, that's a concerning username. Thank you for the uh, welcome aboard. 
just maybe not on the carpet. Um, Perry Rush, to be fair, Santa Fe and Albuquerque both get snow. I still see snow from my house outside of Albuquerque as well as see it in Santa Fe. Just saying, elevation is 5,200 to 8,500 feet. Don't ask me meters. Sorry, I'm lazy. It's all good. Um, fair. I might have been making an assumption there. Best wishes and support to your channel. Love headphones uh, to you from Britain. Thank you so much. Uh, from the UK, I guess. Uh, Nicholas Starro, great visualization for the jury to see how it actually how it's actually supposed to happen compared to what they saw Miss Hannah Gutierrez redo it. I think that's going to be incredibly effective. Uh, Blessed in Texas, thank you for the gifted membership, and same from Camilla. Uh, Alicia Vasquez, enjoying your coverage, Runkle. Thank you so much. Uh, Lori Lenny, how many until we flip to 257k, Runkle? Have you liked? Um, I, I don't know. I don't know how many. Um, I guess maybe I could pull that up. How many am I at? Um, my computer is now deciding to be slow. We are at 257K. We binged. Um, that's awesome, chat. We binged. Um, let me see where we're at. Uh, Bella V, thank you for the new membership. Or is it Bella 5? I'm not sure. Uh, Aaron Olivia, I'm loving your recaps. Keep it up. I'm going to be doing a recap every day that I can. Um, Terry Jones, where was this guy when JFK was assassinated? I don't know. <laughs> Angela Eric Newman, what was probably the worst part of today for Gutierrez? Gutierrez was the worst part of today for Gutierrez. It's not even close. Um, Amy Miller, uh, Niall, what would be your number one question for him if he... Uh, if uh, if, if oh good have said uh, beer or range time I, I might just ask him what his favorite gun is I'd be curious um, and range time would be fun uh, Pamela Weisenbach I waited all day for your analysis of this guy thank you so much um, Laura Law and Lumber thank you for the 10 gifted memberships Shiraz this is the level of care that was expected of her which is not much I'm guessing Regina Crawford thank you so much for the membership uh, Roro, thank you for joining up. Uh, Blessed in Texas, so this witness verified Alec pulled the trigger into full cock and pulled the trigger. Yes, yep. And he was last in line of defense to check the gun. I think this the, that was the gunsmith uh, or the gun expert. He's real bad for, for Alec Baldwin. Real bad. Um, and he's going to be there for Alec Baldwin. Like, he's absolutely going to be there for Alec Baldwin. So, yep. Uh, inquiring mind, thank you for the membership. Much appreciated. Uh, JFLA Beats, or JFLA Beats uh, 1. No upstairs if this is the main courthouse. Could have upstairs in one of the courthouses in Santa Fe, but he did check and recheck. Yep. Um, Creek, he kept my attention so easy. Really liked this witness and was so thankful this wasn't like Murdoch Trial and Firearms. Murdoch Trial firearm experts were rough to sit through. Rainman YYC, this is why, or that's why brass is preferred for casings. They expand but spring back in at least part of the way. Yep. Sarah, who came up with these terms for guns? Some of them are metallurgy terms like peen, um, cock. I don't know where that came from. Yeah. Uh, Ann Bell Feinstein, I found one and only one movie that used live ammo on set. Act of Valor, that movie had real U.S. Navy SEALs. They aren't reckless with firearms. Still concerned about actors. KVB confirmed this. Yep. Um, I don't think that they could do it that again. Uh, Jeff, JFLA beats. Substantial blows will do that to you. Yep. Um, Kathy Trout. Is that like a circumcision? When they beat the full cock off? Yeah, I guess. Um, Ricky uh, Lomendahl. Thank you so much for joining up. Uh, I, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right or if it's Ricky or something along those lines. Perry Rush, uh, one crazy cat. I may be 12, but you have cooties. <laughs> uh, Vez from Quebec, always knew the gun was a phallic symbol. I, I'm going to resist the urge to go on a side rant because... Um, okay, I'm not going to resist the urge. So, I hate the phallic symbol versus whatever because Freud was not exactly... You'll hear this from people who are professing to be feminists, and it is not a feminist mode of thinking. Because Freud defined a phallic symbol as basically any weapon or tool. So any tool or weapon is inherently a phallic symbol. Because Freud really thought that useful things go into the men category. Because Freud was a sexist motherfucker. Um, 
Now, what did he decide were female symbols? Well, containers, buildings, doorways, windows, anything you put something into or through. Because Freud was a sexist motherfucker, and that's how he saw women. So, yeah. Um, I rant every time somebody who's trying to make, like, a feminist point goes, that's a phallic symbol. I'm like, mm, you're kind of borrowing some really sexist crap here. Yeah. Um, in the words of the Marines, this is my rifle, this is my gun, this is for fighting, this is for fun. Yep. So, yeah. If you squeeze it enough, it shoots. So, kinda, yeah. Um, Lori Lenny, thank you for the gifted memberships. Uh, Christina B., there are all metalworking terms, very common. Yep, the peen and so forth. Uh, I guess you could say it was circumcised. Oh, God. <laughs> That's a horrible dad joke. Uh, blessed in Texas, uh, Hannah should be as serious... Uh, as gun safety expert, she's so unprofessional. Yeah. Um, I mean, he took it seriously. And she just blew things, like, she just blew it off in the uh, in the interview. Lisa Dury, thank you so much for the gifted memberships. Uh, Wendy Wilkinson, tool marks and filed down. Another safety issue. Um, yeah, except that they found that it was in perfectly fine condition originally. Just because, I will say today is the closest I've come so far to guilty based on the interviews, but knowing Seth Kenny recommended her for the job makes me want him on the hook as well as all higher-ups. I mean, you can want that. He's just not on trial today. Um, Jillian Ryan, thank you for the 10 gifted memberships. Much appreciated. Uh, Danielle W., how much more dirty talk will we get today? I'm starting to feel like I owe you 99 cents a minute. <laughs> Uh, Lady Draconis, I went into this with believing that she and Baldwin had an equal level of liability for HH death. I'm now in the everyone sucks here crowd, not just Baldwin and Tana. Add production crew to that. Fair enough. Um, Kathy, crew, or Kathy Trout, thank you for the gifted memberships. Uh, Rob Smith, can't stay up for this tonight, but I want to desperately hear what you have to say about the reloader from today. I'll catch it tomorrow, I guess. Um, I, I like the, uh, the, the gun expert. I really liked him. He was a good good guy so yeah i thought he did excellent um sf in texas uh uh honoring rob's request and sending in some love thank you so much and rob thank you for the five gifted memberships i owe you man <laughs> bug dugger thank you for five gifted memberships um blessed in texas yes law and lumber baldwin should be afraid but i want baldwin on the stand humiliated he needs it he deserves it he's loudmouth gun control man I don't think Baldwin's going to testify at his trial. Or he might. Maybe he's dumb enough to do that. But um, he's he'd be a fun cross-examination. He'd be a fun cross-examination. So, hmm. I have questions. Thank you for the gifted memberships. Much appreciated. Uh, Regina Crawford, I watch with uh, Recovery Addict during the day, but I miss a lot due to work. Really appreciate the recap. Glad to have you here. Uh, Renee Smitley, thank you for the membership. Uh, Luna Dewdrops, thank you as well. Uh, Law and Lumber, Baldwin, my finger wasn't on the trigger. Video, fingers on trigger. Expert testimony, no possible way not on trigger. This is going to be brutal. Baldwin's trial is going to be fun. Uh, Bridget Oster, thank you for the membership. Troublemaker Baker, <laughs> thank you for the membership. And it looks like there's the thumbnail is some baked goods there. I, I'm guessing Troublemaker's got a channel. Go check that out. Uh, Lori Lenny has five gifted memberships. Much appreciated. Sarah, can't wait to impress my Marine partner with how many gun terms I learned today. Um, I don't know. If you go up and talk to your Marine partner about wanting to peen the cock, um, he might might think you're looking into other things. So, yeah. Um, Rob, thank you for five gifted memberships. Thank you so much. It's unnecessary, but thank you. James C., all good, Ian. I'm glad I caught you in the chat. Glad you're here. Uh, JFLA beats, never talk to the police without your attorney. And your attorney should say, don't talk to them even with me here. Um, yeah, Jeremy Morton, remember, every day should be shut the fuck up Friday. Yeah. Uh, Bug Duggar, thank you for five gifted memberships. Thank you. Uh, Lisa BS, I think in the case of ProSec versus Tech, Tech wins. Um, prosecution versus technology, yeah. Um, prosecution's been struggling with that. 
Jeremy Morton, thank you for the 10 gifted memberships. Really appreciated. April Lovelace, love all of your videos, but really appreciate these recaps. You make everything understandable. I try. Um, I think the law should be accessible. I think everybody should be able to enjoy and understand the law. So that's what I try to do. Uh, Susan Lynn, thank you for the super sticker. Much appreciated. True Crime Junkie, the OG. Police are not your friend. I yell that often. It's true. Uh, Dylan Schultz, Canada allows the Mr. Big Sting, which is illegal in the U.S. and Europe. It involves an undercover cop pretending to be a crime boss. Yeah, the Mr. Big Sting is really ugly. It's really horrible. So, yeah. Um, love the way you law tubers support one another. I mean, a lot of us are friends. We just like being around each other, right? We like all of that. So, uh, Dina Kawaji, thank you for the five gifted memberships. Much appreciated. Uh, Jamie F., thank you for the super sticker. Much appreciated. Uh, Roro, thank you for the five gifted memberships. Optimistic Cloak, one is too many, but how many live found, rounds were found? I think it was six, um, which is insane. Regina Crawford, am I under arrest? Do I need an attorney? Am I free to go? Yep. James C., look up Pam Hupp case where she tried unaliving herself in the police station. She has to be watched due to fear of this. Yeah. Um... Rainman YYC, thank you for the five gifted memberships. Much appreciated. Megan Brogdon, I love watching Emily, then watching your recaps. The two perspectives on the same content really makes me think about the case more critically, especially being from Australia and not familiar with uh, firearms. Start gifting, Rob. <laughs> the other thing I like is, you know, Emily and I agree about a lot of things, but Emily is a prosecutor, right? She's a former prosecutor. And so we've got a different perspective. And sometimes I can be a little more critical of defense and sometimes i've seen emily be a little more critical of the prosecution because we each are like i know what you're screwing up um it's really good to have those sort of different views and it's good to see people with like criminal law experience for these things because a criminal trial is different than a civil trial um there's different principles that apply so um yeah um so hit the like button from Snagglepuss. Uh, hit the like button to support Runkle on the daily. <laughs> well, thank you. Uh, Rob Smith, an armorer or any crew can always pack up and leave. Yep. And she could have and should have. Um, so a smiley face, cowboy area uh, era microphone. It is awful. Yeah. <laughs> for referring to the sound quality. Canonical Heat, thank you for the 20 gifted memberships. Much appreciated. Um, big supporter of Canonical Heat. I really appreciate it. Uh, Charles Vance, getting a Miranda warning could be assigned to STFU. Yep. Custodial interrogation activated. Yep, you're getting a Miranda warning. You should not be talking. Caitlin Moore, all this interview told me is that Hannah's pr uh, prop assistant, whose first armor job went catastrophically because of low support and production standards. And she let it happen. Like, that's the thing. Uh, law and Lumber, U.S. law, you have to affirmatively decline uh, questions and assert your right to counsel. That I can probably answer a few questions is consent. Yep. And her having her lawyer there is like, well, you didn't say shit. Um, and Jafla beats one if she's convicted. This is why. Yep. Um, I watched a lot of people change their mind from from seriously going in the chat, going like, Runkle, what the fuck is wrong with you? Saying that she should be convicted to, oh my God, throw her in jail. Right. I, I watched that, you know, a bunch of people change their mind there. To be fair, she did worse with her attorney, in my opinion. I think she did terribly with her lawyer there. Uh, was there motion in lemonade, uh, motion in lemonade uh, to for this to be squashed? I don't know. I don't actually think if she. I don't know if she tried to throw out her interview. So, yellow pill, uh, 23, 24 years old. I was ignorant AF of how manipulative law enforcement can be. Doesn't excuse her actions on set, but we're not that taught that at school. Um, I think that we should be. Um, and you know who always lawyers up and doesn't give a statement when they get arrested? Police. Police know. And, you know, this isn't a criticism. It's just they're smarter than your average bear because they they know what it's about, right? They know what it's about. So, yeah, and I like this. Uh, I watch you, Rob, Peter, Kurt, Scott, Danny, and Emily sometimes. I love you all. Each is a slightly different view. All explain well. That's the thing. We we just, we all have different takes. And sometimes I watch different takes. Um, during the um, 
during the Gwyneth Paltrow trial. Uh, me and Peter, lawyer you know, were both covering it um, in some detail. And I watched some of what he was doing because I was like, am I right about this? You know, and we didn't always agree. Um, so we've got different takes. We've got different biases, right? So nobody thinks clearly 100% of the time. Uh, James Kupfer, uh, the statements that this officer is leading Hannah into an interview is another tactic that is used by officers to elicit the despised response. Um, yeah, I mean, she said some stuff that the jury's going to hate. Mary Coppola, these interviews make me mad or make me sad and angry because she had no business being hired to do this job. Hence, more blame to go around, especially Baldwin, in my opinion. She took the job. She agreed to do the job. And she agreed to do a job she couldn't do safely. Um, you're on the hook. Um, I can tell you that if I agreed to be an armorer on a film set without sufficient knowledge of that, um, of how to do it, I would have, there'd be no, like, that's not a defense. Uh, in Canada, if you applied Canadian law to this shooting, she and Baldwin would both be easy convictions. Um... Oh, that earlier super chat was from Australia and Australian dollars. Well, all right. Um, thank you. This does not sound like someone who's concerned about the safety issues and unable to override their boss. Yep. She talks about how she's a strong personality. I was waiting all day on EDB to take see your take on this. Oh, I was waiting to give my take on this. I was like, mm. Charles Vance, like the grip said, the armor should be the biggest anal retentive on set. How did this kid ever get in to get the position? That's the real fail. Yep, but she volunteered to be on the hook. Law and Lumber, if I'm prosecution, this is the second to last witness. One more summary witness and then defense. Ouch, what a way to end. Defense, good luck. I think they've got at least two. I think they're going to call something for the cocaine, and then I think they're going to end on the armor. And the armor is going to say all of the things that Hannah did wrong, and then done. I think that's that's how that's going. Why Nepo babies are a problem. Yeah, Nepo Baby got somebody killed. Charles Vance. If someone did want to sabotage the production, they had the perfect armor to dupe. That's the thing is, the armor should be the person who could catch sabotage. So, Tamara Jane, it would be interesting to know how much the jurors know about guns and if they can comprehend it all. Um, there's going to be somebody in that room who knows guns, but hopefully the prosecution's explaining it. FYI, prosecution doesn't care about the tampering charge. The only reason that's there is uh, so the prosecution can bring in drugs. Shady, but the judge allowed it. I think the prosecution is going to be asking for a conviction on the tampering charge to rack up the sentence. Um, so, yeah. Uh, Emily, thank you for the YouTube membership. Welcome aboard. Uh, Mary Coppola, she was coked up that day. She gave her plastic bag of coke to someone, help, and she's wiping her nose from powder. Yeah, it's possible. Wendy Wilkinson, armor expert, needs to be next to juxtapose this. I think they're going to have the armor expert last. That's going to be my bet. Uh, JF Lay Beats, um, I once had a traumatic experience that had me in tunnel vision. I could barely walk or talk. Could explain why she's speaking weirdly. It could, but it's a reason not to give a statement. Uh, law and Lumber, sorry, tampering charges and enhancement. My bad. Yep. Um, so they're, they're going to use it for pushing the sentence up. Nancy A, I think she used her super cool fanny pack for personal shooting also. I think she had leftover rounds in there. She pulled that sixth round from it. It's possible. Um, it's possible. Katrina Turner, this is why I think the safety people, and that includes the armor on a film set, should not be on the payroll of the production. They should be independent or part of the state regulatory body. Uh, maybe. Um, Kaylee H, imagine there was a random live round in there. Of, on the stuff that she was playing on the table? Yeah. Previous test said last time was blank, not popper. Yep. Uh, Cielo, thank you for the five gifted memberships. Much appreciated. Uh, Lady Draconis, let the spice flow. Channel your inner snark. I've got a lot of snark. James Copper, what the F? Or what the fuck? Whose responsibility was it to search her before she went into an interview room? And why are the police completely okay with it? She could have had a knife in there, right? Um... This knife is smaller than that pouch of ammo that she had. Um, so, you know, cop doesn't appreciate it if you got a small knife, uh, you know, in there. So, yeah. Uh, Charles Vance, any chance one of the rounds she plopped on the table is a live one? 
We'll never... I don't know. I don't think they tested them. Tamara Jane still talking without a lawyer. Wow. Yep. But then she goes on to talk with a lawyer, and it's even worse. Chelsea Rama, uh, will you please explain what they mean by extractor? Are they trying to imply uh, Hannah Gutierrez Reed could have futzed with the cartridges? I'm an extractor, like, um, you know, they're talking about like a bullet puller to remove the, the bullet and allow you to take out the powder and so forth. Um, or or the they're talking about the extractor in a gun to eject spent cartridges. I'm not sure which that was. I'm a little behind. So, um, yeah, uh, I don't know which that one was. Um, I mean, that one, that gun doesn't have an extractor. So, yeah. About 36% of households in New Mexico own guns, which means it's a really good chance that somebody on that jury does. Um, so, Gracefully Insane, thank you for uh, joining up. Uh, Law and Lumber, thank you for the five gifted memberships. Much appreciated. Stacy LeBruno, thank you for joining. Thank you. Uh, JFLA Beats, most of this interview is making sure the dummy is a dummy. Uh, I think that's referring to Hannah. <laughs> Uh, Lane J, thank you for the five gifted memberships. Much appreciated. Um, Cad Monkey FPV, all this talk about dummies. The only dummy here is Hannah. Ooh. And I bet she does rattle if you shake her. Mackenzie, as a 24-year-old who grew up around guns, I can say this is disgraceful. Yep. Bambarina, you could see the moment her brain gear started chugging. One minute she knew nothing about any camera crew brief. The next they were so toxic. Yep. She does do a little gear shift there. Narcissistic, welcome aboard. Thank you for the membership. I love the uh, profile picture there. That So Sarah, uh, after all that, she still has not clued in to them focusing in on her. I have no idea why she didn't realize that she would be somebody they would go after, right? I just don't, yeah. Uh, bullet extractor from a cartridge. So yeah, it's probably, they're talking about a bullet puller. So something to remove the bullet from the uh, from the cartridge. Blessed in Texas, the opposite of hallelujah is damn it to hell. Fair. That seems sensible. Uh, Cynthia Kramer, Ian, you and Rob always say shut up and uh, get a lawyer. Why does her lawyer keep on letting her uh, talk? Um, I don't know. I think he really fucked that up. Chelsea Rama, Sarah's lawyer was constantly interrupting. Yeah. Um, do something about this tire fire. Elizabeth Slick, the biggest thing that bothers me is there were dummies that didn't rattle per the defense. So even if she rattled them, she wouldn't know. The thing is, is that if you have dummies that don't rattle, you don't put them into a gun. Like, if you can't tell for a 100% certainty that a dummy is a dummy, it does not go in the gun. Like, maybe this is a... If there's, like, this has a 5% chance of being a real cartridge, it doesn't go in the gun. I need that chance to be a definite, certain 0% of that going off. Or it doesn't go in the gun. Um, opposite of Hallelujah is Damn It to Hell. Thank you, Blessed in Texas. Uh, Sharon Cotter, welcome aboard. Thank you so much. Uh, Lisa Dury, I don't understand how she can be no, so nonchalant. You know who else is going to have questions about that? The jury. The jury is going to be like, you knew somebody died, right? Um, yeah. Whoops. And where was that? Uh, yeah. If you can't tell, it goes into a box to be disassembled. Yep. If I found one that I couldn't tell, I would probably be insisting I'm going to pull this right now. We're going to stop right now. I'm going to check that this, what the fuck this is. Uh, because I'd be very concerned because if I find one live cartridge on a film set and I'm an armorer, it's stop everything. Red alarm, like red alert. Oh my God. Um, yeah. Uh, Riley Lynn, I saw this one just come in. When you say she thinks she still has a career, does that imply she thinks she'll be found not guilty? Seems unlikely at this point. I think she thinks she's going to be found not guilty and that she's going to get film armor jobs again. Um, and I think that's crazy. Lori Lenny, thank you for the five gifted memberships. Much appreciated. Uh, the opposite of hallelujah is anathema. Fair. Uh, Mama Betts, do people think they can talk their way out all the time? People think they can talk their way out of trouble, and they only talk their way into it. Chelsea Rama, uh, her tone and body language here are brutal, nonchalant, almost to the point of seeming arrogant. I think it goes beyond that. I think she's well into arrogant. 
Judith Owen, thank you for the YouTube membership. Much appreciated. Charles Vance, any chance she has a cause of action for ineffective assistance of counsel from this? I don't think so. Ineffective assistance of counsel is such a high bar. Um, you know, you maybe get there if your lawyer is sleeping the whole time. And yeah. Um, Kathy Sawyer, thank you for the new membership. Much appreciated. Uh, B555, what's the explanation for lawyer switcheroos? We'll never know. Um, we're not going to find out why because that would be privileged. So we can make our guesses, but we're never going to know for sure. Uh, Jem or Jem, I think. I'm behind. Or Jamie. I, I might be Jamie. If you miss during intubation and it's placed in the stomach, you leave the tube in and insert another tube. The second tube goes into the trachea. You then pull the tube in, stomach out. Only two holes where it can go. I think they didn't realize, but I'm not certain. Tamara Jane, concealed carry is not required for an armor. No, they're they're different things. Uh, Bap, so at what point does her lawyer hear what she's saying and call a timeout on this interview? Never. <laughs> Morgan908, me too, Ian. I used to teach NRA safety and concealed carry classes. About a thousand percent more education, training, and experiences she's had. Yep. Jeremy Morton, everything she says, big and small, relevant to the shooting and not, is to say how she wasn't qualified to do this. Yep. Lisa B.S., lawyer yeeting, in my opinion, phone fuckery is the cause. Yeah, it might be because cause her phone number got leaked and it might be that she blames that guy. That that might be a possibility. So, um, you did call him the weekend at Bernie's lawyer. Uh, I did. Because it looks like I mean, a, a body dumped in that chair would do the same job. So, uh, Marvin DeBoat, thank you so much for the uh, the Australian dollar there. Uh, the Chugi Show Live, why did they hire her? Because several other people turned down the job and she was willing to do it knowing that the, all of the corners that they were cutting. So, Charles Vance, I wonder if this is a 3D chess move. Defense can say, see how stupid and naive she is? Rust production is the real problem here. They hired an idiot and now we're scapegoating her. It'd be a bold strategy, Cotton. Um, Lori Lenny, thank you for five gifted memberships. Much appreciated. We're working through our super chats as fast as we can here. Charles Vance uh, from Sharon Abbey. I know I'm here late, but as a medical of 45 years, how inexcusable it was that Helena was not intubated correctly twice. That's insane. Yeah. Um, Kathy at Oz, lawyers playing hangman with himself and losing. AKA the cat lady. Thank you so much. That's a very generous super sticker. Much appreciated. Chelsea Rama. Uh, what is it? Hannah tried to tell production. She needed more time or mistakes would happen. Also known as she knew it was dangerous, but she kept at it anyway. Infuriating. Yep. Bap. I think she believes she did well in this interview. She thinks she's representing her. Uh, well, she might not be very good at thinking. There's lots of things. I think she's not all that good at. Stacy W., thank you for the five gifted memberships. Uh, Steve Waldron, hey Ian, love the vids, man. Best attorney on YouTube. I don't know about that, but I appreciate the sentiment. Thank you. Rachel Duick, uh, she might as well have literally shot her foot. Yep. Charles Vance, this is like a lamb talking to some wolves about dinner. You betcha. Uh, Noor KD, uh, the too young thing is BS. As a Gen Z, we don't claim her. Frowny face, frowny face, frowny face. I agree. There's lots of people her her age who could have done the job just fine. Perry G, I'm waiting for a cardboard cutout attorney to flop over or like show some signs of life. Uh, Chelsea Rama, not excusing Hannah, but as first assistant director, Dave Hall should have demanded respect for Hannah on her behalf and shield her, her from Baldwin angst. Good first ADs protect their crew. I don't think anyone's going to disagree that he was not a good first AD. Uh, Bell Brat for you. Oh my God, did her lawyer say anything in this whole interview? Not much. Like, yes, she effed up, but who steered her in this direction? Yeah. Uh, Knox Fuse. Uh, I'm a little behind, but her lawyer is pro bono. Um, if so, she's getting better than she paid for, but not not necessarily a whole lot. Jeremy Morton. Why you let your talkative, cocky client have a chat with the police? Because crazy. Yellow Pill uh, says, did she go to her stepdad about any of this? I don't know. I'm, I mean... If you're having trouble, why not go to dad and say, hey, dad, help me. And um, yeah, and I see, yeah, a body dumped in the chair wouldn't have laughed. Yeah, that is true. Um, 
So M2 HM GHB, uh, when I graduated Hunter's Ed Firearms at 12, I was more qualified than Hannah Gutierrez Reed. I have definitely seen children on the range who have been more qualified than her. Law and Lumber says Bulls is a prop attorney during this interview. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Bella Brat for you. Thank you for the 10 gifted memberships. Much appreciated. Tomato Cheeks, can she or her lawyer get a copy of those interviews? They would. Um, they'd get a copy of everything the prosecution has. Law and Lumber, correction, a prop attorney here would have fired. <laughs> yes. Charles Vance, Bulls is dummied up. Seems, yeah. And Bell Feinstein, where can I apply to get paid as a prop lawyer? He didn't do much for whatever he got paid there. Creek, thank you for the five gifted memberships. Much appreciated. Rob, thank you for 20 gifted memberships. Oh, my God. Kelsey D, another four-hour stream. We are at five and a half now. Um, gear down, big rig. Fair enough. Um, I could get to sleep soon. So, uh, what is it? Riley Lynn, thank you for the five gifted memberships. Mama Meme, uh, these interviews are the reason jury finds guilty. Yep. Um, L'Enfant. Thank you for the for joining up. Much appreciated. Uh, Nilzan, uh, Nils Arne Dahlberg. I'm mangling that. Thank you for the uh, 10. Um, that's Swedish Krona, I think. So thank you. Uh, I got to figure out how to pronounce that. I'm sorry. Charles Vance, if I'm a juror, I'm thinking I don't want to be here either. You're the one person who could have prevented this killing. Yep. Stephanie, uh, Stephanie Coker. I found it odd that in the first interview, she said, I shoot 22s, not 45. And this one, she says, I wouldn't want to be there on the weekend. These seem like odd things to mention. Yeah, she was making jokes. It's a bad idea. And Bell Feinstein, my cat talks more than this lawyer. He works for chicken. Uh, Potter would express more opinions in this interview than he did. Um, I am working at landing the plane. I promised I would go through every super chat and we are going through every super chat. So the super chats we already covered, I've removed, but um, we got 32 more to go. Playing Deadpool's advocate, I have to laugh in highly stressful situations or I for sure would end up in jail or the mortuary. Yeah, just you got to be careful about, like, if you can't stop it, don't do a police interview. Bambarina, nervous giggler here. I messed up several disability interviews until I hired a lawyer who pointed out so I can be mindful of it. Yep, it, it can be a thing. Wendy Wilkinson, would the defense put Hannah Gutierrez on the stand now? I think they're likely to. Not guaranteed, but likely. I think that they are likely to, and yeah. The real reason the other lawyer had a fight with Hannah is he finally saw the interview and had an aneurysm. I'm sure he saw the interview ages ago. Um, so, Tamara Jane, my mind has definitely changed with Hannah Gutierrez. Yep, lots of people have said that. I have questions. This attorney is something else. I feel like an, I feel an idiot would have more gravitas to the situation and pay more attention. Yep. I bet he's regretting every chuckle that comes up there. Tamara Jane, you know, Baldwin and his lawyers are watching this case very closely to orchestrate their defense. You bet. I'd be watching this gavel to gavel. Um, 100%. Melissa Smith, every time I've handled a gun, I am rightfully terrified. If you aren't terrified by the power of a gun, do not ever pick one up. Don't ever lose that I need to be careful with this. It is never a toy. It never becomes a toy. You always have to be careful. You always have to be nervous. You always have to be concerned. Elaine Valentine, thank you so much. That's very generous. It's much appreciated. Um, Almanox, Uncle Runkle, uh, you shouldn't keep it bottled up like this. It's not healthy for you. Tell us how you really feel. Um, yeah. Bambarina, safety rules such as head desk. Yeah, I don't disagree. Rob, thank you for the 10 gifted memberships. I got to repay you there. Marvin DeBuck, for all for these interviews, I have no words. It's that bad. Yeah. Christine D, she's so bad at her job, she doesn't know how bad she is at her job. Yep. Um, we are at 20 Super Chats. We're counting down here. Tamara Jane, let's give Runkle a pee break. Thank you. Um, I'm going to ask, don't send any more. I'm not going to go turn it off because I want to read through them, but don't send any more. Yellow pills. So you know how EDB gives a flash sensitive warning before code red. We need some for pit or one for pigeon business. RIP my favorite shorts. I will try to give the inter or the warning. Charles Vance. Hannah acts as if she still has a career and a life in this interview. I wonder if she realizes how much her life is about to change. Prison life will be tough. I think she's going to get through her sentence, and but she's not going to be an armor. She's not going to be on a film. Um, I don't know what she does after this. Maybe she goes on YouTube. Maybe she becomes an influencer. Maybe she starts a channel saying Runkle sucks because 
I don't think she will like what I've had to say, but I don't know. Like, she's got possibilities. Um, Blessed in Texas. Do you think her dad still supports her? I, I do, which is weird. Um, Tyler Fennon, appreciate your coverage for us night owls. Tonight owlage. Apple Silver, video of Zora playing in the snow for tomorrow. I'll try to get one. She's really good at not being filmed when she's, like, she does the cutest stuff when she's not on camera. Uh, Bambarina, Lucian Hug actually did an analysis on the JFK Magic Bullet. Not until the 21st century, though. Now i got to check that out. Arata Michaels, it's interesting to see how many often, uh, how often Jensen got name dropped today without being a witness in this trial. I see him as a witness against Baldwin, though. We'll see. Um, Jensen Ackles, I'm a fan. Um, James Copper, theme for tomorrow's trial, lots of alcohol. Uh, Colleen McElmond, or McAlmond, uh, thank you for the membership. Rainman YYC, thank you for the 10 gifted memberships. Uh, Lady Draconis, thank you for 10 gifted memberships. Uh, Dirk Schwartz, cool, punctually in his back. I don't think I was more than like five minutes late last time. I'm not trying to, I'm trying to stay punctual. The Great Big Geek, those EMTs should lose their licenses. Um, I don't know about that. I mean, stuff happens. Incompetence is what happened here. Um, yep. Lori Lenny, thank you for the five gifted memberships. Much appreciated. Uh, Shanta, look forward to your recap every night. Much love. I'm going to be at it again tomorrow. Uh, James Copper, jury won't like that she's arrogant and entitled. They certainly won't. Blackwee, thanks for the wit and education you provide. <laughs> and Dirk Schwartz, don't send any more super chats, he said. <laughs> And Lori Lenny, thank you for the uh, five gifted memberships. Okay, I am all caught up. So, um, thank you guys for joining me. I am going to go get some sleep because um, we're back again in like eight and a half hours. So, um, I still got stuff to do. I got to finish recording a video on Janet. I'm hoping that's coming out tomorrow. So, I got to do that. That's going to be like half an hour more. Um so, um, I've got it about halfway recorded. I got to record the rest of it, but, um, yeah, um, there's some Janet fuckery I got to talk about. So, um, yeah, so we're going to have some more Janet details to come out during the day. Um, I don't know how well that video is going to do because it's going to be a long video that's coming out while there's all the rust stuff, but hopefully you guys can watch it in the break between and I'm going to try to post it as soon as the trial does and then go from there. Oh, Nick Cressman has a good question. What was the thing you got cut off on on Friday? So on Friday, Rob was showing a clip that had one of his friends uh, playing four different instruments and they were all in a different grid, right? So you got to get the background on that. Um, so I was saying, uh, I was saying, like, the really sad thing is when they all find out that they're sleeping with the same woman and the band breaks up. Because it's four images of the same... Yeah. Um, it would have been better in context. It was also funny because Rob cut it off. So, um, that... Yeah. Um, all right. I'm going to roll the outro. I'm going to wish you guys all a good night. I will see you all tomorrow. Um, and where's my outro? Outro, where did I hide you? I've got it here somewhere. There we go. 